the news conference and we're hopefully trying to learn more information. So I want to tell people that I am still working on getting some answers mm -hmm. to a very major question, a couple of major questions. That is, why were the people who were victims of these crimes targeted? I don't know the answer to that. I'm trying to find that out right now. That is something that I have been making calls about. Again, all of this unfolding in the past couple of hours. So that is a major question that remains unanswered, at least at 4.50 this morning. But at the same time, also trying to figure out if these people were targeted, why they were, if this was in fact a random attack, and increasingly authorities began thinking that it was. And what if anything, were this person's motivations? Was there, in fact, a racial component to this? I know that that has been an area of deep concern for people in the community for four days since this all started. Again, these th first three initial blasts occurred on the city's east side, which is home to uh, minority neighborhoods. But then again, on Sunday, Sunday evening, Brian and Yvonne, we saw that major shift where this, uh, what is it? What's the third, um, fourth, excuse fourth me, fourth incident, Sunday, excuse yeah. me. Yeah, the fourth incident happened in southwest Austin, which is not a minority area. So I'm still trying to get some insight mm -hmm. into possible motivation and whether or not specific people were in fact targeted. Let me ask you this. Is there a possibility that there could be more than one suspect? Are police looking into that? I have not heard that. Okay. Um, I, no one has ruled that out, but no one is talking to me about that. Okay. So at this point, it is likely the case that we are dealing with one suspect. Let's recap again. This area is along the southbound side of I-35 in Round Rock there in Williamson County. We are awaiting word from the police there. You can see multiple agencies uh, represented there, including the Texas Department of Public Safety, the FBI, the ATF, Austin police, Round Rock police, no doubt part of this investigation now as they are securing the scene from a traffic perspective as well. Uh, as you look, Tony, if you see something, say something. Yeah, I'm I just noticing, I want to pick out um, some of the faces in the crowd. We do see a large number of Austin police personnel. I do see interim police chief Brian Manley. I see Austin's new city manager, Spencer Cronk. He's the real well, tall gentleman. Yeah. The real tall right. gentleman, mm -hmm. as well as a number of uh, assistant Adler, police sir. chiefs from uh, from the Austin Police Department, DPS troopers as well. But here um, they are approaching the podium and are expected to give a briefing within the next couple of uh, minutes. We here. do have Nicole Cross there. Jay Wallace is there. We have reporters from WFAA helping us out this morning. That's our sister station in Dallas. This, of course, a statewide national story at this point. And big news this morning, uh, police say the bomber, the Austin serial bomber, has blown himself up, has exploded a device, killing himself uh, right there in Round Rock on I-35. The southbound lanes remain closed this morning, and uh, here they are. Let's listen in uh, to this press briefing this morning. Starting right now. Get in front. Get in front. Sorry. Good morning. Thank you all for coming out here this morning. Uh, My name is Brian Manley. I'm the chief of police at the Austin Police Department. Uh, Fred Milanowski here, the special agent in charge for ATF. Christopher Combs, the special agent in charge for the FBI. I have Austin Mayor Steve Adler and City Manager Spencer Cronk and several other members of uh, Assistant City Manager Ray Ariano and several members of the Austin Police Department's executive team. I think you all are aware and our community is well aware that it has been a long, almost three weeks for the community of Austin as we have dealt with package bombs and other types of bombs that have been placed throughout our community. We have seen members of our community that have lost their lives and others whose lives have been forever changed due to significant injuries. We have talked many times over the past couple of weeks about the level of partnership that has taken place with our federal officials, our local officials, and our police department to bring this to an end. And through all of this hard work, we identified several leads throughout the course of the weeks. But beginning within the past 24 to 36 hours, we started getting information on one person of interest that we continued to work on and continue to develop. And as we continue to do our investigations, this person of interest ultimately moved to being a suspect.
and that's what we started focusing on was his involvement in these crimes. Late last night and early this morning, we felt very confident that this was the suspect in the bombing incidents that took place in Austin. We had surveillance teams looking for this suspect, and we ultimately located the vehicle that this suspect was known to be driving and witnesses told us he was driving. And in fact, we found that at a hotel right up the road here in Round Rock. We had multiple officers from both the police department and our federal partners that took up positions around the hotel awaiting the arrival of our tactical teams because we wanted to have ballistic vehicles here so we could attempt to take this suspect into custody as safely as possible. While we were waiting for those vehicles to get here, much time had passed and the vehicle started to drive away. We began following the vehicle, again, waiting to get the tactical uh, vehicles here so we could take this, uh, make a stop. However, the vehicle ended up stopping in the bar ditch on the side of the road behind us. As members of the Austin Police Department SWAT team approached the vehicle, the suspect detonated a bomb inside the vehicle, knocking one of our SWAT officers back and one of our SWAT officers fired at the suspect as well. The suspect is deceased uh, and has significant injuries from a blast that occurred from detonating a bomb inside his vehicle. We cannot name the suspect at this time because he has not been positively identified yet by the medical examiner and next of kin have not yet been notified. So there will be a lengthy investigation that will take place regarding the officer involved shooting. The investigation will be conducted by the Austin Police Department's Internal Affairs Unit with the Austin uh, Police Monitor participating as well for a review of compliance with departmental policy. There will be a concurrent criminal investigation that will take place by the Texas Rangers of the incident that occurred here tonight. Again, this is the culmination of three very long weeks for our community. And throughout these weeks, we've talked about the importance of remaining vigilant and looking out for each other. I want to continue that message as we stand here this morning though, because we don't know where this suspect has spent his last 24 hours, and therefore we still need to remain vigilant to ensure that no other packages or devices have been left through the community. So as we go through the day today, we want the community to remain vigilant, but I also want to look at where we are now in Round Rock and remind our neighboring communities of Round Rock and Cedar Park and the other cities that we do not know where he has been in the past 24 hours and you, we need your communities to remain vigilant as well. And again, if you see something that looks suspicious, if you see something that's out of place, if you see something that gives you concern, call 911 and let us know so that we don't experience any more tragedies in our communities because we've had far too many over the past three weeks. I again want to thank the tremendous support and participation that we have had from our federal partners. And since this is still an ongoing investigation, we're not going to release a lot of the specific uh, details that led to the incidents that occurred tonight. We did have one officer who was injured when that bomb detonated as he approached the vehicle, suffering minor injuries. And then we had one officer, as I mentioned early, that fired his weapon at the suspect. That officer has been with the Austin Police Department for 11 years, and again, is a member of our SWAT team. As is our standard practice, he will be placed on administrative duty while we conduct the necessary investigations into what happened here. Uh, I'm now going to turn it over for comments to Special Agent uh, Melisky of the uh, ATF. Thank you. The unprecedented level of cooperation and partnership from the law enforcement agencies at the local, state, and federal level um, allowed each of our agencies to bring a skill set, different skill set to bear um, and identify this subject, 
and uh, fortunately tonight we're able to bring this part of the investigation to a close. I also want to uh, thank the public who continue to support us and cooperate with us and continue to, to send in tips. Um, and as the chief said, we want them to continue to be vigilant. Um, we are concerned that there still may be other devices out there. We want to make sure that if people see suspicious packages or bags, um, they continue to call 911 and report that to the police um, so we can respond and deal with those packages. Thank you. I'd like to say today's a great day for law enforcement. I'd like to thank the partners. There's an exceptional relationship here in Texas and particularly in Austin. Chief Manley did an unbelievable job. The federal government brought the full resources of federal law enforcement here to solve this and to stop the injuring and the killing that was occurring. As the chief said, we're not done yet. It's a long day ahead. Uh, we are concerned that there may be other packages that are still out there. We need the public to remain vigilant, especially today as we go through this investigation. We will be here as long as it takes with our partners to figure out exactly what happened why it happened and how it happened. And we're committed to staying here with the Austin Police Department for as long as it takes to make sure we understand exactly what happened here. Uh, I'd just like to say this is what law enforcement does every day in this country. The brave men and women of the Austin Police Department put their lives on the line tonight to stop this man from setting off bombs. As the chief said, one of their officers was hurt approaching the suspect as he detonated a second device. That's what law enforcement does every day in this country. They put their lives on the line to make sure that all of us are safe. And I'd like to commend the chief and his brave men and women that approached that subject's vehicle and stopped the subject from hurting anybody else. Thank you very much. I understand that the investigation is uh, continuing and that everyone still is urged to be vigilant and look for things that are out of place. But that said, uh, gentlemen, uh, on behalf of an incredibly thankful community, I just want to say thank you. And if you would pass that on to the, to the men and women uh, that you work with. Uh, uh, Chief Manley, uh, to you and to your officers, to this literally army of both neighboring cities and state and federal agencies. Thank you. And I'd just like to close with just really a thought for the families in our community who lost loved ones or who had loved ones seriously hurt in these incidents. Our heart remains with you as you go through your healing process and your time of sorrow, and we stand by you and with you in your time of need. And with that, we'll open it up for questions. Chief, was, was the suspect Chief in Austin resident? Chief, was the suspect, in Austin, the suspect in Austin resident? Chief, was the suspect in Austin resident? involved? Are you still looking for other individuals who may be connected to this one, or was this a lone wolf? This investigation is still underway, so we cannot say that this was a act, an individual acting on their own. That's why this investigation will continue through the through the day or days coming. Without naming the suspect, can you give us at least some biographical details? Rough age? Was he an Austin resident? The individual involved in this incident was a 24-year-old white male, and we're not going to give out any information regarding his residence. Any accomplices, sir? Sorry, maybe. maybe as I said, as I said, this investigation is ongoing. We want to make sure that we have confirmed that he either acted alone or if there were any accomplices that we identify them. This dates back to the, does this date back, this individual date back to March 2nd? We believe that this individual is responsible for all incidents that have taken place in Austin starting on March 2nd, those that occurred since then as well. Sir, are you still searching the FedEx facility? 
there is an operation going on in Shirts, Texas, I believe, at that warehouse. Again, wanting to make sure that that warehouse is safe, in addition to the fact that a bomb detonated in that warehouse and it takes a while to process a post blast investigation like that. So that's going to take a while for that one to be cleared. Chief, Chief, the 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 why have you been following? Was it the FedEx package that led you to this conference? There were several leads that led us to this person. We had a lot of evidence that came to us via uh, video sources as well as witnesses. Was he ever on your radar prior to this? This was a subject that we had developed over uh, the course of the investigation, but we became very interested in him over the past couple of days. Do we have a why? Do we? You know, that's the one thing we don't have right now is a motive behind this. We do not understand what motivated him to do what he did, and that will also be part of the continuing investigation as we try to learn more about him and to understand why he took the actions that he did. Sorry. Was he on his way to deliver another bomb? We don't know whether he was on his way to deliver another bomb. It is obvious that he had one with him, and that's the one that he detonated uh, in the vehicle as we approached. Hey, how far are we going to be with you regards to how this motive or how the operations of the bombs evolved? It, you know, it started off package bombs, it moved to trip wires, it moved to FedEx. You know, it doesn't seem like the same guy, so why are you so confident that this is the same guy, and, or is this just an example of a person, a suspect, evolving? Again, as we've said all along, we didn't want to give out specific descriptions of the types of packaging the initial bombs were in because we knew that there was the potential he would change his methods, and that is, in fact, what occurred here. We do believe that all of these are related and that he is responsible for these based on the similarities that we have seen in all of the devices and in the evidence we're finding from those that did detonate. The FedEx packages, uh, we're not going to identify who they were being mailed to. However, we have been in contact with them. Did you know that you've been following the suspect? Was any contact with the suspect before any device exploded tonight? No, we had, again, we had uh, found him in the parking lot of a hotel in this neighborhood behind us, and we did not contact him. Again, we wanted this to come to a peaceful resolution tonight, but we knew how dangerous this situation was given what he had done in our community leading up to tonight so we were waiting to get the best assets in place with our tactical teams and our ballistic vehicles so that we had a the best chance possible to take him into custody however we were not afforded that opportunity when he started driving away and we could not let him get anywhere into the community and that's why we ended up having a, an interaction on the frontage road behind us did he drive away because he saw police I mean do you, or uh, any, any evidence of that? I, I don't know why he drove away. The officers that were there had been watching him for quite some time, so nothing had changed there to where I believe that he saw them, but that's something we'll never know. Does he have a military background? Do you worry that don't know what his background is. Were that Last question. question. Do you, do you know the motive at this point? Do you know what motivated him at this point now that you've been able to put this to this, to this point? No. Again, as we stated earlier, we do not know what the motive was behind that, and hopefully as we continue this investigation, we will uncover some facts so that we can try and understand, although this is something that there is no rationale for, but we can try and understand what his motive was. Thank you very much. All right, listening live to a press conference from APD Chief, Interim Chief Brian Manley there in Round Rock, the end of a long, long investigation uh, today. The, we do, let's just talk about what we learned there, yes, Tony. It's Tony Pulaski here. I'm here with Yvonne Nava as well. It's 5-11. You're watching uh, KB News Daybreak. 24-year-old white male, they don't have a motive. He attempted to flee from police from this hotel in Round Rock. At that point, ran into the ditch in his vehicle and exploded a device, killing himself. As police were closing in, we do know from Police Chief Brian Manley that uh, an Austin police officer did fire a weapon. A SWAT officer, I believe, fired a weapon as part of all of this activity. But police do believe that this person, the suspect who has eluded their efforts for the 
the past several weeks did die at his own hands from his own explosive device. The police chief not confirming whether or not the suspect may have been taking that device to another location or why he may have had it in his car. The police chief again, Brian and Yvonne confirming that this is the suspect, a 24 year old person who they according to the police chief and this is what we were saying earlier became highly interested in in the past 36 hours 24 to 36 mm -hmm. hours and that brian and yvonne is when the suspect would have gone to that fedex store on brody lane that was a clue they said once they figured out okay we have information on this person of interest in the past 24 36 hours that's when they got the name they located the vehicle they found that vehicle at a hotel uh, in round rock and that's when they said okay we're going to attempt to take the suspect into custody they're waiting for backup as well but that vehicle apparently drove away so officers began following that car the car stopped on the side of the road SWAT team approached that vehicle and the suspect detonated a bomb in the vehicle now it's worth mentioning there was a bomb in that vehicle curious if that individual was attempting to deliver another package or why that bomb was in the vehicle to begin with but they could not uh, name the suspect at this time, but they did give us an age because next of kin has not been notified, but it has been a very lengthy investigation. Um, obviously, uh, Manly mentioning that APD. Let's go to our, let's just go for right now. All right, breaking news here, KVU News Daybreak. Let's recap at the top of this hour what we're talking about at the the end of the Austin bombing investigation, a person, a 24-year-old white male, was found to be the suspect. They found him at a hotel in Round Rock, right along the southbound side of I-35. Overnight, Austin SWAT, along with federal entities, began to surround this hotel. At some point, the man left the hotel, got into a vehicle. Police, not wanting him to get away, tracked the person just on the frontage road, and that is where the man, the 24-year-old male, drove his vehicle into the ditch between I-35 and the frontage road and exploded a device inside of his car killing himself. We do know that at least one Austin police officer received injuries. We don't know the extent of those injuries. We also know at least one Austin SWAT officer fired his weapon. We do know the suspect is dead. We don't know who he is or why he did this. Chief Manley not giving us a motive at this point because simply they're still working on that investigation. If I write quick, let me just, if we have the map of Round Rock and the traffic map, these are the aerials of the scene right along I-35 southbound. This is where we're talking about on I-35, right at Old Settlers Boulevard. The incident took place right there between the frontage road and the highway, but the entire southbound side of I-35 has now been closed because of this investigation. So if you're headed to Austin, avoid this area. This investigation, Yvonne, is going to be taking a while this yes, morning. Yes, they said it would be lengthy. Now let's talk a little bit about, um, you know, APD Internal Affairs Unit. They are obviously going to be conducting this investigation. Austin Police Monitor also conducting the investigation. The Texas Rangers will also have a concurrent investigation. And, and you mentioned the officer, one officer was injured, as you mentioned, when the bomb detonated. Some minor injuries there. The officer who fired uh, his weapon, that officer is going to be just placed on um, administrative leave, which is, you know, standard procedure. procedure yes, yeah. procedure. Uh, you know, the ATF saying that this took the full effort of everybody involved, and the feds aren't done investigating. Uh, Mayor Adler coming out saying, we thank you. We thank everyone who participated in all of this. But Chief Manley also mentioning that his heart remains with all of those who are still in the healing process. We're talking about Draylen Mason's family and uh, Anthony House's families. Uh, at this moment, though, we can tell you that, you know, Manley did mention that through all of this uh, hard work and dedication and all these leads throughout the past 24 to 36 hours, and in fact, 19 days, if you really want to count that, they got a lot of information. Uh, also mentioning that he still wants the community to remain vigilant. He says they don't know where the suspect has spent his last 24 hours, so we still want the community to remain vigilant. He says perhaps more packages could be out there, so if you see something, say something. But uh, ATF also mentioning that fortunately tonight, 
they were able to close at least this part of the investigation. But a lot continues, and we still have a lot of questions as to who this suspect was and the motive behind all of this. And as Chief Manley said, interesting to point out, a 24-year-old white male he says is responsible for all five of the explosions that we know of. We also know that this white male, the 24 year old, attempted to disguise himself inside of that FedEx store on Brody Lane when he sent that package that exploded in San Antonio or in shirts yesterday morning. That was a huge lead. Mac Chief Manley did say that during that press conference. That lead, that FedEx store surveillance video, allowed them to further identify someone they had already pinpointed as a potential suspect. That was a piece of the puzzle they needed to put it all together. Yesterday, the wheels really began to spin as you look live now at I-35 southbound in Round Rock. You can see the police units are still there and will be there for a while as this investigation no doubt will take hours today to complete. There's a lot to go through. Again, Chief Manley said he had at least one explosive device in the vehicle. He did not know specifically how many others this person has put together and where they might be. That is why Yvonne, as you just mentioned, be, be vigilant, uh, vigilant uh, with everything just as we have been. Even though the suspect is now dead, the way he was performing these acts of terror uh, could still remain. So be vigilant and keep that in mind. We do know the person that police say was responsible for all five of the explosions, four in Austin, one in shirts, has now killed himself with one of his own explosive devices. And we keep showing you this video here. This is our chopper video where you can see an aerial view, a bird's eye view of the scene. You can see officers there kind of convening at the scene of, of how it all, where it all went down. Uh, as far as um, just the leads, Brian, I find that interesting. I know that Tony had mentioned, you know, you mentioned the disguise. Tony said that they believe that, the, that this individual was wearing a wig at some point and that they got that from the surveillance video from the FedEx at the Brody location. But search engines, uh, they were using that, investigators used that as part of their, um, I guess, scouring for information and cell technology, talking about pings, cell phone pings, to kind of locate this individual. But uh, the fact that they were able to pinpoint it to one person of interest, that really was key, because from that, they were able to locate the vehicle. From the vehicle, they got to that hotel, and that's where it all went down. That's where they tried to take that uh, suspect into custody, obviously. Obviously, it didn't end up that way, but the car did stop on the side of the road. SWAT team approached the car and the suspect detonated a bomb inside of that vehicle. And that might explain or shed light on the fact that at one point, remember the witness said, I didn't see any kind of uh, mm -hmm. he didn't see of, yeah, the explosion. He didn't see anything. So that makes sense as to what kind of goes and you know, it, it aligns with what the witness was saying that they didn't see anything because obviously that bomb was detonated inside of that vehicle. Obviously, um, another thing Manley was mentioning, because that bomb was detonated inside of the vehicle, uh, he said that the suspect suffered some uh, major injuries because he was in such close proximity to that uh, bomb. Well, yeah, he killed himself, no yeah. doubt. And that's part of this that's now we do know uh, the 24-year-old male, a white male, uh, is the suspect. Police say he is responsible for all of the explosions and the bombings that we know of. Five total, four in Austin, one in Shirts. We know he is dead. What we don't know is who he is, why he did this, mm -hmm. and if he has more devices in and around the community. We also don't know if he's an Austinite, if he lived in the area, if he's from Williamson County. We know he was staying at a hotel. That would lend us to believe that he was here uh, maybe not at his home uh, because he didn't live here. Maybe he was trying to stay away from police and try to avoid uh, police at that point. Uh, Chief Manley did describe in great detail the SWAT situation that began late last night at the hotel there uh, in Round Rock. Again, I, I didn't hear if they said the specific hotel, but I no, know I it was right it there then. along I-35. Mm -hmm. And according to the chief, they surrounded this with the intent to arrest this person. This white male, age 24, at some point either caught wind of the police or had plans to deliver another explosive device, left 
the hotel, got into a vehicle, and then attempted to flee the scene. Again, we don't know if he was running from police or if he was trying to deliver. At that point, he either caught wind or, or saw officers, pulled into the ditch, and pushed the button or tripped the wire or whatever he did to explode the device inside of his car killing himself, injuring another police officer in the process. Again, we don't know that officer's condition, but Chief Manley didn't indicate that it was a serious injury, so we hope that officer yeah. is okay this morning. And again, aerial views here via our helicopter at Old Settlers uh, exit right there on I-35. You can see still a very active investigation. Now, Brian, correct me if I'm wrong, I believe that I heard Manley say this, that they have notified the individuals the individuals that the suspect was attempting to send the packages to, the recent packages to. He did say that, right? That, that was part of the press conference. You're right. He did say that we're talking about the package that exploded at the FedEx facility in mm -hmm. shirts yesterday. Mm -hmm. And also we know of at least two other packages yeah. that police have found. Uh, according to the chief, they know yeah. who he was attempting to send those to. Mm -hmm. And according to the chief, they have notified the, the intended recipients of those packages. But again, we have to reiterate, uh, the chief did not say this is over, we're no. done. Uh, he said be contrary, vigilant yeah. still. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. because they have the guy they think they know was responsible. We don't know if he had other intentions or had other explosive devices. Again, that's going to be part of the investigation. This is a live, or not a live look, uh, a taped recorded view of the FedEx facility. Again, one of these days, hopefully today, we'll get a look at this surveillance video, which proved to be a key part, Yvonne, mm -hmm. of this of this entire thing. Uh, the man, the 24 year old man walked in here at some point, uh, either Sunday or, or Saturday uh, in a disguise with a wig and mailed at least two, potentially more packages containing explosive devices. One of them headed to that sure. FedEx facility in Shirts, which mm -hmm. Yvonne, we talked about yesterday, exploded yesterday, and that was a big tipping point. Yeah, there in Shirts, a, a woman working there inside of the you know facility uh, the box, a medium-sized box was in the upper conveyor belt and the woman was working there and it just exploded. She was obviously injured, not by the shrapnel, but injured by the impact. She kept, uh, I, b I believe, complaining about ringing in her ear, but that happened in shirts. And again, this whole Brody Lane FedEx location, this was a big tipping point because, as we mentioned, the suspect had to physically walk inside that facility. There was no drop-off outside, nowhere where he can just kind of, you know, you know, drop it off and nobody could see him. There were plenty of uh, surveillance video cameras inside of that FedEx. So that made a lot of sense as to uh, how it could help investigators. That was for sure. No doubt about it. And as Tony Flahetsky has been reporting, they had an idea of a suspect prior to yesterday. Yesterday is when all those pieces began to come together. And our, our security expert, Fred Burton with Stratfor, has told us that is how these normally take yes. place. The person makes a mistake. Mm -hmm. In his mind, it might not have been a mistake, mm -hmm. but in the eye of the police walking in there with a disguise attempting and then successfully mailing these packages was a huge mistake on his part because it gave police and investigators the information they needed at that point to pinpoint their guy. They knew their had they knew they had their guy at that point and then they found him and his location yesterday and then overnight that is when it all ended. All right and Round Rock police sending out a tweet uh, on the lines of what Chief Interim Police Chief Brian Manley was saying to be vigilant still. Round Rock Police saying do not handle or disturb suspicious packages. They're saying pay attention to anything suspicious, anything that looks out of the ordinary. And we're not just talking about packages. We're talking about backpacks or anything that just looks out of place. Use common sense. Do not approach it. Call 911. And this doesn't only pertain to people in Round Rock. This pertains to people in our area. Everyone. We all should uh, adhere to this um, warning as well. It's a great point. And again, he, he was caught in Williamson County. If you can hear our voice is heed these warnings. Tony Plohetsky is back here with us now. Tony, are you learning more information? I've been trying to figure out more information and gain more information about the suspect himself. And I am comfortable comfortable reporting at this point that this suspect is a local person. This is not someone who lived somewhere else. 
and came to Austin to carry out these crimes. I am told that this is a person who lives here locally. One of the things that I'm still trying to find out this morning, though, is more details about what kind of experience this person may have in terms of developing explosive devices. We know from talking to law enforcement and from uh, experts over the past several weeks that whoever has been doing this is a person who must have a sense of sophistication and highly specialized skills in terms of making explosive devices. And here's why. Well, number one, they were able to package the, these devices in such a way that they could time them to go off when they were handled uh, by the victims in these cases. So that is number one. Number two is, again, we saw the use of a tripwire in the incident that happened in southwest Austin on Sunday, again, requiring a certain level of sophistication that Brian and Yvonne, I'm told, are beyond rud rud uh, rudimentary. This is a person who obviously has some skill, mm -hmm. uh, sophisticated skill, in putting these together. So I think one of the things that investigators are trying to learn right now is exactly how this person may have come up with those skills or developed those skills. There's so many questions still. Let's go to Jay Wallace who's on the scene. And Jay, what have you learned? Well, Yvonne, I want to provide at least some context since I've been out here when I was listening to the interview and seeing what's going on and try to let, set the scene for, uh, you know, what's been going on this morning. First, as I've been showing you, I want to show you that nothing has changed since we got out here early this morning. The long line of investigators, again, I've seen vehicles of police, fire department, FBI, ATF, they are all out here. And in terms of the Brian Manley update that he just provided a little bit ago, you could honestly hear the sense of relief in his voice talking about the fact that they found this suspect the 24 year old uh, white male who he believes is he is behind all of these bombings that happened in Austin. And, you know, he says this investigation is going to go on for hours, well into the morning. And I mentioned it during my last live hit, and I wanted to say it again. They have emphasized throughout all of these bombings that have happened overnight, just like these developments overnight, that the need for daylight, the need to have some sunlight to make sure everything is safe, especially since he was at this hotel and he had the bomb. And we don't know necessarily was he on his way to another location or was this bomb a part of this necessarily suicide having the bomb go off. We don't know. We don't have the answers to these questions. And so as we continue to say out here and the investigation goes on, those answers will continue to come about. Obviously, there's been rapid developments throughout the morning as we continue to learn more and find out more specifics to what's going on. We want to know, you know, more information about how this happened, why this happened, just as much as you do. And we're going to obviously relay that to you as we find out more. Again, we're out here in Round Rock where the suspect was found at his hotel before he drove off and SWAT followed him before he took his own own, own life with the bomb that was in his car and uh, also worth mentioning that there are many hotels that are along this stretch of I-35. That's kind of how this is set up in Austin and in Round Rock that you'll find all of the hotels and motels along this stretch. So we don't know exactly which hotel the suspect was at, but um, that will obviously continue to come out when police are comfortable providing that information along with the identity of the suspect. So again, as we've been saying, the suspect for these bombings, police believe they did find him and he took his own life. Uh, that was provided by Interim Chief Brian Manley as he just gave that presser. And uh, we will stay out here and uh, can you continue to give that information when we find out more. Brian Yvonne. All right, Jay, thanks very much for the very latest there. Let's talk real quick about where Jay is again, just to reiterate uh, this area of Round Rock where the investigation is ongoing. It is right on I-35 southbound uh, headed through town. So if you have uh, a commute that involves this area, really between 1431 and 620, just avoid I-35 southbound this morning. Find an alternate route. You can go out to I-30 or over to 183. Nicole Cross is now standing by with Mayor Steve Adler. Let's go now uh, to Nicole Live. At the scene. Nicole? That's right. I am here at the scene. I am with Austin Mayor Steve Adler. What are you feeling at this moment? Well, I mean, I'm feeling great relief and, 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 and appreciation. I had the opportunity to thank uh, Chief Manley uh, and his officers, as well as this incredible team uh, federal agents and just an army here, ATF and FBI, people from the state and all over. Uh, 
but it's important to remember that that this investigation is continuing. Uh, we don't know the whereabouts of this suspect over the last 24 hours. Uh, so the, the message is still to, to be observant, to be vigilant. Uh, if you see something that's suspicious, we're still having people call 911. Uh, there's still some unanswered questions, uh, so the investigation is continuing. Uh, but boy, I tell you, right now, it is, uh, it's, it's feeling pretty good. And there has been a lot of partnership, the FBI, the ATF. We even heard word yesterday that the White House was monitoring this situation. What are your thoughts and what do you have to say about that partnership? Well, yeah, I think the whole community is real appreciative of the resources and priority that was put against this, uh, and we're real thankful. And when you watch the, the sophistication uh, of this team, uh, it didn't do anything but, but, but bring a sense of confidence that they would be able to, to get answers to this and, and be able to, to, to stop it. Uh, and it's, it's been a pretty impressive thing to watch. And you know, this ordeal began back on March 2nd. You know, we've had a number of bombings. We have had two deaths. Four people were injured, at least four. What do you have to say to the victims' families? Well, you know, the, uh, the thoughts and prayers of, of me and Diane and the entire community are with the family of the of the two gentlemen that died, as well as the the folks that have been have been hurt. I had the chance to, to talk to uh, the families of the of the first uh, several uh, incidents and. Uh, express that uh, as well as the determination that we would answer everyone's questions and that we would we would we would put an end to this and I'm happy that we've gotten to this place. Uh, the other thing that, that I think is real striking uh, about this and going to the neighborhoods, uh, being at um, our, our Greater Mount Zion, uh, as a community, we need to do a better job of knowing the people that live across the street from us or across the hall or down the street. And, and if there's a takeaway from this, it's that we can be and should be a better community if we get to know each other better uh, in our neighborhood. And you got a sense of that when we told everybody to start looking around them and seeing what was suspicious, uh, neighborhoods beginning to pull together, but also people realizing that they don't know who lives down the street or across the hall. Uh, so I hope that moving forward we, we do a better job of that. I'm going to do a better job of that. Okay. And as you said, the investigation is ongoing, uh, encouraging people to stay vigilant. Absolutely. Uh, uh, this is really good news tonight, uh, but there are still unanswered questions, as the chief indicated earlier. Everyone has to remain vigilant. Everybody should continue to, to, to look for things that seem out of place. Uh, and that's not only Austin, but that extends to the cities around us, uh, you know, Round Rock and Cedar Park. And as the, as the chief said, uh, we just don't know where the suspect has been the last 24 hours. All right, Mayor Adler, thank you so much for taking a moment to speak with us. Thank you. All right, guys, we just wrapped up the press briefing. Mayor Adler and others talking to members of the media so that we can get the word out to the community to stay vigilant. This is a relief for a lot of people, but it's certainly not the end. We're going to stay here, continue to gather information to bring directly to you. So stay with us both on air and online at kview.com. Guys, back to you. Cole, thanks a lot. As we're just past 5.30 now on this Wednesday morning, you are watching KV News Daybreak. Brian Mays here along with Tony Plahetsky and Yvonne Nava. And let's, let's start at the bottom of this hour recapping what we know uh, from the events taking place mm -hmm. overnight here in Austin and in Round Rock, in fact. Austin police tell us this morning the bombing suspect is dead. He exploded a device inside of his own vehicle in Round Rock right along I-35 this morning. Here are the Four of the five bombings that we know have happened, including yesterday in Shirts, which was really the tipping point in this investigation. That FedEx package led police to the FedEx facility uh, down in southwest Austin on Brody Lane. That surveillance video in coordination with a lot of the paper trail left behind by this suspect, a 24-year-old white male, Tony tells us, from the area, right in the Austin area, uh, was the suspect is now dead. Live pictures now from the scene in Round Rock on I-35 southbound where the person exploded a device in his own vehicle, killing himself.
following a big police activity, a big police uh, SWAT situation there at this hotel where this individual was staying. Tony, fill me in on what I'm missing. Here. A dramatic scene still unfolding there as police confirmed that this investigation really began falling into place and picked up energy within the past 24 to 36 hours. I'm told from law enforcement sources that they were able to get to this person using a variety of investigative methods. They were talking to witnesses who saw him going in and out of a FedEx store in South Austin, but technological uh, advancements have also helped uh, get to the suspect as well. Technology, including cell phone technology that has helped them uh, place the whereabouts of the suspect as well as computer search engine history. And Brian and Yvonne, I reached out this morning and uh, wanted to talk to Nelson Linder, who is the president of the Austin chapter of the NAACP. And Nelson, I appreciate you calling in and being with us this morning. Well, we've been involved, Tony, as you know, from the beginning. And so clearly this morning we feel a sigh of relief, but also there's much work to be done in terms of answering questions. Right now, I want to thank um, APD and all law enforcement, and also those in our community who remain committed and supporting law enforcement, because right now we see the end result of that cooperation. But certainly I feel a sigh of relief this morning, but yet this investigation is going to continue to answer some questions that we need to have answered. Nelson, I know that we have been through a lot together in this community in the 18 years that, I, that I've known you. What do you think will be the reaction of people as they wake up to this news this morning, particularly um, in, the, in the eastern part of town where you live and work and where three of these bombings uh, took place? I think, I think clearly, uh, Tony, we're going to see people uh, happy that this thing has ended in terms of a physical sense. This gentleman is dead and that uh, we feel safer. But at the same time, as you know, there are some unanswered questions. But we've supported APD and law enforcement. They're going to retry this whole incident from day one and find out what happened with those folks who lost their lives. And I think that I thus hear far, you, Nelson, when you describe that this is a time for relief and rejoicing. But you also do talk about those unanswered questions that you and others in the community have. Can you give us more of a sense of what those questions are? What started this? What was the initial motivation and motive? That's still key. Why were these folks targeted and killed? And what was he doing? It was a lot of hours. But I just think that right now. Given what has happened with law enforcement, they, they've got some credibility. The next step is now to, to help us answer these very difficult questions where we lost people's lives and also some of the unanswered questions. But I think right now I'm feeling pretty confident that law enforcement has done a good job here. And we're going to work with them, but at the same time ask them to work as fast as possible and make sure that we address the, the, the wounds that still exist based on the loss of life in the black community and also other people as well so we can make sure we at least don't take things prematurely and feel more confident as we get more information. But right now, of course, the immediate threat seems to be dead. But we've got to have questions answered to build some of the uh, divide that has happened over the past uh, almost month now, given this time frame. Nelson Linder from the Austin chapter of the NAACP. I really appreciate you um, being with us this morning and for answering the phone when I called you a little after five. And I hope that you will possibly rejoin us a little bit later. But Brian and Yvonne, I do understand we have more developments now. Yes, we definitely do. We have reporters spanned out across the area. We're going to turn things over to Rebecca Lopez, KVU's Rebecca Lopez, to get some more information. Rebecca. Attempting to get the audio there, obviously. Please. There we go. We can hear you. Can you hear me? Okay, we are here in the neighborhood outside of the suspect's uh, home. Uh, when we drove up to the house, we are not identifying him at this time. When we drove up to the house, there was a trooper blocking the road. He told us, you need to move back. This area is not secure. He or she may still be in there. And so then we moved back another block and uh, uh, two more troopers came up and said that we again needed to leave the area, that they would send a public information officer out here, that they are waiting for 
for uh, more officers to come out here, that most everybody else is tied up at the other scene and that we needed to move back around the corner. And again, he said the home is not secure. So we are waiting to see if more law enforcement shows up in this area. But again, we are not identifying him uh, at this time. Uh, and we don't want to ruin any element of surprise. So we're not going to show the home. We do have some video uh, before we were pulled back, but we're going to wait before we uh, release that footage. So that is what we know here uh, at the scene. Again, they're telling us the home is not secure. Back to you. All right, Rebecca, thank you so much. Now, just uh, about moments ago, we heard from uh, interim police chief Brian Manley. We heard from Austin Mayor uh, Steve Adler thanking the community. And I know Manley had mentioned that his heart remains with the people who were still in the healing process. We're talking about the Masons and the houses Here's as the well. Tweet you were Let's talking take about. a look at the tweet. It says, I can't thank the men and women of Austin PD or our federal partners enough for their tireless effort and their tireless work in restoring peace to our community. And I think this is a good time to also take a moment to uh, talk about those victims. If I think we have some pictures of them, if we can put those up, if we have them available. Of course, this all beginning on a Friday morning, March 2nd, when a police have identified the victim there as Anthony House, 39-year-old Anthony House. You see him there. He was a 39-year-old local business person and father. And then about 10 days later, we saw the death of 17-year-old Draylon Mason in a bomb that exploded that had been left overnight on his front porch. You can see him there. Draylon Mason has been described as a promising uh, young man, 17 years old, had just been accepted into the music school at the University of Texas that same day. And I'll never forget it because it was a day that totally changed the focus of the investigation. But later that day, within hours, police responded to a third, what became a third detonation in Southeast Austin that severely injured a 75 year old Hispanic woman. She does remain in the hospital at this time with injuries that have been quite severe. You can imagine um, the injuries that go along with having suffered uh, the detonation of an explosive device. Um, so I just think it's important that yeah. we continue mm -hmm. to remember these victims as well. Others were injured in that explosion that injured, that also injured that 75 year old woman. And then we saw the two young men Sunday night who received injuries as well when a blast detonated in Southwest Austin in that Travis Country neighborhood. You can see the map there. Five total explosions beginning March 2nd. But again, as police are telling us this morning, this all coming to a very dramatic end in Williamson County. Absolutely. Here's a live picture from that scene. Again, if you are just tuning in now, the bombing suspect detonated a device inside of his own vehicle this morning in Round Rock, just between I-35 and the I-35 southbound frontage road, pulled his vehicle into a ditch after police began to move in. He detonated the device. Police say he killed himself. They surrounded this hotel late last night night as a SWAT situation and before the actual uh, SWAT team began to move in the person either caught wind of it or had another plan got into his vehicle and attempted to leave the scene police then say they knew they had to move in at that point aerial views now of the scene as the investigation continues they moved in the guy pulled into the ditch and, and essentially blew himself up a 24 year old white male from the area uh, we are not identifying him at this point but let's get to what the governor is saying this morning obviously uh, Governor Greg Abbott put $15,000 up early on in this investigation as reward money. The Austin bomber is dead. He says more ne uh, work needs to be done to ensure no more bombs had been sent before he died. The governor goes on to say the investigation continues to learn more information. Uh, congratulations to the combined law enforcement effort. No doubt, and Tony, that is a huge part of this. Austin police led the investigation, did a lot of the work, but there was a lot of help, both from the state and federal level, and we saw that all come to fruition this morning. Totally unprecedented mm -hmm. in terms of the amount of law enforcement officials working on this case. A small army is the way it has been described to me, but in fact, a growing army over the past several days with officials from both Austin, Texas, 
Texas Department of Public Safety and also federal agents who have been dispatched to Austin from Washington, D.C., and not only Washington, D.C., but in fact other areas across the country who have been brought into this case and using their expertise as well. But Brian and Yvonne, in terms of cracking this case wide open, which is what has happened in the past uh, few hours mm -hmm. here, this really the result of a multi-tiered approach involving both technology as well as boots on the ground, interview with witnesses who have given police uh, valuable information in terms of a suspect description. Again, that suspect is described to me by law enforcement as a local person, someone who lives in this area. We are not dealing with someone who came to Austin to carry out these crimes, but instead someone who lives here locally. Again, we're trying to get more information on the suspect himself. And one of the main questions that law enforcement has had, I know that we have and probably you have, is exactly how they built these devices and how someone acquired so much skill that they were able to put together different types of devices that were designed unfortunately successfully designed to go off at just the right time when they were handled by victims. And again, another major question that we are trying, I'm working feverishly to try to get an answer to, is the possible motivation. We still want to know, were people specifically targeted for some reason that we are still trying to understand? Or were, again, these more random attacks? That is a major question that I think many people will have. And the FBI is saying yes the suspect is dead yes this part of the investigation is over but adding that we're not in the clear there's a full day and a full couple of days and perhaps even weeks uh, of investigating needed to do needed ahead and I know that the APD Internals Affairs Unit is working this case as is the Austin Police Monitor they also managed Matt managed to also say that the Texas Rangers will be conducting a concurrent investigation but the FBI says we're not leaving here there's still a lot of work to be done and we want to continue to reiterate the public safety message that we also just saw Governor Greg Abbott reminding people of as well. While this is a time for relief and rejoicing, we're not out of the woods yet. And what I mean by that is authorities still have an ongoing concern that there may be packages out there that still have not been located, possibly putting the public at risk. So as you wake up this morning and you go about your business, we want to remind people to please be mindful of that and continue to call authorities with anything that appears suspicious. All right, Tony's here, Yvonne's thank here you. now. Thank you very much for all your work overnight. If you thank are you. just now joining us, we are following breaking news happening in Williamson County this morning. Authorities say the suspect accused of setting off a string of deadly explosives in Austin has killed himself. This all happened early this morning at a hotel along I-35 southbound in Round Rock. The suspect got into a confrontation with police before detonating a device inside of his own car, killing himself. Now this did happen inside the vehicle the suspect was in after he pulled off of the road into the ditch there between I-35 southbound and the frontage road. One officer was hurt there. Authorities tracked him down through cell phone technology and with the help of security video from that FedEx store on Brody Lane in Sunset Valley. Officials say the device that exploded in church yesterday, just northwest of San Antonio, uh, at that FedEx store was sent, the device inside the package was sent from Austin and that store, that FedEx store in, in Sunset Valley. And authorities also got information from Google and from the suspect's computer history that in fact confirmed that the suspect was looking at information on where to go to ship devices. And authorities say they still, though, want families to remain vigilant, as we've been reiterating to you, because they want families to know that officers don't know where the suspect has been in the last 24 hours. They don't know about that. So police are asking people to report anything suspicious that they may come across. Let's take a look back now at what brought us to this week's explosions, this last bit in the story. The first explosion happening back on March the 2nd, the top of your screen there. Anthony House was killed when a bomb exploded. He found on his porch in a package that was on Haverford Drive. That brought us 10 days later to March the 12th, which uh, two explosions happened on that day. One in the early morning hours took the life of 
17 year old Draylon Mason headed for UT. A young man that had a bright future was killed in that explosion. His mother was injured after that package was found on his porch. Then later that day, right before noon on the 12th, another package bomb exploded, injuring 75 year old Hope Herrera. She had serious injuries and was taken to the hospital. Yvonne, that brings us to yes. Sunday night when the MO kind of changed for it things. It sure did. We're talking about Don Song Drive, which is in the southwest part of town in the Travis country neighborhood that was an explosion there uh, this kind of changed the course I believe of things because a trip wire was used that trip wire connected to a exploding device two individuals I believe a 22 and a 23 year old were riding their bicycles down the street when it detonated and those two individuals were injured those two individuals are in good condition right now which is good but then that also leads us to what happened uh, yesterday I hope I'm getting my days right in shirts yes I'm right bright and uh, early just after very 12. Yeah. very early uh, but this was in shirts which is about an hour from Austin now Donald Trump President Trump tweeting about the situation saying the Austin bombing suspect is dead. Great job by law enforcement and all concerned. And just yesterday, a little bit before noontime, we did get word from the White House that they were aware of the situation and that they were um, sending some more investigators to kind of help out with this information and with the situation as well. But it has been a long string of just events that led up to it. But I believe that the Brody Lane FedEx location, that whole incident was really what kind of helped investigators a ton because you had the surveillance videos and you also had that paper trail with those packages. And a couple of things I wanted to just mention with regard to President Trump's tweet. It's important for people to know that the Justice Department at the highest levels have been has been routinely briefed on this case it, as it has continued to unfold. So then in turn, the president has been briefed consistently, I'm told, particularly in recent days on this ongoing case. Another issue that I wanted to bring up that the authorities have not publicly discussed yet, and that is the degree to which an undetonated device that authorities and, and government officials confirm was located yesterday or in the early morning hours of yesterday at a FedEx facility in southeast Austin. After there was that blast overnight at the FedEx transfer facility, that distribution facility in shirts, authorities got additional emergency notifications that they needed to respond to a similar type distribution facility near Austin Bergstrom International Airport. And yesterday evening, a congressional delegation from Austin did confirm that in fact, there was an undetonated explosive device. I have not gotten an update in recent hours as to to what is the status of that device, whether or not authorities were able to glean additional evidence from that device. But that is something, too, that authorities and experts were telling us were likely going to give meaningful clues to the, to the investigators as they continue to really um, ramp up their case and ramp up the investigation again in the past 24 to 36 hours. All right, you're watching KVU News Daybreak. Let's go back out now live to the scene. This is the scene in Round Rock, just off I-35 southbound. Our own Jay Wallace, one of our many reporters in the field this morning. Jay's been watching things unfold there. What is the latest from where you are this morning, Jay? Yeah, well, Brian, even the, pers the pursuit happened well, you know, a while ago overnight. The investigation and the number of vehicles here has only grown with time. Let me step to the side and use my flashlight to show you across the highway who is here right now. You can see these SWAT cars actually just pulled up probably five, ten minutes ago. They just pulled up at the end of this line of vehicles. You can see the fire department special operations truck is behind them as well. And all of these, this line of vehicles, they're right near many hotels and motels that are along this highway. And as my photographer moves to the right. You can also see the Austin Police Department's um, truck here as well. Police enforcement. Um, it's hard to see uh, across the street, but there's so many vehicles here. And as we pan a little bit farther to the right past this one way sign, you can also see that the ATF truck, they are also here as well, obviously with the number of explosives that are involved with this investigation. And if you just keep going down this line, there are all of these vehicles, a lot of them unmarked, but certainly an extensive investigation 
attention as the pursuit of this suspect and the bomber happened here along I-35 in Round Rock. And this investigation obviously is going to take a while. It's going to have to go into the morning. I've been mentioning this on air, but it's worth continuing to repeat. Investigators, as I've covered these um, bombings throughout these past three weeks, uh, when we talk to police, they always say that they need that sunlight. They need the daylight to complete their investigation. And assuredly, that will happen with this case as well, as they want to make sure that there are no other bombs that were where the car was when he was at the hotel or any bombs around this area. As Manley said, they don't necessarily know where he's been the past 24 hours. So there couldn't possibly be other bombs around the city, around the area. And the police want to make sure that is not the case. So even if they don't find bombs here, they might have some clues or signs that there are bombs in other areas of the city. But none of that's uh, been confirmed or there's no signs that that's happening. But they want to make sure that that is the case. And that's why there are so many investigators out here. So we will continue to keep an eye on what's going on out here and make sure to keep giving you looks out at the scene of where that suspect took his own life with that explosion that happened in the car on the side of the road. Brian Yvonne. All right, Jay Wallace in Round Rock Forest. Jay is there. Dr. Nicole Cross is there gathering more information. We also have help from our Tegna and, and our sister stations from WFAA. Rebecca Lopez in the neighborhood uh, where we believe the bomber lived. Also, Chris Sadegi is along the scene gathering more information. So many reporters out gathering information. We'll be checking in with them periodically throughout the morning. We did get this quote from an investigator at the scene, and I'm going to read it to you verbatim to just kind of give a recap of where we are here. This quote says, the hunt for the bomber was a race against time as law enforcement feared additional devices would continue to be exploded. In the law enforcement mantra of, quote, stop the killing, investigators paid less attention to why or how the suspected bomber was doing his work and instead put all of their efforts and resources into finding him and neutralizing the threat. It goes on to say, now we have to go and work backwards to figure everything else out. Again, that's a quote from an investigator right there at the scene so you can kind of get a sense that they feel a sense of relief for where they are but they know this investigation is not done yet and I know this area Yvonne and as I bring you guys back in as well uh, Tony's here Tony Plahetsky uh, this area in Round Rock is going to be the scene of an investigation yes. that's going to take a while this we've morning. been showing you some aerial views of that scene this is old settlers exit off of I-35 it is just packed. There are a lot of investigators and again, they want to make sure that they really are um, just very detailed with this investigation. So obviously if you're going to be traveling that area, I, I would try to use an alternate route. So to get those uh, alternate routes, let's turn things over to Anavid Reyes to see uh, where we can or how we can get around this. Anavid. Yeah, absolutely. So please be patient as this investigation is ongoing. So let me show you a map view of where exactly this is happening. So this is happening just west of I-35 along your southbound lanes. This is near the Red Roof Inn and Wood Spring Suites. This is where police have been set up all morning long. So if you're familiar with this area, this is just south of the Round Rock Honda and Toyota dealerships and also that Ikea and also the outlet mall. So if you're familiar with that area, that is where it is. So let's talk about the closure. Your southbound lane are closed. This is between Old Cellars Boulevard, just like Yvonne said, and RM620, which is also known as Round Rock Avenue. So if you live east of I-35, this is what you need to do. Consider A.W. Grimes as your alternate route if you're trying to get to South Austin. Now, if you are heading west and southbound to downtown Austin, this is your alternate route. Consider University to Palmer just to get around all of that mess. Right now, I-35 is stacked way past Westinghouse. So if you're traveling in that direction, these alternate alternate routes rather are your best bet. So also according to Round Rock Police, your best bet also is 183. So your main highways to consider is 183 and 130 as your alternate route. Those two um, main highways thoroughfares are for you to avoid I-35 completely. Back to you. All right, Anavi, thank you very much for that. As we approach the six o'clock hour, we do want to reset things. You are watching KVU News Daybreak, a very, very big morning here in Austin, Texas. If you're just now joining us, we are following breaking news happening now in Williamson County. Authorities say the suspect accused of setting off a string of deadly explosives in Austin has killed himself. This all happened early this morning at a hotel along I-35 on the southbound side and a side of I-35 there in Round Rock. The suspect got into a confrontation with police before detonating a device and killing himself. Now this all happened 
inside of his vehicle. The suspect was attempting to drive away there, blew up, blew up a bomb inside of his own car and killed himself. One officer approaching the vehicle was injured, not seriously. Now authorities tracked this man down, a 24 year old white male through cell phone technology and with the help of security video from that FedEx store on Brody Lane in Sunset Valley. We talked about that extensively yesterday. Officials say the device that exploded in church yesterday morning at that FedEx facility was sent from the FedEx store on Brody Lane. Authorities also got information from Google and from the suspect's own computer history that confirmed to officers the suspect was looking at information on where to ship devices. And now authorities say they still want families though to remain vigilant because they say they don't know where the suspect has been in the past 24 hours. So police are really asking people not only in Round Rock, not, not only in Austin, in all of our areas to you know report anything suspicious that they could come across. So uh, taking a look back at what brought us to this week's explosions, we talked about March 2nd. It all goes back to March 2nd. Then we had two more explosions on March 12th on Old Fort Hill Drive and Galindo Street. Uh, we also had one, uh, the fourth explosion on Don Song Drive in the southwest part of town. Now, now, officers were telling us that in the past 24 to 36 hours, though, they got new information, more information on a person of interest. And with that, they were able to locate some sort of a vehicle. And that's when they found that vehicle at a hotel in Round Rock. That's brought us to the explosion that happened inside of that vehicle early uh, this morning. We do know the person is from the area. We're not releasing that person's name at this point, but we do have reporters spanned out all across the area, many in Round Rock, including our own Jay Wallace, Nicole Cross. We also have assistance from our sister stations, WFA in Dallas with a couple of reporters here. Mm -hmm. Erica Lopez has tracked down the neighborhood Rebecca. where the bomber lived, and we're going to hear from her coming up. And Chris Sadegi, who we heard from just a little bit ago, also here gathering more information. Again, as they get this information, Many of these reporters getting new information and they're going to bring it to us. We'll then relay it uh, to you or hear from them directly. That's right. And speaking of information, we got a whole lot of information from a press conference not too long ago. And we heard from interim police chief Brian Manley from the mayor. We heard from ATF and from the FBI. If we have it, we'd like to go to that uh, news conference and just kind of show it to you in its entirety. So you can really get the gist of what has transpired in the last couple of hours. Good morning. Thank you all for coming out here this morning. Uh, my name is Brian Manley. I'm the chief of police at the Austin Police Department. I have Fred Milanowski here, the special agent in charge for ATF. Christopher Combs, the special agent in charge for the FBI. I have Austin Mayor Steve Adler and City Manager Spencer Cronk and several other members of uh, Assistant City Manager Ray Ariano and several members of the Austin Police Department's executive team. I think you all are aware and our community is well aware that it has been a long almost three weeks for the community of Austin as we have dealt with package bombs and other types of bombs that have been placed throughout our community. We have seen members of our community that have lost their lives and others whose lives have been forever changed due to significant injuries. We have talked many times over the past couple of weeks about the level of partnership that has taken place with our federal officials, our local officials, and our police department to bring this to an end. And through all of this hard work, we identified several leads throughout the course of the weeks. But beginning within the past 24 to 36 hours, we started getting information on one person of interest that we continued to work on and continue to develop. And as we continued to do our investigations, this person of interest ultimately moved to being a suspect. And that's what we started focusing on was his involvement in these crimes. Late last night and early this morning, we felt very confident that this was the suspect in the bombing incidents that took place in Austin. We had surveillance teams looking for this suspect, and we ultimately located the vehicle that this suspect was known to be driving, and witnesses told us he was driving. And in fact, we found that at a hotel right up the road here in Round Rock. We had multiple officers from both the police department and our federal partners that took up positions around the hotel 
awaiting the arrival of our tactical teams because we wanted to have ballistic vehicles here so we could attempt to take this suspect into custody as safely as possible. While we were waiting for those vehicles to get here, much time had passed and the vehicle started to drive away. We began following the vehicle, again, waiting to get the tactical uh, vehicles here so we could take this, uh, make a stop. However, the vehicle ended up stopping in the bar ditch on the side of the road behind us. As members of the Austin Police Department SWAT team approached the vehicle, the suspect detonated a bomb inside the vehicle, knocking one of our SWAT officers back and one of our SWAT officers fired at the suspect as well. The suspect is deceased uh, and has significant injuries from a blast that occurred from detonating a bomb inside his vehicle. We cannot name the suspect at this time because he has not been positively identified yet by the medical examiner and next of kin have not yet been notified. So there will be a lengthy investigation that will take place regarding the officer involved shooting. The investigation will be conducted by the Austin Police Department's Internal Affairs Unit with the Austin uh, Police Monitor participating as well for a review of compliance with departmental policy. There will be a concurrent criminal investigation that will take place by the Texas Rangers of the incident that occurred here tonight. Again, this is the culmination of three very long weeks for our community. And throughout these weeks, we've talked about the importance of remaining vigilant and looking out for each other. I want to continue that message as we stand here this morning, though, because we don't know where this suspect has spent his last 24 hours, and therefore, we still need to remain vigilant to ensure that no other packages or devices have been left through the community. So as we go through the day today, we want the community to remain vigilant, but I also want to look at where we are now in Round Rock and remind our neighboring communities of Round Rock and Cedar Park and the other cities that we do not know where he has been in the past 24 hours and you're, we need your communities to remain vigilant as well. And again, if you see something that looks suspicious, if you see something that's out of place, if you see something that gives you concern, call 911 and let us know so that we don't experience any more tragedies in our communities because we've had far too many over the past three weeks. I again want to thank the tremendous support and participation that we have had from our federal partners. And since this is still an ongoing investigation, we're not going to release a lot of the specific uh, details that led to the incidents that occurred tonight. We did have one officer who was injured when that bomb detonated as he approached the vehicle, suffering minor injuries. And then we had one officer, as I mentioned early, that fired his weapon at the suspect. That officer has been with the Austin Police Department for 11 years and again is a member of our SWAT team. As is our standard practice, he will be placed on administrative duty while we conduct the necessary investigations into what happened here. Uh, I'm now going to turn it over for comments to Special Agent uh, Maliski of the uh, ATF. Thank you. Um, the unprecedented level of cooperation and partnership from the law enforcement agencies at the local, state, and federal level um, allowed each of our agencies to bring a skill set, a different skill set to bear um, and identify this subject. And uh, fortunately tonight, we're able to bring this part of the investigation to a close. I also want to uh, thank the public who continue to support us and cooperate with us and continue to, to send in tips. Um, and as the chief said, we want them to continue to be vigilant uh, we are concerned that there still may be other devices out there. We want to make sure that if people see suspicious packages or bags, um, they continue to call 911 and report that to the police um, so we can respond and deal with those packages. Thank you. I'd like to say today is a great day for law enforcement. I'd like to thank the partners. There's an exceptional relationship here in Texas and particularly in Austin 
Chief Manley did an unbelievable job. The federal government brought the full resources of federal law enforcement here to solve this and to stop the injuring and the killing that was occurring. As the chief said, we're not done yet. It's a long day ahead. Uh, we are concerned that there may be other packages that are still out there. We need the public to remain vigilant, especially today as we go through this investigation. We will be here as long as it takes with our partners to figure out exactly what happened, why it happened, and how it happened. And we're committed to staying here with the Austin Police Department for as long as it takes to make sure we understand exactly what happened here. Uh, I'd just like to say this is what law enforcement does every day in this country. The brave men and women of the Austin Police Department put their lives on the line tonight to stop this man from setting off bombs. As the chief said, one of their officers was hurt approaching the suspect as he detonated a second device. That's what law enforcement does every day in this country. They put their lives on the line to make sure that all of us are safe. And I'd like to commend the chief and his brave men and women that approached that subject's vehicle and stopped the subject from hurting anybody else. Thank you very much. I understand that the investigation is uh, continuing and that everyone still is urged to be vigilant and look for things that are out of place. But that said, uh, gentlemen, uh, on behalf of an incredibly thankful community, I just want to say thank you. And if you would pass that on to the, to the men and women uh, that you work with. Uh, uh, Chief Manley, uh, to you and to your officers, to this literally an army of both neighboring cities and state and federal agencies. Thank you. And I'd just like to close with just really a thought for the families in our community who lost loved ones or who had loved ones seriously hurt in these incidents. Our heart remains with you as you go through your healing process and your time of sorrow, and we stand by you and with you in your time of need. And with that, we'll open it up for questions. Chief, was, Family, was the Chief suspect Family, Austin I resident? There may be more, was the suspect more than in one resident? suspects in, uh, involved. Are you still looking for other individuals who may be connected to this one, or was this a lone wolf? This investigation is still underway, so we cannot say that this was a act, an individual acting on their own. That's why this investigation will continue through the through the day or days coming. Are you still Without naming the, the suspect, facilities? can you give us at least biographical details? Rough age? Was he an Austin resident? The individual involved in this incident was a 24-year-old white male, and we're not going to give out any information regarding his residence. Any accomplices, sir? Sorry. Maybe you covered this with any accomplices. As I said, as I said, this investigation is ongoing. We want to make sure that we have confirmed that he either acted alone or if there were any accomplices that we identify them. Does this date back, this individual date back to March 2nd? We believe that this individual is responsible for all incidents that have taken place in Austin starting on March 2nd, those that occurred since then as well. So are you still searching the FedEx facilities? There is an operation going on in Shirts, Texas, I believe, at that warehouse. Again, wanting to make sure that that warehouse is safe, in addition to the fact that a bomb detonated in that warehouse, and it takes a while to process a post-blast investigation like that, so that's going to take a while for that one to be cleared. Chief, we have to why, we have to why, Chief. Sorry. Is it the FedEx package that led you to this conference? There were several leads that led us to this person. We have had a lot of evidence that came to us via uh, video sources as well as witnesses. Was he ever on your radar prior to this? This was a subject that we had developed over uh, the course of the investigation, but we became very interested in him over the past couple of days. Any Do we motive? have a why? Do we? You know, that's the one thing we don't have right now is a motive behind this. We do not understand what motivated him to do what he did, and that will also be part of the continuing investigation as we try to learn more about him and to understand why he took the actions that he Was did. He on his way to Sorry. Was he on his way to deliver another bomb? 
We don't know whether he was on his way to deliver another bomb. It is obvious that he had one with him, and that's the one that he detonated uh, in the vehicle as we approached. Hey, Cody, hey, 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 we ask you in regards to how this motive or how the operations of the bombs evolved. It, you know, it started off package bombs, it moved to trip wires, it moved to FedEx. You know, it, it doesn't seem like the same guy, so why are you so confident that this is the same guy, and or is this just an example of a person, a suspect, evolving? Again, as we've said all along, we didn't want to give out specific descriptions of the types of packaging the initial bombs were in because we knew that there was the potential he would change his methods, and that is, in fact, what occurred here. We do believe that all of these are related and that he is responsible for these based on the similarities that we have seen in all of the devices and in the evidence we're finding from those that did detonate. The FedEx packages, uh, we're not going to identify who they were being mailed to. However, we have been in contact with them. Did you have any contact with the suspect during the suspect. shooting? Was there any contact with the suspect before? Did any device exploded tonight? No, we had, again, we had uh, found him in the parking lot of a hotel in this neighborhood behind us, and we did not contact him. Again, we wanted this to come to a peaceful resolution tonight, but we knew how dangerous this situation was given what he had done in our community leading up to tonight. So we were waiting to get the best assets in place with our tactical teams and our ballistic vehicles so that we had a, the best chance possible to take him into custody. However, we were not afforded that that opportunity when he started driving away and we could not let him get anywhere into the community and that's why we ended up having a, an interaction on the frontage road behind us. Did he drive away because he saw police? I mean do you or uh, any, any evidence of that? I, I don't know why he drove away. The officers that were there had been watching him for quite some time, so nothing had changed there to where I believe that he saw them, but that's something we'll never know. Is Does he, he have a military about background, Chief? Really don't know what his background is. Were the last question. Question. Do, you, do you know the motive at this point? Do you know what motivated him at this point now that you've been able to put this to them? All right, you've been listening to a press conference with Austin Police Chief Brian Manley. It happened about an hour ago in Round Rock, and uh, this is where it all came to an end. Of course, traffic in the area is definitely going to be affected as this investigation continues. Here's where it's all happening. On the I-35 southbound lanes, those lanes are now closed from 3406 right at Old Settlers Boulevard. You know the area where the bridge construction is happening there in Round Rock, all the way down to 79 Sand Bass Road. The interstate is closed southbound. Both of those southbound lanes, including the frontage road, being affected by this because this is where this all ended uh, this morning. So avoid this area, 130. Uh, if you're headed into town on the uh, east side of Round Rock, head over to 183 on the west side and just stay away from I-35. Round Rock police say it's going to be a few more hours. It's going to be closed, in fact, most of the morning. So just remember that as part of your commute today. All right, if you're just now tuning in, you're thinking, why is there a traffic incident? Well, that's because a serial bomber suspect is dead. As far as the interim police chief, him saying that the suspect is a 24-year-old white male, a local. He said that that person was a local. Uh, all this oh, played out overnight. And we're going to go to Nicole Cross, who's staying there, standing by at that intersection that Brian was talking about. I know you spoke with witnesses at length. Tell us a little bit more about what they're saying transpired in that spot there in Round Rock. Well, you know, Yvonne, I did speak with a witness and he tells me that he's uh, he's relieved. He's relieved for himself. He's relieved for family members. He, like many of us, have been tracking this story since the very beginning, back on March 2nd, with the first bombing and the first death, then another and several injuries. And a lot of people are just feeling a sigh of relief. But as you said, it's still very active here at I-35 and Old Settlers Boulevard. Take a look here behind me. We still have a number of law enforcers on the scene. We have the FBI, we have ATF, we have Round Rock Police, we have Austin Police. And as you see, as you span across traffic moving but at a slower pace and yes there are still some parts that are completely blocked off so you do want to avoid this area if at all possible you know Austin police tweeted out about an officer involved shooting at around three o'clock this morning we later learned that that officer involved shooting was connected to the Austin bombings and that that bombing suspect is now dead but as you heard Chief Manley say we don't know if 
he was a lone wolf. We don't know if he acted alone. We don't know what he was doing in the course of the last 24 hours. So this is still a very active investigation, and authorities are reminding members of the community to be vigilant. Still don't touch anything that looks suspicious. Still don't approach anything that looks out of place. They are trying to work backwards at this point and track his whereabouts. They did track him at a hotel. They did follow him. They tell us that a bomb detonated inside his vehicle when authorities approached him. And we learned that one officer who is an 11 year veteran of the force was injured but only sustained minor injuries. And that's some good news there. We also know that another officer fired at that suspect. We know that that suspect is now dead. And so we're going to stay on top of this and bring you new developments as we learn more in this story. But for now, live in Round Rock, Nicole Cross, KVU News. All right, All right, Nicole, thanks a lot again. This is happening in Round Rock. Round Rock ISD just tweeting out. I want to say, before we get to that, let me tell you about this. Round Rock ISD schools will operate on a normal schedule in Round Rock today. Late arrivals due to traffic will be excused. Again, this area in Round Rock is a very busy thoroughfare on I-35 southbound. So Round Rock ISD, uh, normal schedule today, but late arrivals because of this traffic will be excused today. So that's something to know if you're a student uh, just waking up about to get ready to go to school this the morning. Investigation is far from yeah. over. You can see a lot of uh, authorities there in hazmat suits making sure that they really comb that scene. If we could take a look at that tweet from interim police chief Brian Manley as well. Uh, he also sent out a tweet letting people uh, know I can't thank the men and women of Austin PD and our federal partners enough for their tireless work in restoring peace to our community. Also in that uh, press conference, uh, he did say that his heart goes out to the family of the victims, the House family and the Mason family. Again, we have a lot to get to. We're going to go to a quick break and then we'll be right back. Find incredible deals at Haverty's during our Tempur-Pedic floor model closeout. Let our experts find you the right mattress as we make room for new models. Save up to 50% on select Tempur-Pedic floor model mattresses and adjustable bases. Choose from select Temper Cloud, Temper Contour, and Temper Flex models. Hurry, once these great deals are gone, they're gone. With Haverty's, your mattress can be perfect, even when life isn't. The Tempur-Pedic floor model closeout at Haverty's. Life looks good. You wanted it, you asked for it, and we listen. Introducing new Applewood Smoked Texas Brisket at Taco Cabana. We're serving it all day, all the ways you like it, including delicious new tacos, fried jalapenos and onion strips with barbecue sauce, grilled peppers and onions, queso and roasted jalapenos, brisket with barbecue sauce, and a brisket egg and cheese all day breakfast taco. New Texas Brisket, all the ways you like it, only at your Taco Cabana. Why shop Marshalls? Because shopping should thrill you. With big brands at small prices. <laughs> We're the whole family. And unexpected finds you never knew you were looking for. So every trip feels like an instant victory. That's the fun of Marshalls. <gasps> With brands that wow and prices that thrill, Marshalls is never boring and always surprising. Good morning, thanks for watching Daybreak. We're glad you're with us this morning. Live in Southeast Austin. Heavy delays there, so consider Far West Boulevard as your alternate route. Lots of rain, so don't forget the umbrella as you head out the door. Daybreak! <laughs> Dear Austin, I love you. You're outrageously hot and super cool at the same time. Like queso. Mmm, queso. Anyway, I just wanted to say it's awesome being your weatherman. I know some people give you a hard time because you're getting bigger, but I say there's more of you to love. You're weird and wonderful, and you have amazing weather patterns, and I look forward to covering you every night in a completely professional meteorological kind of way. See you at 10. Love, Albert. Austin's a growing city, but it's a whole lot more than just that. From 6th Street to Georgetown and back down to Buda. It's more than a place to live. It's a place to come alive. Here it's more than a game. It's a passion. It's more than a headline. It's a life story. It's more than a hashtag. It's a movement. Here it's more than a forecast. It's your family safety. 
It's more than just local news. It's the KVU Nightly. Good morning. Thanks for watching Daybreak. We're glad you're with us this morning. Live in Southeast Austin. Heavy delays there, so consider Far West Boulevard as your alternate route. Lots of rain, so don't forget the umbrella as you head out the door. Daybreak! <laughs> Welcome back to KVU News Daybreak. Time is now 625 this morning. If you are just waking up and joining us, it has been a very eventful night overnight into this morning here in Austin and in fact north of Austin in Round Rock. The scene is on your screen now. This is where police say the Austin bombing suspect is dead. They found him at a hotel in Round Rock. They tracked him down there late last night, surrounded the hotel. The 24 year old white male got in a vehicle, attempted to leave the scene and police chief Brian Manley says at that point officers moved in. The suspect in his car then detonated an explosive device between I-35 southbound and the frontage road right there at Old Settlers Boulevard, killing himself, ending what has been at least for this part of the investigation, he killed himself, ending what has been a long month for Austin police. Now that suspect detonated the bomb inside the vehicle, as you said, as SWAT team was trying to approach the car. As far as the name of the suspect, we do not have a name at this point. We are working, efforting to get that for you. But we can tell you that this has been a very quick turn of events. As far as the investigation, that is ongoing. Right now, there is a heavy police presence at I-35 and Old Settlers in Round Rock. and. Traffic is a mess in and out of that area. Let's go to Anna Vid Reyes so she can and give us ways to get around that and circumvent that so police can do their job. Anna Vid. Yeah, absolutely. So heavy police presence, and this is where they are set up. So where it's happening, it's near the Red Roof Inn and Wood Springs Suite. So this is happening on the west side of I-35 on your on your southbound lane. So if you're familiar with the Round Rock area, this is just way south of University where that Ikea and the outlet mall is. It's south of there, and it's also south of the Round Rock and Honda Toyota dealership. So this is where it is taking place. Avoid this area completely, completely, according to authorities. I-35 southbound will be completely shut down for the next four to six hours, so it's going to cause a major headache for you. And right now, delays are extending past university, so it's something that you need to watch out for and to spread the word. Please help spread the word. Avoid I-35 if you live anywhere near Williamson County or Round Rock. So let's go ahead and talk about this uh, alternate route. A.W. Grimes, if you live east of I-35 or the 130 toll road. Also, if you live west of I-35, consider University to 183 or University to Palmer traveling southbound. Back to you. Great advice, no doubt about it. Of course, a heavy police presence there. And now, as Yvonne mentioned, we are not identifying the person police are saying is the suspect in the case. We do know he is from the area. In fact, reporter Rebecca Lopez from our sister station in WFAA is here to assist us this morning. And she is in the neighborhood this morning with more details. Rebecca. We are here in the suspect's neighborhood. When I fir first approached the neighborhood, a trooper stopped us. He was blocking the uh, road and said that we could not go near there because there might be someone still inside. We moved a little further back. Uh, two more troopers came back and told us that we needed to move because the home was not secure. Now they are letting us up a little bit closer. You can see a DPS trooper here behind me. More have arrived. They are, it looks like, gearing up to eventually go into this home. Obviously, they want to comb through this house, get all the evidence that they can possibly get. We also know that the uh, suspect's parents live nearby, so uh, I'm, they, we are seeing some activity in that area as well. So again, we're not identifying the suspect. It looks like they are trying to get into this house. Uh, most of their resources obviously are tied up at the other scene, and that's what the trooper said. They were waiting for some of those resources to free up before they enter this house. But again, and they told us we could not be in the neighborhood itself because the home is not secure and there might be someone inside. That's what we know. And as soon as we have more information, we will update you. Reporting live, Rebecca Lopez, back to you. Rebecca, I know that uh, you can only give us uh, some information, but any word on maybe neighbors in that neighborhood, are they being also told to just stay in place? Are they being evacuated? Do we know anything about that? 
asked about that, and uh, the trooper said he was waiting for more direction, that they may evacuate some people around here, but for now, uh, they have not done that. They have simply blocked off the road and keeping uh, people that do not live in the area out of the neighborhood. All right, KVU's Rebecca Lopez reporting for us. Rebecca, thank you so much for that. We'll check back in with you as soon as you get more information. Again, we do know the suspect. We're not releasing that person's name at this point. We know where he lives. We're not telling you where that is simply because of the investigation is still ongoing. So bear with us. We'll bring that information to you as soon as at all possible. And as we approach now the bottom of the hour, we do want to reset for you and explain to you the events that have taken place overnight here in Austin and in Round Rock in Williamson County uh, this morning. Morning. Yes, police telling us over the past 24 to 36 hours they got information on a person of interest and they said that that's where it located them to a vehicle and they found that vehicle at a hotel in Round Rock. This suspect accused of setting off a string of deadly explosives in Austin. That suspect has killed himself. Now this all happened early this morning at a hotel along Interstate 35 right there in Round Rock on the southbound side of the interstate. The suspect Police tell us got into a confrontation with police after they surrounded the hotel. The suspect attempted to leave and then after police moved in, detonated an explosive device inside of his vehicle there in the ditch between I-35 and the frontage road, killing himself and in the process, uh, Chief Manley said, sustained significant injuries. This happened inside the vehicle the suspect was driving. One officer approaching that vehicle at the time was hurt, not seriously. Authorities say they tracked the suspect down using cell phone technology and with the help of security video from that FedEx store on Brody Lane down in Sunset Valley. We brought you that with Jenny Lee at the scene yesterday afternoon as the package was sent from there to the FedEx facility in shirts that did explode. Officials say the device that exploded in shirts yesterday was sent from Austin and was going back to a recipient in Austin. Big break in the case. Authorities also got information from Google searches and from the suspect's computer history. That all confirmed the suspect was looking for information on where to go to ship devices. And authorities say they still want families to remain vigilant because they don't know where the suspect has been in the past 24 hours. So police are asking people to report anything suspicious that they may come across. In fact, you know, some tips on spawning a suspicious package. They say look for oily stains, some wires may be protruding, maybe too much tape, some lopsidedness. Those are things that you have to really pay attention to with your packages. If you see a strange address on there, again, don't open it. Just call 911. That's a great point to say, and also remember the suspect uh, was caught in Williamson County in Round Rock. So as this has been a, a focused Austin investigation, mm -hmm. the surrounding communities need to be vigilant as well, right. according to the police, and ob obviously other authorities within Williamson County saying the same things. Just be vigilant. If you have a package that looks suspicious, just because this person is now deceased, that does not mean this is all over with. There is a possibility there could be more packages. We just have to wait on police to tell us when it's when they all clear is given, and it might not be today. It might be the this week, it might be next week, but this person responsible, police say, is now dead. And we've had hundreds upon hundreds of investigators from a local, state, federal level in town trying to piece all of this together. Yes, the suspect is dead. Yes, they believe this was uh, the act of one lone serial bomber, but the investigation is very lengthy. It is far from over. The Austin Police Department Internal Affairs Unit, they're working the case, as is Austin Police Monitor. We have the Texas Rangers on it as well, and the feds are saying, look, we're done, but we still have a lot of work to do. We're not going to leave town just yet. We're going to make sure that everything is coordinated because that is a huge coordination. If you think about the hundreds of leads they received and the hundreds upon hundreds of uh, um, investigators in town. So that's definitely something that they need to work through together. So the suspect is dead, but the work definitely continues. We know the suspect is from the area. We know has family in the area. In fact, we know the neighborhood uh, where the suspect lived. We're not releasing that at this point because uh, of the investigation and the confirmation by police. As soon as we do have that confirmed, we will let you know uh, the 24 year old suspect, a white male is the person police say is responsible for all five of the explosions. Uh, 
three taking place on the east side of I-35, and then the, the Sunday night explosion in southwest Austin. Yesterday morning, we had the explosive package that was discovered there in shirts, injuring one person just northwest of San Antonio, and that is where this all began to take shape yesterday. Tony Pulaheski is going to join us in just a bit to explain more about this, but we talked about that FedEx facility mm -hmm. right there in southwest Austin. The police say they used a search this suspect had made on his computer searching for FedEx locations to drop packages like this off. That brought them to this. They tied the, the two together with surveillance video and the paper trail and were able to a suspect that they already had yeah. their eyes on yeah. connect all it's of confirmed. those dots yesterday and that's why last night that led them to the hotel in Williamson County in Round Rock right on I-35. The police were there. The man then decided to leave in a vehicle, blew himself up in the car, ending the search. There were so many components to this story at one point, uh, but luckily we have our team of reporters. We have Rebecca Lopez. We have Chris Sadegi, Jay Wallace, Nicole Cross. We had our reporters overnight as well, kind of trickling into the morning as well. But we definitely have this story and we still continue to have this story covered on all angles right now. Uh, I found it very interesting that they said that, you know, at the Brody location, that FedEx, there was no drop off spot. So you, they, person, this suspect, 24-year-old mm -hmm. male, had to physically go into that store. In that store, you've been to a FedEx before. There are a ton of sur surveillance videos and cameras. They saw on that camera he had some sort of a wig as a disguise that he had used, but that definitely was a big break in the case that we had some physical proof, not just a random package at a doorstep. We had physical proof of someone coming in, and then obviously that coupled with the cell phone technology, the pings that they deciphered from, and then also the um, search engines as well that they looked into. We have Jay Wallace is at the scene, has been there for several hours this morning, gathering what information he can and describing the scene, quite frankly, which is really extensive. Jay, what is the latest there at the scene in Round Rock? Yeah, Brian, well, the latest is that the investigation, not only is it not dwindling down, it's only growing with these vehicles along I-35 with the highway shut down as they're investigating near this hotel where he was found, where he pulled up on the side of the road and took his own life. You can see to my right, to your left, that these vehicles, there's some SWAT cars, there's some fire department vehicles, there's um, police. You see the flashing lights, and a lot of these cars are unmarked, so you might not necessarily know exactly which cars with which, which department, but there is the Round Rock uh, Police Regional incident management that actually just pulled up since my last live shot um, so they actually just arrived as well and you see some of the bright lights um, a part of these vehicles that's to make sure they're shining light on um, certain parts of the highway to make sure uh, they can investigate and I'll step to the side as we continue to move to your right and you see uh, the ATF is also here obviously with another explosive device being a part of this incident as he exploded detonated that vice device the suspect in his own car uh, they are sure to be out here and checking on that and uh, you you know, you see the Wood Spring Suites, the Red Roof Inn. We don't know which hotel it is because I can't even see the end of this stretch of police cars. And there are many hotels along this highway. We don't know which hotel it was, but they're assuredly checking in where that vehicle was found, where they found his vehicle in the hotel. They're checking around that hotel, make sure he did not leave any other devices at that location. And, you know, police have said they don't necessarily know his whereabouts 24 hours before they finally found him. And so, a part of this investigation is obviously away from where we are right now. It's not just here. It's making sure Austin and Central Texas is safe and that no packages were left anywhere before he took his own life because obviously all the other packages, all these other explosions, there were packages left on doorsteps. There was the trip. There was the trip line. There were packages in FedExes. They were located in places he wasn't. So who's to say that there might not be other packages in other locations? We don't know either way. And so that is also why Brian Manley, he's continuing continuing to tell people to remain diligent and we are as well continue to see something say something we say it a lot but we have to keep saying that and get that in people's minds because uh, who's to say if this is completely over well police are saying it's not over they are still investigating and uh, so we'll continue to stay out here and if we find out more from police out here at the scene we'll make sure and bring it to you right away and let you know on air and online Brian Yvonne
All right, Jay, thank you so much. We have been hearing witness accounts from the scene. Uh, Nicole Cross is there on the scene as well, speaking with witnesses. She also spoke with uh, City Mayor Steve Adler, and it was interesting that he had mentioned that we all need to be a community. We all need to be in this together, especially learning that this suspect is a local. I mean, it's, it's quite shocking. So let's, let's get to uh, Nicole Cross so we can hear more about what she learned, both from witnesses and the mayor. Yes, Yvonne, uh, Mayor Adler did speak about the importance of, of us working as a community. And you know, I'm a journalist, but I'm also a psychotherapist. So I'd be remiss not to talk about the healing that many are saying needs to take place at this time. So many people are tweeting me saying that they are outside of Austin. We're very concerned about what was happening here in town. So many people locally on edge, not sure what to think. You know, Austin was just voted best place to live in the country. And then we get news of Austin bombings and so many people are trying to wrap their minds around what has happened but what I do want to say to all of those individuals is that the good news is that we were able to show a community where partners are coming together linking arms giving information talking about what's happening staying on air for hours on end to bring you the information you need so that you can begin to feel safe um, with everything that's happening around us the news that a suspect is dead for some people is giving them relief and uh, allowing them to feel a little bit easier. But then the question comes up of how to talk to your kids about a situation like this. How do you talk to your kids about Austin bombings? It's important that as you're having that conversation with them to ask them a lot of questions. What is your understanding? What do you know of what has happened? And to explain to them that sometimes people make bad choices and with those bad choices comes consequences. In this case, we have a suspect who's dead, who's been a part of Austin bombings that include Included the death of two people and the injury of four other people. So it is at this time when we move from the shock that this is happening in our beloved city to the, for some people, anger that this could happen in our city to maybe even some grief that this actually did happen in our city to uh, communication and healing. So that's where we are at this time. And that's what a lot of the neighbors and residents and the mayor is talking about. Guys, back to you. All right, Nicole Cross in Round Rock. Great perspective there from Nicole this morning. Again, a sense of relief for many. Uh, still some concern as well. We're going to take a quick break here on Daybreak, and then we will be back to recap what we've learned overnight. A very big morning here in Austin. The Austin bombing suspect killed himself this morning. We'll have more on that right after this. Stay with us. KG Weather sponsored by Capital Farm Credit. Capital Farm Credit is a cooperative. That means we're always by your side because together we're better. Go to CapitalFarmCredit.com. Get ready for savings so powerful, it'll shock you. The Auto Nation 72 hour flash sale. See supercharged savings online every 72 hours, then buy in store. Right now, buy Toyota Camrys just $14,994. Or Toyota RAV4s only 18994 Hurry! These savings end in a flash. Only at Auto Nation Toyota. <laughs> Charge in now. Hi, I'm George with Whitestone Fine Jewelry, and we're all about buying. We offer the best prices on diamonds, gold, silver, platinum, bullion, and coins. Have an old Rolex tucked away? We'll give you top payouts for any luxury watches. Want money in your pocket today? Then sell us your old diamonds. If you're not going to wear it anymore, then bring it to us. We'll pay you top dollar. Visit us at whitestonefinejewelry.com. Whitestone Fine Jewelry, real diamonds at great prices. Come celebrate 128 years of yes at Cons Home Plus and pay no interest until 2020. Go to cons.com to apply for your yes money financing and get approved instantly. Then come join the celebration. So it's springtime, and that can mean a lot of these, which can sometimes lead to this. So Austin Energy customers can just use this and text REGISTER to 287846 to report power outages and get status updates in your area. Learn more at outagemap.austinenergy.com. If you've heard it once, you've heard it 250 times or more. At Southwest Kia, it's 250, 250, 250. All you need is $250 down, monthly payments in a brand new Forte, $250 a month or less, and we have over $250 to choose at southwestkia.com. Call ARS and Rescue Rooter. 
It's the ARS Springtacular Savings Event going on now. Our warehouses are stocked with the latest and high efficiency HVAC systems. Save thousands on the new system you need now with our guaranteed best prices of the year and payments as low as $83 a month. Plus, get a free Nest thermostat and Nest Protect. Don't miss the coolest sale of the year, the ARS Springtacular Savings Event. Call now, 777-7000 or visit ARS.com. With more Jeep inventory than anyone in Central Texas, the Niall Maxwell Supercenter knows every inch of the new 2018 Jeep Wrangler. Get to know yours and save thousands during our spring sales event at the Niall Maxwell Supercenter in Austin. All right, if you're just now joining us here on KB News Daybreak, uh, Austin bombing suspect is dead after setting off a bomb in a car that he was in. There was an officer involved shooting prior to that. Police are still urging people to be vigilant, and they say they don't know where the suspect has been in the past 24 hours, but still a very active scene, right? More details on that coming up. Let's talk about the scene now. It's I-35 in Round Rock. Anavid Reyes has a look at traffic in that area, which is going to be affected for quite a while this morning, Anavid. That's right, and you just saw police investigating. So where they're set up is just west of I-35 along your southbound lane. So police have shut down I-35 coming in southbound. Now, the silver lining here is that your northbound lanes are open, but right now what you're seeing is uh, southbound closed between Old Sellers Boulevard down to Sam Bass. Now, that is a new development according to Round Rock Police. So if you're in that particular area, what you need to know is that this will be shut down for the next, you know, six hours. So go Go ahead and consider A.W. Grimes coming in southbound if you live east of I-35. Now, if you live west of I-35, consider University down to Parmer or University to 183. You can also consider the 130 toll road as your alternate route to just get around this mess. Avoid I-35 as much as possible. Now, let's go ahead and take you over to the Austin metro area as a whole. The good news here is that I'm not seeing major traffic delays for you. You're actually driving at about normal speed, 60 miles per hour here on 360 67 coming in southbound on Mopac and then you are taking a look at 31 miles here just at that I 35 and 183 intersection. So that's a look at traffic. Let's go ahead and toss things over to Erica Lopez for a check on our weather. All right. Pictures are in the 30s for the area. All right, having some trouble with her audio there. Erica, we're going to get back with you in just a bit. Your microphone, I think, is uh, is cutting out on you. But we do want to recap again. The bombing suspect is dead. Police say he blew himself up inside of his vehicle this morning. Of course, this dates back to March the 2nd when this all began. Kayla Norwood is here now with a, with a look at the entire thing and the process of how it all happened. Kayla? Well, that's right. This is really a long time coming. So much has gone in to this moment right now where that suspect is now dead. Investigators have been working diligently to catch this bombing suspect. So let's start back from the beginning here. The first explosion almost three weeks ago was at a home on Haverford Drive. It killed 39 year old Anthony House. House's brother tells us he is survived by his wife and eight year old daughter. Days later, another package killed 17 year old Draylen Mason. Police say Mason had taken the package into the kitchen when it detonated. His mother was seriously hurt in the explosion and is still recovering now. Now then to the third explosion just hours after that. 75 year old Esperanza Hope Herrera was hurt March 12th at her home on Galindo Street in the Montopolis area. She's still recovering. The fourth explosion just Sunday night in Southwest Austin in the Travis Country neighborhood. Two men in their 20s were taken to the hospital with non life threatening injuries. Police said a trip wire left on the side of the road triggered that explosion. Then yesterday there were two suspicious packages, one that detonated at a FedEx facility in shirts near San Antonio. One woman reported ringing in her ear because of this blast and then another bomb at the FedEx facility in Southeast Austin near the airport. But this bomb did not go off. Now, as we heard from police, this suspect is now dead, but the story is far from over. Guys, officials will continue to investigate these series of events. Back to you. All right, Caitlin, thank you so much. Caitlin, thanks. A Goodwill employee is home from the hospital this morning. We know that after being injured by an explosion yesterday. And uh, 
that was one of the incidents that happened. Also, we also heard about a possible second package at that mm -hmm. Brody location. That turned out to be a confirmation, right? There was a second package from that location. But let's bring in a KVU reporter and Austin Statesman reporter, Austin American Statesman reporter, uh, Tony Plahetsky. And Tony, uh, I know that right now, we know that there is a suspect, suspect that is dead. We don't know the name of that suspect. They said next of kin hasn't been notified. Uh, what else are we learning other than this person was a local 24 year old white male? Well, in terms of the suspect, that is a lot of the information that we have right now. We're still trying to learn more about the suspect at this time. Authorities are going to be focusing on how this person came to be able to construct these types of explosive devices. That's going to be part of the investigative efforts that are underway. Law enforcement has told us, though, that the main focus, the main priority, as you can imagine, for investigators working on this case in recent weeks has been to stop this person from further placing explosive devices in our community and that they have been less concerned about who exactly the person is in terms of of more of their personality traits and and in terms of biographical information but what we are being told is going to happen now that an arrest has been made brian and yvonne is now they will actually turn back the clock mm -hmm. and try to understand more about who this person is mm -hmm. but if you talk to law enforcement and you talk to experts one thing that they are certain of and that is this suspect again being described as a local person uh, has a lot of experience and sophisticated skills when it comes to developing these types of explosives. We've seen uh, those skills being played out in terms of being able to put together an explosive device that detonates on cue. That was the case in those first three um, uh, uh, targets that we saw. But then later uh, on Sunday, this past Sunday, we saw the use of what authorities have described as a tripwire, which Brian and Yvonne again says something very meaningful to suspects in terms of the skill of this person. Let's reiterate, you, you, you said arrested, but you meant kill. He killed himself this morning. I did, yes. He wasn't arrested. As authorities were closing in. Yeah, the That's suspect right. is, is now dead. And Thank you, you. And absolutely. And you've been working hard to kind of connect the dots as police did really beginning yesterday morning. They had you said the suspect in mind, but yesterday morning in shirts with the explosion there and then the FedEx facility here in Austin with all the evidence they gathered there. That is how that is what led them to Williamson County late last night. That's right. The tide began turning really yesterday within the past 24 to 36 hours, and I kind of felt as though that may be happening um, because a lot of the investigators went silent. I wasn't getting a lot of return phone calls, and so that made me feel as though um, the investigation had really taken a turn and picked up momentum. And the way we are being told that that happened, one of the key clues that this uh, suspect left behind is going to the FedEx store on Brody Lane in South Austin, where authorities have confirmed uh, he was captured on security video, but also weeks before, and that you can see video of that store right now, but weeks before, as this has all been unfolding, authorities also were doing other boots on the ground investigative type work, primarily going to stores, both big box retail stores as well as locally owned stores here in Austin, trying to go through sales reports and receipts, sales mm -hmm. receipts, to determine whether or not this person had been buying things that could be used to make a bomb and buying them in quantities that would trigger alarms yeah. for investigators. That's got to raise a red flag if someone's going into it, whether it be a mom and pop store or something and buying such bulk items, you know what I mean, for all of those um, devices. As far as Rebecca Lopez, we have a reporter of ours who is at the scene, we can't tell you where, but basically it's a neighborhood where the suspect lives. She says that they were going to be talking to, or they were actually interviewing this 24 year old, their, par their parents as well, to get more information. This is a neighborhood here, but that's interesting maybe to learn. I mean, if we can't learn from the suspect, perhaps we can learn more information from the parents about what may have been this MO. And I think we should explain to people that while yes, we are hearing a name. I want to be honest with you about that. And we do have um, reporters in the area of where this person may live. But at the same time, we have concerns about whether or not the suspect's family has been formally notified by law enforcement. And of course, before we release that name and, and publish that name, 
we want to make absolutely sure that it is either officially confirmed by law enforcement sources or that we have solid enough confirmation uh, before reporting the name of that person. So there is a name that is being talked about, um, but at the same time, we are not in a position yet to release that name. So I want to be transparent with, sure. with our viewers here. Absolutely, absolutely. And this goes back again to March 2nd, and you talked about earlier the, the MO changed over the course of that 17, 18 days from package bombs delivered to homes. Uh, the chief yesterday even mentioned that the targeted suspects or the targeted victims in the beginning became more random towards the end and the bomb on Sunday night. That whole process, including the mailing of the packages, led them to the suspect, uh, which they obviously now know who it was, and uh, that suspect is deceased. That's right, and now authorities will also try to answer some of the other major questions in this case, including why those addresses why these potential targets, especially early on, um, were specific people chosen uh, for some reason that remains unclear. Those are all questions that authorities are going to be right. pursuing the answers to. Speaking of questions, I know investigators are very busy. Let's go to Chris Sadegi, who is live out there. Chris, I know you can probably barely hear right now, but Chris, uh, we're wanting to get more of an information as to what's taking place behind you. I know there's a lot of activity with investigators behind you. Can you paint the picture? Yeah, probably I'd say maybe 30 minutes ago, we saw a big line of agents wearing those white suits, those hazmat type suits. It was the same suits that ATF was wearing out there in Southwest Austin on Monday when they were investigating the fourth bombing with the tripwire. They were all, they went in the line down the highway there on southbound I-35 and then it looked like they kind of went down out of our view down off the frontage road. That is a suit that they wear when they're investigating potentially explosive situations. They don't want to contaminate anything. So that leads one to believe they're still looking in that area with the presumption, the possibility that this vehicle might have more explosives attached to it. They're going to be abundantly cautious. We talked to a witness earlier that said that back when everything first happened, they were passing by. They saw that the bomb technicians had the bomb robot that they use in these situations. So they're being super careful to make sure that vehicle doesn't have anything else potentially explosive attached to it as they process this scene. And southbound I-35 still shut down, probably will be for the rest of the morning, I imagine. Chris Sadegi live for us in Round Rock. Chris, thank you so much for that. And that's a great point Chris brings up. They're being very careful around the vehicle because they don't Thanks. know, at least going into the situation, what was in the vehicle other yeah. than the bomb the man used to explode and blow up himself inside the car. As is, I would suppose that they're being just as careful inside this suspect's house because you have no idea yeah. what was still there inside of that house. So that's something else that they're being very uh, precarious and cautious with. And uh, let's just take a quick Quick, quick little break from this news to talk about uh, weather and talk about what we're dealing with today. Hi, Erica. Yeah, because we're talking about some cold temperatures out there this morning in the low 40s and even 30s for the hill country out there right now. Check out our central counties. Austin, you're at 44. Round Rock at 38 degrees as we speak. Also, a few 30s out there for our eastern counties, closer to 50 for some. As you're heading to school this morning, here's what we can expect. It's a chilly but still overall a dry start to our morning with temperatures in the 40s. Lots of sunshine throughout today, though. Forecast highs will be in the 70s this afternoon. Humidity levels still going to be on the low side, but I am tracking this to slowly change with now south winds that will be in place throughout today. Here's a look at your next 12 hours. Mostly sunny skies by lunchtime will be in the 60s, warming up into the mid to upper 70s for this afternoon. We're calling your official forecast high for us here in Austin, 76 degrees. Notice winds are coming in from the south now, so that's going to be the changing factor that will slowly increase humidity levels and eventually bring in some more clouds, which we'll start to see by tomorrow. Here's a look at your seven day forecast. Not only are we going to increase moisture, but also temperatures in the mid to upper 80s by this weekend. All right, stay with us. We're going to have more coming up after the break. KVU Allergy Forecast is sponsored by your ATV Pharmacy. Are allergies getting you down? Speak to one of our pharmacists to find an affordable solution for allergy relief. At the Roger Beasy family of dealerships, we're proud to be partnered with a premium car brand like Mazda. 
Since 1972, we've built thousands of loyal relationships with drivers who appreciate what Mazda's really about, that driving is what matters most. It's not just a tagline, it's a single idea every Mazda is created around to make your driving experience better. So next time you're in the market for a new vehicle, we'd love to show you what makes Mazda and Roger BC such a trusted choice. Stop by any of our four convenient locations today for a test drive and an exceptional value on the Mazda that's perfect for you. We're Roger BC Mazda, homegrown in Austin and proud to support our community. See our inventory and specials online at rogerbcmazda.com. Live front and center and celebrate the Austin lifestyle at Zilker on the Park Condominiums. Luxurious, smart, sophisticated. Why pay rent when you can own from 275,000? We would like to invite you to experience our world-class lounge pool, fitness center, and club Zilker. Our award-winning models are open seven days a week. Located directly at the entrance to Zilker Park at 1900 Barton Springs Road. Come see us today at Zilker on the Park. Luxury, location, lifestyle. This is Dr. Gunter Zuloff. Did he solve Carmichael's Toshint conjecture? Yes. Yes, he did. But did he buy his car at drive time using the industry's smartest online tools? No. No, he did not. Dr. Gunter Zuloff was almost a genius. Intelligent online financing and live market-based pricing on over 15,000 vehicles. Drivetime.com, the genius way to buy a car. Before I found out about HWC, um, I was having horrible night sweats all night long. As soon as I got treatment, um, the hot flashes went away. My night sweats have disappeared. My memory is back. The fog has lifted. Uh, I have so much more energy now. I feel like I did in my 20s and 30s. My libido is back. So I am very happy. Call HWC of Texas today at 512-458-2000 for your free consultation. Seven Day Forecast, sponsored by Subaru of Georgetown. Exceptional value and a Subaru of Georgetown difference. Free dent and interior protection, windshield repair, and loaner cars. The suspect is deceased uh, and has significant injuries from a blast that occurred from detonating a bomb inside his vehicle. We don't know whether he was on his way to deliver another bomb. It is obvious that he had one with him, and that's the one that he detonated uh, in the vehicle as we approached. After weeks of dealing with packaged bombs and other explosions throughout the city, police now say the bombing suspect in Austin is dead. All of this breaking overnight. The investigation is far from over, though. Austin police are still urging residents to be careful, remain vigilant, because other devices may still be out there. Here is what we know about the dead bombing suspect so far this morning. Authorities say he's a white 24 year old male who's also a local here in Central Texas. Officials are not releasing his name until his next of kin has been notified. Earlier this morning, authorities tracked him and his vehicle down at a hotel along I-35 in Round Rock. The suspect then drove away as authorities waited for tactical teams to arrive. The vehicle stopped in a ditch on the side of the road. As members of the Austin Police Department SWAT team approached the vehicle, the suspect detonated a bomb inside the vehicle, knocking one of our SWAT officers back, and one of our SWAT officers fired at the suspect as well. The suspect is deceased uh, and has significant injuries from a blast that occurred from detonating a bomb inside his vehicle. So there you hear it. That's how it all ended. He blew himself up with one of his own explosive devices. The suspect detonated that bomb, killing himself, injuring that police officer. Minor injuries, we're told. Police still trying to figure out a motive why he did all of this. So the, that's still continuing. The investigation definitely going to take a while, especially in this location along I-35. Yes, again, that suspect, you know, detonating the device, so it, it leads the well, rather begs the question, why was there, uh, he had a pa package on him. Was he planning on perhaps t delivering that package somewhere or was he intending to 
kill himself and set off that bomb. You're looking at a map here of everything that has transpired over the last 19 or so days. March 2nd is where it all began. Explosion number one on Haverford Drive in northeast Austin. That bomb killing 39 year old Anthony House and on March 12th, two more explosions happened. The first exploded before 645 in the morning. That location Old Fort Hill Drive in East Austin. 17 year old Draylen Mason died. His mother was seriously hurt. Five hours later, another bomb. This one on Galindo Street in Southeast Austin, seriously hurting 75 year old Esperanza Hope Herrera. The fourth bomb went off in the Travis Country area in Southwest Austin on Sunday. Two men were hurt. 22 and a 23 year old. They're expected to be OK. And then that fifth explosion, Brian, happened yesterday at the FedEx facility in Shirts. That's right, just 30 minutes northeast of San Antonio, about an hour's drive from Austin. That employee was injured by the impact, but is expected uh, to be okay there. No doubt that was a huge part of the investigation as we've been reporting all morning long. The pieces to the puzzle really began to come together yesterday when that package exploded in that FedEx facility in Shirts because they were able to then track that package back to Austin where it was sent from a FedEx store mm -hmm. down on Brody Lane. They put the pieces together, led police to the hotel in Round Rock overnight, and that is where the explosion took place inside the vehicle of the suspect, the suspect killing himself. Jay Wallace is there, been there all morning long. I-35 southbound right between uh, Old Settlers Boulevard and 79 in that area. Southbound lane still closed there, Jake. Yeah, Brian, it's still closed down. Now, there's been a little bit of a change. You know, what I want to do by being out here, being live, I want to set the scene pretty much for you guys and let you know what it looks like out here, where that suspect pulled off on the side of the road near that hotel. Now, in the past maybe 10, 10, 15 minutes, you can see if you've been following us this morning, there's been a lot of flashing lights, not as many flashing lights. Now, don't necessarily know what that means, but that's what it looks like right now. There were a lot more flashing red and blue lights. Those have kind of been turned off, but still plenty of unmarked vehicles just lined up the other side of I-35, uh, FBI, ATF, along with Austin Police, Austin Fire, and all the other state and national um, um, departments that have been out here. And something else worth mentioning, I wanted to bring up uh, that we got from the ABC, our ABC Network News. They talked about from an investigator on the scene that the hunt for this bomber was a race against time, and it really changed recently when they stopped focusing on the how, the why, and what they decided to do was really neutralize the threat. That's the phrasing from this investigator. They didn't want to necessarily figure out exactly the reasoning and quote, stop the killing. And that's what happened tonight, obviously, finding this, uh, the suspect that Austin police believe was behind all of these bombings. Uh, as you can see, it is still closed. It is still a uh, very much so ongoing investigation. And the investigation goes beyond this area right here because you've heard Brian and Yvonne talking about it, and I want to repeat it. You know, this investigation is still going on throughout all of Austin because we don't know necessarily if this suspect left any packages, any devices, any bombs anywhere around Austin, because obviously that was how he was doing this. He was leaving bombs as packages on doorsteps or in FedEx offices or with a tripwire. So we don't know necessarily if we're clear for the whole city, but we're going to make sure and keep you updated with that as police continue their investigation. And one big thing I want to continue to mention sunlight. That will be a big deal. I can Oh, we have a little uh -oh. bit of a technical issue there, but yep. hey, a nice work there from Jay. No doubt. He was talking about devices, I'm, or rather packages. That's something we all need to pay attention to. I know some of the signs for a suspicious package, you know, maybe some oily stains, too much tape, a very strange address on that package. Uh, the threat is still there. We're still not in the clear in that aspect, so officers want us to be very vigilant of that. We also have other reporters covering this story from all different angles. Let's take a look at uh, Nicole Cross. I know, Nicole, you've been speaking not only with the mayor, but with witnesses. You're also talking about uh, just the psychology behind all of this as well. Nicole, kind of fill us in on that. All right, I want to continue to paint the scene for you. Take a look behind me here. I'm at I-35 in Old Settlers Boulevard as well. And if you, if we, as we zoom in, you can see still a lot of activity there. We have the FBI command center there. We have ATF along with local authorities. They're still very much investigating this scene. As we pan over, you can see that traffic is flowing on this side, but at a crawl on the other side, it's completely stopped. We just got a, a tweet from Round Rock Police. They are saying that 
all lanes of southbound Interstate Highway 35 from FM 3406, Old Settlers Road to US 79, Sam Bass Road will be closed to traffic this morning. Use alternate routes. That's something that Anna v has been talking about this morning. So we are encouraging you to avoid this area if you have to head out on your morning commute. Also to be vigilant. Authorities are saying this investigation is not over. They still need to figure out what the suspect was doing over the course of the last 24 hours. And we also spoke with Mayor Adler earlier this morning. He wanted to celebrate the partnership of both local, state, and national authorities working together on this case. We shared a tweet from President Donald Trump talking about the fact that the suspect is dead. Also, we want to remind you not to touch anything that looks suspicious or out of place and to stay vigilant and to link arms. You know, a lot of folks are very relieved that this suspect is dead, but we are also feeling like, eh, let's see what else is going to come out because we hope that another package is not found, but we are not sure. And we also are not aware of a motive. We know this started in East Austin, then Southwest Austin, and then it sort of spread out from there. So still a lot of unanswered questions, uh, questions we're going to seek to get answers on for you. So stay with us here in Round Rock. Nicole Cross, KVU News. All right, Nicole, thank you. You can see a lot of traffic behind Nicole there, but on the other side of the I-35, that area, I mean, there's a bit of, of a delay and obviously because of all the investigation uh, taking place. So in order to kind of get around that area, we're talking about Old Settlers Boulevard and I-35 there in Round Rock. Let's send things over to Anna Virreya so she can uh, talk about some uh, routes to deviate from that mess. Yeah, absolutely. So if you live in the area and you're familiar with the area right now where police are investigating is just south of that Ikea, south of University and the outlet mall. So if you're traveling in that direction and you're at home right now, please spread the word. I-35 southbound will be shut down for the next few hours. So if you're traveling in that direction, this is what you need to do to avoid this mess. Go ahead and consider A.W. Grimes as you're coming in southbound. If you live east of I-35, now you can also use University to get to the 132 toll road or access AW Grimes. Now let's talk about the west side. If you live west of I-35, consider University to Palmer or University to 183 as your alternate route. As we take a look at the bigger picture here in the Austin metro area, we're not seeing any major crashes, any major incidents that are impacting your route. You can see here you're driving at about 60 miles per hour on 360, 67 miles per hour Mopac coming in southbound and 31 miles per hour in that little intersection of I-35 and 183. So things are looking good for the Austin metro area, Round Rock, Williamson County, anywhere near North Austin, please uh, make sure that you have a heads up and you plan before you leave your house. Back to you. All right, Anna Vita, and to piggyback on what she was saying in that area of Round Rock, Round Rock ISD informing us this morning that schools in the area will start on time mm -hmm. today, but they will excuse absences for students that are delayed because of that traffic issue in Round Rock on I-35. So that investigation is going to take a while. Again, take your time around the area and just give police the space they need this morning because this investigation, again, might take a minute. Speaking of police, uh, Chief Brian Manley sending out this tweet this morning, and we'll tell you about what he had to say coming up. He was very... Uh, I think relieved that this is, is yeah. taken the step it's taken today. This, the tweet says, quote, I can't thank the men and women of Austin PD uh, or our federal partners, very important, enough for their tireless work in restoring peace to our community. Again, the peace being that the bomber has now been neutralized. But of course, Chief Manley, I've seen tweets from other uh, police and officials within the area that this threat is not con completely over yet because they don't know what this 24 year old suspect was doing over the last 24 to 36 hours. They knew who he was. They knew where he might be, but they don't know every single detail of his last 24 hours. So could he have more packages placed other places? They don't know yet. We don't know yet, but they're doing their best to figure that thing. Those things out at this point, which is again, while the why the investigation here is so important in Round Rock. How long was he at the hotel? Did he booby trap the room? All these questions are having to be answered by officials in the area and throughout Central Texas because we saw, of course, over the course of the last 19 days, explosions on the east side of town, a stretch of about a dozen miles uh, from Haverford Drive all the way down to Galindo Street. And then, of course, in southwest Austin, the explosion that happened there in the Travis Country neighborhood late Sunday night, taking us all the way to the FedEx facility in Shirts. 
We don't know how many bombs this guy had. We don't know where he was planning on exploding these devices. So be diligent out there. Be vigilant in what you're doing with packages and just keep that in mind as we go forward uh, and as this investigation plays out. And we did have a news conference, a press conference in our five o'clock hour this morning, and we learned a lot of information about what was taking place. Again, it all began as what they told us in the last 24 to 36 hours is when investigators really pinpointed and got that information on a person of interest. Let's listen in on a little bit more of that press conference. The individual involved in this incident was a 24 year old white male and we're not going to give out any information regarding his residence. We believe that this individual is responsible for all incidents that have taken place in Austin starting on March 2nd, those that occurred since then as well. We had surveillance teams looking for this suspect and we ultimately located the vehicle that this suspect was known to be driving and witnesses told us he was driving and in fact we found that at a hotel right up the road here in Round Rock. We had multiple officers from both the police department and our federal partners that took up positions around the hotel awaiting the arrival of our tactical teams because we wanted to have ballistic vehicles here so we could attempt to take this suspect into custody as safely as possible. While we were waiting for those vehicles to get here, much time had passed and the vehicle started to drive away. We began following the vehicle, again waiting to get the tactical uh, vehicles here so we could take this, uh, make a stop. However, the vehicle ended up stopping in the barred ditch on the side of the road behind us. As members of the Austin Police Department SWAT team approached the vehicle, the suspect detonated a bomb inside the vehicle, knocking one of our SWAT officers back and one of our SWAT officers fired at the suspect as well. The suspect is deceased uh, and has significant injuries from a blast that occurred from detonating a bomb inside his vehicle. That's the one thing we don't have right now is a motive behind this. We do not understand what motivated him to do what he did, and that will also be part of the continuing investigation as we try to learn more about him and to understand why he took the actions that he did. We don't know whether he was on his way to deliver another bomb. It is obvious that he had one with him, and that's the one that he detonated uh, in the vehicle as we approached. Throughout these weeks, we've talked about the importance of remaining vigilant and looking out for each other. I want to continue that message as we stand here this morning, though, because we don't know where this suspect has spent his last 24 hours, and therefore we still need to remain vigilant to ensure that no other packages or devices have been left through the community. All right, that a press conference from a couple of hours ago now with uh, Austin Police Chief Brian Manley. The scene here in Round Rock is where it all ended overnight, uh, just outside of a hotel there along I-35 southbound, the Austin bombing suspect. Again, as the chief just said in that press conference from earlier, uh, he detonated a device inside of his own vehicle alongside of the highway there, killing himself. The investigation now, Vaughn, is continuing as they, A, don't know what the hotel room holds. They don't know uh, what else was in the car. Uh, so this is going to be a delicate situation. Uh, again, uh, live pictures here. I believe uh, these are live. I'm not sure. Maybe these are recorded now that uh, we can see a above the scene. These are recorded from earlier today. I guess the sun is out. I don't have a window in here. I can't tell. <laughs> it's 716 now as we're extending our coverage here because of this big break in the case in the Austin bombing. But this bird's eye view really kind of shows the action, everything taking place there. It's a wide span, uh, that investigative scene. Um, again, you were mentioning uh, there are so many still questions left as to are there more packages en route that are still kind of in process. That's why they keep saying we have to be vigilant. We have to be careful as we're trying to get more information on this suspect. Uh, I know Tony Plahetsky had mentioned, yes, there's a name being thrown around, but uh, for cautionary reasons, they're making sure not to release that name until everything has been affirmed, confirmed, you know, so many different confirmations that we need before that name is released. As far as uh, the neighborhood, we also have a reporter there at that neighborhood, which we cannot tell you which neighborhood the suspect uh, was there or was living in, but they've also been speaking with the suspect's parents to try to get more information and that's pretty much what we have when you have a suspect who's dead you're trying to get information from maybe the parents
parents or other people, and then maybe from a possible, maybe there's a note, maybe something left behind. It's all about just piecing together all of these clues now. Absolutely. Again, we have reporters spanned out all across the area. Many at the scene there. Chris Sadegi, Jay Wallace, uh, and Nicole Cross are all there. Rebecca Lopez is in the neighborhood where uh, we believe the suspect lived. Uh, Patrick Perez is also gathering more information for us. So we have reporters all around the area. and We're going to check in with each and every one of them as we proceed this morning. But for now, we are going to take a quick break. We'll have an update on the traffic situation there and check in with other reporters. With all this new information we're gathering, this morning as the sun rises here on a new day in Austin. The Austin bombing suspect is dead. We do know that and we will have more on that breaking story straight ahead. Stay with us. Let's put this baby in drive. I want to get to NTB right now at NTB. Buy two tires, get two free when you purchase our value installation package. Choose from top tire brands like Continental, Cooper, Nitto, and more. Plus, use your store credit card and receive a $50 mail-in rebate on any purchase of $500 or more. That's right. Buy two tires, get two free. Plus, a $50 mail-in rebate only at NTB. That's all you need. Escape from every day and discover your ultimate hideaway. Located on spectacular Lake Travis, the peninsula is the gated community of waterfront homes. Boasting access to Austin's most prestigious yacht club and marina, the peninsula is unlike any other Lake Travis community. Schedule your private showing today. At over 50% sold, you don't want to miss this once in a lifetime opportunity. Introducing new Applewood Smoked Texas Brisket at Taco Cabana. And we're putting it on practically everything. How about brisket in a quesadilla? You got it. Four new brisket tacos? Absolutely. Or a brisket egg and cheese all day breakfast taco? Definitely. Texas Brisket is back. All day, all the ways you like it. Only at your Taco Cabana. If you're in the market for a pre-owned vehicle, all you need to do is follow the reviews to a Leaf Johnson used car and truck superstore. You've ranked us on sites like Google, Facebook, and Yelp as the number one online rated used car franchise in Central Texas. Just go to IWantToBuyUse.com. Choose from over a thousand used vehicles, and we can have it ready at any one of our five locations when you get here, including our Leaf Johnson Superstore on 183 North, exit Spicewood McNeil. Spring means outdoor fun in a new RV from Crestview RV in Buda. 2018 Jayco J-Flight 26-foot bunkhouse travel trailers, just $13,995 or $128 a month. Well-equipped heating and air conditioning, full kitchen and bath, and it sleeps a family of nine. Adventure in the great outdoors for just $13,995 or $128 a month. Jayco, generations of family fun. Crestview RV in Buda, I-35 South, exit 220 next to Cabela's. Online anytime at CrestviewRV.com. CrestviewRV.com. 50% off hot tubs and swim spas this weekend at Embassy Suites in San Marcos. Welcome back to KV News. Extended coverage here on daybreak of the suspected Austin bomber being killed this morning, killing himself, in fact, in Williamson County uh, after a long night of investigation by Austin police and federal authorities assisting in the investigation. We know the bomber uh, has killed himself. The investigation now continues along I-35 southbound. Tony Plahetsky is here as well. And uh, Yvonne, I know that it has been a busy night for police. It's been a busy night for investigators and uh, no doubt have been a busy night for a lot of reporters in the area gathering this information. It definitely sure has. And let's, we can bring in Tony Boheski into this. Basically, I mean, we started getting word of an officer involved shooting. Then we heard that there was a, a bomb exploding, and that's because a suspect detonated that bomb inside of the car as SWAT team officers were trying to approach that vehicle, right? All of this coming to a very dramatic end overnight. Again, uh, authorities have confirmed that a police officer, an Austin police officer, a SWAT officer, did discharge his weapon in an effort to apprehend the suspect, but again, law enforcement confirming this morning, <clears throat> excuse me, to us 
that this suspect died at his own hand from an explosive device that apparently was in the vehicle that he was in. Again, investigators describing for us, Brian and Yvonne, in recent days, uh, in recent hours, what broke this case wide open. Again, a number of things, including security video mm -hmm. from that FedEx store in South Austin where authorities believe the person, the suspect, was shipping packages, at least shipped two packages that we are aware of from there, as well as relying upon store receipts from Austin retail establishments where they believe the suspect was purchasing material to try to manufacture those uh, explosive devices. But we do again want to continue to remind people as we have been all morning and as authorities have been all morning and that is the danger has not ceased entirely. While this is a time for relief and for celebration that a suspect uh, was identified and has now died um, it is also a time, as authorities have told us, to continue to be vigilant because they have not yet established whether or not there are still remaining explosive devices that have been scattered throughout our community. So as you go out into the world today to go to work or to school or run errands or whatever it is you're doing, authorities are still urging caution, Brian and Yvonne. Very All good right. point. I want to get to this. Uh, Williamson County Sheriff Robert Chody tweeting this out, of course. This investigation, this all came to an end in Williamson County right there on I-35. He says the scene is still active there. I-35 backed up. Listen to this bumper to bumper all the way to Georgetown exit 261. That's how Highway 29. So we're talking about a span of several miles along I-35 southbound. That is the, the immediate story for people that are traveling in and around that part of the, the city there and north of Austin and Round Rock. He says, take 130 or 183, as Anavid's been mentioning all morning long. Here's the tweet, and you can see the picture backed up southbound that's headed into Austin from Georgetown, backed up all the way from uh, right there at 79, all the way to Highway 29, several mile span. There. And you can imagine that this investigation and that scene there is a large scene mm -hmm. with authorities trying to not only remove the body of the suspect, but also Brian and Yvonne to collect the remnants of that explosive device as part of this investigation so that they can continue to construct a narrative about the suspect. Just this one, portion of the scene. I mean, you could just see the sheer volume, the sheer number of uh, law enforcement there trying to comb the area. I know we're also getting more information as little as we do know, do know right now, but we are getting information about the suspect, 24 year old white male. Uh, they believe officers are believing that this was the work of one serial bomber. There were not more than one. That's what they're believing at this point. We don't have a name as of yet because the next of kin has not been noted. That's but. right. We are working um, as are others to try to determine the identity of this person. We've mentioned and want to continue to mention that we are aware of a name and we do have a reporter at the location of that person's home, but we also want to make sure that we are 100% confident before we air that name and we also as you mentioned Yvonne want to ensure that the family of this suspect has been notified and that they don't learn about all of this through the media so we're okay. we're doing our due diligence there thank you Tony and again we're speaking about this we know the suspect who's allegedly behind the string of explosions in the Austin area we know that that suspect is dead that's right. KBS Kaylin Norwood joins us now live here in the studio going to backtrack and break all this down for us from the very beginning. Kaylin. Well, Brian, Yvonne, this is really a long time coming here. So much has gone into this moment and investigators have been working diligently to catch this bombing suspect. So let's rewind back to the beginning. The first explosion almost three weeks ago was at a home on Haverford Drive. It killed 39 year old Anthony House. House's brother tells us that he was survived by his wife and eight year old daughter. Days later, another package killed 17 year old Draylen Mason. Police say Mason had taken the package into the kitchen when it detonated. His mother was seriously hurt in the explosion and is still recovering today. Now then to the third explosion just hours after that one, 75 year old Esperanza Hope Herrera was hurt March 12th at her home on Galindo Street in the Montopolis area. Now she is still recovering. The fourth explosion just Sunday night in Southwest Austin in the Travis Country neighborhood. Two men in their 20s were taken to the hospital with non life threatening injuries. Police said a trip wire left on the side of the road triggered that explosion.
And then yesterday there were two suspicious packages, one that detonated at a FedEx facility in shirts near San Antonio. One woman reported ringing in her ears because of this blast and another bomb at the FedEx facility in southeast Austin. Now that is near the airport, but this bomb did not go off. And as we've heard from police, the suspect is now dead and but the story is far from over right now. Officials will continue to investigate these series of events guys. All right, a great timeline from you, uh, Kaylin. Thanks so much for here being here in the studio. And we do want to recap that yesterday was a big day in this investigation, no doubt about it, with those FedEx packages and the facility there in Southwest Austin that led police to the man that they had already had an eye on, mm -hmm. but it kind of let them connect the pieces there and uh, connect the dots to this puzzle, and it really made a big difference in the uh, in the investigation. It sure did make a difference. Now, just to tell you, we have reporters spanned out across the area. Multi reporters: Patrick Perez, Rebecca Lopez, Nicole. Cross but let's go to Jay Wallace who has more from the scene. Jay. Well, the biggest development right now is honestly just the light, the sun coming up, because this is going to be a big help for police as they are here at the scene and out across Austin, still investigating everything going on because this sunlight, they've said multiple times, will help out with their investigation. And since the sun came up, you can see in the distance right here, these white suits, these are investigators at the scene right now with FBI and other departments trying to figure out what's going on and establishing what happened last night. And as we move to the right, look at some of the vehicles that are here. Now that it's daylight, it's easier to see who exactly is here. You can see also that the ATF is on location right now. They are out here because obviously with the explosion happening within on the side of the road as the suspect pulled off off the side of the road, he had that explosion and it did go off as the SWAT team was closing in. And as we move to the right, you can see that there are all types of um, officials and departments here right now. The Round Rock Police Regional Incident Management is here as well as the Federal Bureau of Investigation. They're, they're mobile uh, center unit. So all types of people out here investigating and this investigation is going to go on a while because as we've mentioned, we do not know exactly if there are, we do not know if there are other bombs, other packages, other devices out here in Austin near the hotel where he was because he has done it before. Obviously he has, he has left packages on scenes at locations. And so everyone here is making sure this is a clear area. And as we move to the right as well, you can see a lot of unmarked cars. Most of these cars obviously a part of the investigation from different departments, making sure uh, that they can have as many resources here as possible to make sure things are clear. And one more thing I want to mention before I send it back to you guys, you know, we did learn from an investigator on the scene that they really they recently did make the decision to get away from the how or the why in terms of these explosions and they wanted to catch him. They wanted to stop the killing. And that's what happened as they found the suspect and before he took his life on the side of the road. So uh, we'll continue to give updates from here at the scene of, uh, of the crime investigation. Brian All Bar right, Jay Wallace, thank you very much for your work this morning. It is now 7.30. You're watching extended coverage of KB News Daybreak this morning as a huge development has happened overnight. The uh, Austin bombing suspect has been found dead in his car. He blew himself up after police began to move in. And we do want to tell you there, there are some delays in the area because the investigation is right there on I-35 southbound. The Meridian School is in Round Rock delaying class this morning just because of the heavy traffic on I-35. Class begin today for the Meridian School, which is not far from this area in Round Rock. That will begin at 10 a.m. today. Secondary students report to second period at the Meridian School in Round Rock. Dismissal times now will remain as usual. Uh, they have uh, a few clubs there that have been canceled as well, so just keep that in mind if you are attending the Meridian School today, if your kiddos go to school there. Also important information for parents with kids who attend Austin ISD schools. At last check, the Austin Independent school district canceling a track meet that was scheduled for today. Overnight, the district tweeted that this invitational track meet that was scheduled for today and tomorrow at Burger Center in uh, Austin has been canceled, located there near the FedEx on Brody Lane. So obviously this is part of the, uh, the story, no doubt. Officials say the device that exploded in shirts yesterday was sent from that facility, uh, that FedEx. So just keep that in mind as you head out today. Round Rock ISD says if you're late to school today and it's because of this investigation mm -hmm. and the uh, traffic that's a result of that they're going to excuse those late uh, late arrivals today because of this. Yes, and Burger Field, as you said, that's near the Brody location in the whole Sunset Valley area. So that's definitely something mm. uh, that we all have to pay attention to. Now, you know, here's what we know about the uh, dead bombing suspect so far. Authorities say he 
is a white 24 year old male who is a local here in Central Texas. Officials, as we've been mentioning, they're not releasing his name until his next of kin has been notified. But earlier this morning, authorities did track him down. They tracked down his vehicle at a hotel along I-35 in Round Rock. We haven't gotten the name of that specific hotel, but it was a, at a hotel in Round Rock off of I-35. The suspect then drove away as authorities waited for tactical teams to arrive. So as they waited, the vehicle just kept going. Vehicle stopped. The driver stopped in a ditch on the side of the road. As members of the Austin Police Department SWAT team approached the vehicle, the suspect detonated a bomb inside the vehicle, knocking one of our SWAT officers back and one of our SWAT officers fired at the suspect as well. The suspect is deceased uh, and has significant injuries from a blast that occurred from detonating a bomb inside his vehicle. Now, as you heard there, the suspect detonated that device, killed himself, injured a police officer, just minor injuries, we're told. Police still trying to figure out a motive and why he did all of this. That's the one thing we don't have right now is a motive behind this. We do not understand what motivated him to do what he did, and that will also be part of the continuing investigation as we try to learn more about him and to understand why he took the actions that he did. Again, no MO as of this point, and also police do not know if the suspect was planning on delivering perhaps another bomb at the time of his death. The community is still urged to report suspicious packages, especially because authorities don't know if there are more out there. And throughout these weeks, we've talked about the importance of remaining vigilant and looking out for each other. I want to continue that message as we stand here this morning, though, because we don't know where this suspect has spent his last 24 hours, and therefore we still need to remain vigilant to ensure that no other packages or devices have been left through the community. If you see something that looks suspicious, if you see something that's out of place, if you see something that gives you concern, call 911 and let us know so that we don't experience any more tragedies in our communities because we've had far too many over the past three weeks. That are the words from Austin Police Chief Brian Manley earlier this morning. Again, this is video from the scene before sunrise there as the investigation began following the detonation of that explosive device inside the vehicle there alongside southbound I-35. As Chief Manley said, he pulled into the ditch there and blew himself up as police were beginning to close in. They'd surrounded the hotel. We don't have confirmed where the hotel or which hotel he was in mm -hmm. at the time, but he did leave. And uh, this again, video from the scene. This is recorded from earlier as the investigation began in the in the uh, nighttime hours as day is now uh, broken and the sun is coming up again. That investigation will continue. So just avoid southbound I-35. If you live in this area, this is between uh, Old Settlers Boulevard. You know where the bridge construction is taking place. Mm -hmm. Anybody in Round Rock knows exactly where that is. It's right there and south of there, really all the way to 620. They, they've closed it between there and 79. But unless you get on south of 79, they're around the 620 area. Just avoid southbound uh, I-35. Well, let's talk more about the traffic tie up and reroutes out through Anavid Reyes, who's standing by Anavida. It's very busy out there. Absolutely. Let's talk about those delays. This is a look at your Austin Metro map. Delays right now are extending to Highway 29. So if you are traveling in the Round Rock area, this is basically extending to Georgetown. So if you're traveling on I-35 coming in southbound, it's not looking too good. So let's go ahead and take you over to where Brian was talking about. This police investigation right now has I-35 coming in southbound, closed off uh, at Old Cellars Boulevard, and it extends down to Sam Bass. So if you're traveling in this direction, you are are going to run into some major issues. You want to avoid I-35 coming in southbound completely, and this is how you're going to be able to do it. If you live on the east side of I-35, consider A.W. Grimes. You can also consider University to the 130 toll road. University will also help you if you live on the west side of I-35. That is going to take you over down to Palmer Lane, and you continue southbound, or you have the option to continue, uh, keep going on to 183. So 183 and the 130 toll road are your main thoroughfares to to travel towards southbound Austin. That's a look at traffic. Let's toss things over to Erica Lopez for a check on our weather. 
All right, quick look at your current temperatures right now. It's a chilly start to our morning. We're in the mid to low 40s. 43 right now for AVIA. A degree warmer at Camp Mabry this morning, but even some 30s out there, such as in Oak Hill, Westlake, 39 degrees. Round Rock, same story for you guys. We even have some 30s across the hill country, just above freezing for Fredericksburg this morning. Low 40s for Giddings. Heading to the bus stop this morning. Here's what we're tracking. It's a chilly, but still a dry start. Lots of sunshine throughout the day. That'll allow us to warm up pretty nice in the 60s by your lunchtime and then as you head home this afternoon temperatures in the 70s a bit warmer than where we were yesterday overall lots of sunshine though 76 is what we're calling your official forecast high this afternoon but what is changing are the southeast winds that will be in place today breezy at times anywhere from 5 to about 15 miles an hour but that's going to eventually bring us some more cloud coverage and more humidity for us here in central Texas overnight tonight. Mostly clear, but notice temperatures are not going to get as cold tonight, and that's because of the increasing humidity factor. Hey, I already took our allergy count this morning. Grass and oak on the high side. The reason for that, it's been dry and breezy, so that has sparked up, especially oak, which yesterday was extremely high. That's going to be the case because oak typically peaks at the beginning of April, so we'll keep a close eye on that. That. Here's a look at your next seven days on top of the increasing cloud coverage throughout the next set, several days. We're also talking about increasing temperatures. Just a couple more days where we'll be topping out in the 70s in the 80s by the end of the work week. And then this weekend, that's when our next rain shower chances. But even then, just a spotty shower possible. Guys, back to you. All right. Thank you so much, Erica. Again, you're watching extended coverage of this breaking news. The Austin serial bomber is dead. You're looking live here at the picture of an active investigative scene in Round Rock off of I-35 and Old Settlers Boulevard. A lot more to get to. Yes, the suspect is dead, but the investigation continues. We'll have more right after this short break. Hot Tub and Swim Spa blowout sale this weekend at the NBC Suites in San Marcos. Up to 50% off retail. Come see the largest selection of hot tubs and swim spas this weekend only. TexasBarShow.com Wake up. Wake up to the world. To the marvels. The mayhem. The music. Wake up to the wows. The woes. The wonder. Wake up to the commotion. To the beauty. To the humanity. To the hope. Wake up every morning. Fully awake. NPR Morning Edition. Tune in to your local station or download the NPR app. It's our 128th anniversary at Cons Home Plus. Celebrate with no interest until 2020. Over $20,000 in prizes. And this Saturday, our first 128 customers will get scratch and win cards for free Bose headphones, free gift cards, and more. Go to cons.com to apply for your yes money and get approved instantly. Then come join the anniversary celebration at Cons Home Plus. You want a better life and a best price. It's springtime in Austin. You know what that means. Outdoor living, swimming pools, and spas. Need a landscaping pro? They're here too. The Austin Spring Home and Garden Show. high-speed internet from AT&T. $30 per month, no extra monthly fees. More for your thing. That's our thing. Visit att.com slash internet. For over 30 years, Quick Weight Loss Centers have successfully helped people like you lose weight and features no prepackaged meals, no shots or pills, and no hunger. All the other programs I tried failed me. Losing 27 pounds, I'm proof there's no better weight loss program or counselors out there compared to Quick Weight Loss. For only $9 per week, achieve unlimited weight loss. With Quick Weight Loss, I'm happy, healthy, and confident. Today is the day to start looking your best. Book your free consultation now. Want to witness man's most amazing accomplishments? Meet compelling characters and experience nature's greatest dangers? Then tune in to the best new network on television. Quest, let's explore. Haveview Allergy Forecast is sponsored by your ATV Pharmacy. Are allergies getting you down? Speak to one of our pharmacists to find an affordable solution for allergy relief. 
Wednesday morning to you. It is now 741. You're watching extended coverage of KVU News Daybreak here this morning on what has been a, an important day uh, in the city of Austin. The Austin serial bomber killed himself this morning in Round Rock, and the investigation there on I-35 southbound Round Rock is still ongoing. That means there's going to be significant traffic delays in that area. And I do want to read an email from Round Rock ISD because Round Rock school buses no doubt will be impacted by this on I-35. Uh, they say in the email, due to police activity, uh, I-35 is closed right there at Old Settlers Boulevard between there and 79, drastically affecting traffic throughout the district. So they say they anticipate bus delays and late arrivals because of the heavy track it, uh, traffic. RRISD, the schools will operate on a normal schedule today, but late arrivals will be excused. And again, as Anna Veach talked about, this is the area we're focusing on the right hand side of your screen. Uh, you can see the red line there on the side of I-35 southbound that is closed. Nobody getting through on the southbound lanes of I-35 southbound, so take 130. If you live on the east side, if you live on the west side, a 183 might be a good route to take as well. So just keep that in mind. If your kiddos head to Round Rock schools, they're all open today on a regular schedule, but you will be excused if you're a bit late. All right, we also want to tell you about the Meridian School in Round Rock delaying classes this morning because of that heavy traffic we've been talking about on I-35. Classes there at Meridian School will begin at 10 a.m. Secondary students will report to second period. Dismissal times will remain as usual. Chess, uh, we're being told, is canceled. I'm sure other uh, activities are as well, but chess for sure is being canceled. Now, important information for parents, though, with kids who attend AISD schools. At last check, the Austin Independent School District is canceling a track meet that is taking place there today. And overnight, the district tweeted that the invitational track meet scheduled for today and for tomorrow at Tony Burger Center in Sunset Valley is canceled. If you're thinking, well, why will Sunset Valley? That's right near the FedEx on Brody Lane where all of uh, this information kind of took place yesterday. The latest suspect or the whole in information we're talking about. And officials say that the device that exploded in shirts came from that Brody Lane. FedEx location, so it would make sense for them to cancel that uh, that meet today and tomorrow. Absolutely, the investigation not only taking place in Round Rock, where the suspect killed himself overnight, but the investigation continues also, as Yvonne mentioned, at the FedEx facility there. Not just the store where he mailed the bomb from, uh, but the the facility, the ground facility out by the airport. That investigation continues. They're also continuing to investigate in Shirts this morning, uh, where the explosion happened yesterday morning. That kind of set this ball rolling uh, in the stream of events that led us to this overnight event uh, where the bomber in Round Rock, here's a live picture from the scene, uh, the serial bomber got into his vehicle after leaving a hotel that had been surrounded by police there and federal authorities. They were going to operate there and try to get the guy. He got into his car instead and began to uh, take off. Police uh, noting the, um, the urgency of the situation, not knowing where he was headed. Um, that's where they got him. Now this, we are being told, you can see the police car in the middle of the DPS troopers vehicle there. This is the area and, okay, tell me again if I can, can say, say where this is. I want to make sure we're clear on this. Yes, we We're can clear say. to tell you this is in Pflugerville. Uh, the man, a 24-year-old white male in Pflugerville, that's where his family lived and where we believe he lived. Uh, that neighborhood has now been surrounded. Uh, you could see there some police activity taking place. Again, we're not releasing his name at this point mm -hmm. uh, because we're trying to use as much caution as we can uh, and not affect this investigation in any manner. Also, we don't want to, as, as soon as they are notified, his family is notified, and everything takes proper procedure, we will bring the information to you. Trust us, we're doing a time. diligent yes. work on this. And again, he was from Pflugerville, mm -hmm. a 24-year-old male, a white male, and police said, Yvonne, this morning, yes. they believe he was responsible mm -hmm. for all of the incidents beginning on March the 2nd, March the 12th, on Sunday evening, and then yesterday morning at the FedEx facility. That's right. We also do want to point out that when all of this was going down with the officer involved shooting and the suspect detonating the bomb, an officer, an APD officer, I believe, was injured uh, during that um, you know, altercation. So that officer obviously being taken care of as well. But as you mentioned, just a number of active scenes. I mean, there's so many, but we we do have the manpower. We have law enforcement on a local, on a state, and on a federal level. Again, you're looking at the neighborhood, the Pflugerville neighborhood. We can tell you that now with confirmation where the suspect uh, is from. I know that investigators are speaking with the suspect, the 24-year-old's uh, parents, I'm sure with neighbors and other people as well. We have 
crews spanned out throughout the area. We have Rebecca Lopez there at that scene that you're seeing the picture from. We have Jay Wallace mm -hmm. at the Round Rock scene. Uh, we have Nicole Cross, Chris Sadegui, Patrick Perez. We have a lot of reporters just making sure we get every single angle. Tony Plahevsky has been making a number of calls to make sure that we can confirm the name. Again, we want to do all of this in due time. We want to give you all the information. We want to make sure it's correct. We also have a team here at KVU just verifying all of the information that we're giving to you. So we want to make sure that everything we give you is completely confirmed. And as police said earlier, they do not know of a motive at this time. It appears the first three bombs were targeted. The fourth seemed more random and then began uh, the, the mail bombs, the FedEx bomb that exploded. So that is something the investigation will now no doubt focus on why he did it. Again, this is the neighborhood where uh, we are told he lived from Pflugerville. Mm -hmm. Rebecca Lopez is in the neighborhood, has been there for a few hours now, and we're going to check in with her after this short break. Stay with us. She'll have more from the scene of the suspect's home. J. Henry, we strive to provide the best client experience in the industry. If you've been injured, call Thomas J. Henry. I'm Sarah Osborne, and I love walking around Austin with my dog Jet and my Panasonic GX85 from Precision Camera. I love having a real camera with an actual zoom that can take action shots of my dog riding in Zilker Park. I live in downtown Austin, and I love exploring everything we have to offer with my dog, and I always take my camera. The Panasonic GX85 is simple to use and it always takes great shots. The Panasonic GX85 with 12 to 32 millimeter lens on sale for $5.99. You are many different things in one amazing package. And TJ Maxx gives you the freedom to express every one. With our unique mix of must-have brands at must-buy prices, you can be active or totally relaxed. You can shop online or take it home today. You'll always save on something for every you. Max you, max life. TJ Maxx. There's no vaccine for a broken heart, but several protect preteens from vaccine preventable diseases. Ask your doctor. It's your opportunity to save big on the award-winning lineup at Roger VZ Mazda. These specials include a 72-month, 100,000-mile warranty and low APR program with automatic transmissions. Choose a Mazda 3 Sport, just $13,995, or a Mazda 6 midsize sedan, only $15,995, and the ever-popular CX-5 Touring, just $17,995. Roger VZ Mazda, four convenient locations online, rogervzmazda.com. The perfect sofa for you is a reflection of your individual style and needs. That's why Louis Shanks has been offering an infinite selection of furnishings and design services since 1945. Join us now for our 73rd anniversary sale and enjoy special pricing in every department for every item and every style. It's the perfect time to help make your dream home a reality. Room by room or one piece at a time. Louis Shanks Furniture. We live to help you love where you live. It's catfish season at Golden Chick, so be sure to catch our southern fried catfish combo. Unlike those other guys, we're talking 100% U.S. farm-raised catfish. Right now, just $7.99. Only at Golden. Spring means outdoor fun in a new RV from Crestview RV in Buda. 2018 Jayco J-Flight 26-foot bunkhouse travel trailers, just $13,995 or $128 a month. Well-equipped heating and air conditioning, full kitchen and bath, and it sleeps a family of nine. Adventure in the great outdoors for just $13,995 or $128 a month. Jayco, generations of family fun. Crestview RV in Buda, I-35 South, exit 220 next to Cabela's. Online anytime at CrestviewRV.com. CrestviewRV.com. All right, welcome back. Let's go live now to Pflugerville, scene of the uh, of the home here with Rebecca Lopez. Rebecca. Okay, we are seeing some activity here at the house. Uh, you can see that they have somebody handcuffed uh, and searching that person right now. They are patting that person down, and um, looks like an ATF agent just came out, had a, a long rifle uh, weapon with him. Not sure who is. Uh, being arrested. Um, look, we were told when we first got here to st 
looks it looks like it is a, a journalist that is actually being arrested. Uh, we were told early on when we first got to this scene that we needed to stay back because the home was not secure, that we needed to uh, to step back and that there might be people inside the house. That's what we were told when we first got here around five o'clock this morning. A DPS trooper told us to move back that there might be people inside the home. Then we moved a little further back. Other DPS troopers told us that uh, the house was not secure and that they were waiting for uh, more people to get here because most of their resources were tied up at the other location where the uh, bomber had uh, blown himself up. So they told us to just wait and that there would be somebody coming out here to give us details, but that they were waiting for more uh, officers and troopers and agents to get here. And you see now, uh, since we first started reporting live around five o'clock, that more troopers and more agents are are here. They are not allowing anyone uh, near the home that uh, the suspect's home. We also know that there is a, a parents live nearby a few houses away. Uh, there has been activity there as well. So that is what is going on here at this location. But they want to keep this area clear. You can see that there are officers also with guns drawn. The biggest fear here is perhaps uh, any kind of booby traps. I mean, this is a person that was able to set a trip wire uh, and has uh, sophisticated knowledge of bomb making. And so they want to make sure that when they go into that home that everyone is safe and also they have to wait for a warrant. I think that's one of the reasons why it has taken so long. You can't just go in, you need a warrant, a judge to sign a warrant. So that's all of that has been taking place uh, since we first began reporting around five o'clock uh, this morning. But you can see activity here in front of the suspect's house. Now, Rebecca, quick question. I know and I'm glad that you mentioned the major point that there could still be some booby traps or anything like that. So everyone there has to take a precaution, especially law enforcement. But the person being arrested, did you say you for sure knew that that was a, was it a photojournalist, a reporter? Are you sure it was a journalist or that's just a thought? Well, well, it looked like he had camera lenses and uh, the photographer said and a couple of photographers that are standing here nearby are nodding They look they said that uh, when they zoomed in you could see a camera lens and it looked like he had a, a name tag. Uh, I had seen actually look like I had seen that guy around earlier uh, near us, but uh, they are very serious about not wanting anybody uh, near this home because you don't know what's in there and they've got to comb through that. They want to preserve the evidence and they don't want they don't need anybody interfering with their investigation right now so that's what's happening here but again when I first got here this morning around five o'clock the trooper said that they believe that there were people a person or people inside the house still and that's one of the reasons that he was almost nervous he said you need to get back you really need to leave and so we did you know we, we did what he asked us to and then the other troopers came over and said it's not secure here now I don't know it does not look like there's anybody walking around the neighborhood initially I asked him are you evacuating this neighborhood and they told me that um, they were waiting for direction from uh, their superiors that were still at the other scene but I have not seen anybody in this neighborhood in a while so they may have evacuated at least the nearby homes Rebecca, it's Tony Plahetsky. I um, wanted to mention as well, and I know from covering um, these types of events and covering law enforcement for <clears throat> excuse me, many years here, and I know you uh, as well, the arrest of the person at the scene could also be a symptom of not only the urgency that law enforcement is operating under, but at the same time, let's, let's be realistic here. A lot of these people who have been working on this case are also very exhausted and it has been a frustrating journey to this point, right? Absolutely. You know, they, you know, we're, everyone that's been involved in this case has been working at high alert and, it, you know, officers like the rest of us, you know, have a lot of stress when it comes to this and they have been working around the clock to try to catch this guy and now they're here in front of the home. The last thing you need is for anyone to be interfering. So, yes, uh, they are uh, on edge as, as much as the rest of the uh, community as well. To put it in basic terms, they don't have time to play at this point. Yeah, seriously. <laughs>
They're not missing. Right. They don't have, yeah, they don't have time. They don't have time for this. All yes, right, exactly. Rebecca Lopez, yeah, they, thank they, you so much. No doubt, Rebecca. Great work by right. Rebecca Lopez here this morning. She's in the neighborhood in Pflugerville again. The bombing suspect killed himself, but this is believed to be where he lived, if not family. We don't have that confirmed, or at least we can't report that yet. But Tony Polanski is here now with the very latest on this. And Tony, Rebecca was just, it's a big part of the story, yeah. the motive behind it. And I would assume the motive, the investigation for that part of it begins there. Absolutely. Authorities will likely be going inside that residence, trying to get additional information about who this person is. Again, we have been working ourselves uh, with a preliminary unconfirmed name to try to learn as much as we can so that once we do have the name confirmed and we are certain that authorities have notified this person's next of kin, we will have a trove of information that at that time we will hope to bring you. But again, authorities really now that this suspect uh, has been has been well is now deceased but has been identified authorities are now trying to turn back the clock to try to understand what connections if any he may have had to any of these victims of these blasts that have been occurring beginning on March 2nd with the death of Anthony House and continuing in the past two and a half weeks trying to determine whether there are any connections we have we do know just Brian and Yvonne to go back in time that that early on specifically in this case there was a concern that people who were being targeted had both friendship and family connections. We haven't really been told since then, and the truth is, I'm not sure that authorities even really know at this point if that played a role in any of this, but just to walk you through what those connections are, those early connections, the very first victim um, in these attacks, and if we have that map, that would be good to put up right now too, was 39-year-old Anthony House. He lived in Northeast Austin. He was a businessman. He was a father. And then about 10 days later, we saw, there is the map, a second explosion at Old Fort Hill Drive. That blast killed 17-year-old uh, Draylen Mason. So and let me... If I might interrupt, that's when this investigation really took a turn, mm -hmm. after that explosion. Absolutely, because earlier there were different investigative theories that perhaps uh, this was very much an isolated incident that killed Anthony House. But yes, Brian, to be clear, once that second blast happened on March 12th, that really caused the investigation to go into a brand new direction and to really intensify and and also raising fears about what was going on and whether or not there was a serial bomber at play here but in terms of those family and friendship connections let me tell you what those are Anthony House's stepfather is friends with 17 year old Draylen Mason's grandfather and so there was a concern that those connections may have somehow put them at risk, place them at risk. But again, authorities up to now have not really described whether or not those connections played any role or whether or not this was all seemingly random. In terms of the randomness of this, what we do know from the police chief who addressed the Austin City Council yesterday is that we know the addresses themselves were specifically targeted, but whether or not the uh, the suspected bomber just pulled those addresses out of thin air or knew something about the residents of those homes is still a mystery. But again, authorities telling us that one of their big emphasis this whole time has been to stop this person, to end the public safety threat that has remained in Austin over these past two and a half weeks, and that they really haven't so much been tied up in the motive with the exception of trying to figure out who is doing this and why. But in terms of really getting into the psychology of this person, that has not so much been a priority. Now that this is all coming to a resolution, they plan to go back in time mm -hmm. to further understand more about this person. And again, we have a whole team of people here who are doing that as well right now. Speaking of going backwards, this time yesterday we were dealing with that explosion at the Shirts FedEx facility. And then quickly after that, you 
let us know that there was a connection to Austin, that being that the package that exploded in shirts was sent from the FedEx on Brody Lane here in, you know, in the Sunset Valley area. So that's where that connection was. The fact that that facility is a walk-in facility, we got this suspect on surveillance camera in a disguise, but still on surveillance camera. And then you learned other clues from there. And there's still some unanswered questions that I, of course, have about that. Um, for example, I do understand that authorities have identified who the recipients were to be of two explosive devices. That first one that detonated overnight last night at that facility in Shirts, that FedEx distribution center. But we also know this has been confirmed by local congressional delegation for us. We also know that there is a second explosive device that did not detonate that was located at that FedEx facility in Southeast Austin near ABI. And so authorities by now have established, it is my understanding that they have established, who those packages were bound for and that those people have been notified. But again, in terms of who they were, we don't know that at this point. And that could I be, don't know that well, at this well, point. You don't, we don't know it, but we did hear Chief Manley say just those words yeah. that they had already identified and notified those people. And Tony, that leads me to this. You mentioned the connection between the first two and even the third, we're being told, might have been addressed to someone else that wasn't the, the person that the Hope Herrera that was injured. It might have been going to someone else. So if these packages that were then FedExed were sent to people that are connected to that group, again, that plays into perhaps learning a motive behind what's going on or what happened here. But here's what we have to understand and remember, too. This person, this bomber, clearly was willing to also attack random people mm -hmm. as well. And we know that because of the incident that occurred Sunday night yes. in the Travis Country neighborhood where two men walking along a sidewalk um, inadvertently, of course, and unfortunately detonated an explosive device there because of a tripwire. And I thought that you brought up a good point when you said perhaps maybe this suspect was becoming more and more brazen, but perhaps a little bit more gutsy. And it seemed like every between March 2nd and March 12th, right after March 12th, it started to kind of change a little bit of the shift in, in, in this MO. And then you were saying, well, maybe they were just being a little bit more brazen, or perhaps maybe the suspect wanted to be caught. Maybe that was an issue. You know, it was best described to me by a law enforcement official about a week ago, and that person told me, and I, I remember it very well, this guy's gonna show us who he is. Mm -hmm. And if you look at what has happened, particularly over the past 24 to 36 hours, that is exactly what has happened. Quite literally showing himself mm -hmm. going into a FedEx store in South Austin and being captured on security cameras. Mm -hmm. I want to read a, a, a something from ABC News that we just saw. I'm going to read this live uh, with you here. Investigators are preparing now to make their next moves, according to an investigator at the scene. They have an address they want to search, but they're taking it slowly. We assume that is the address Rebecca Lopez was located at in Pflugerville. They have no need to rush because the threat, they say, is neutralized at this point. Plus, they need to be cautious about booby traps, which Rebecca also mentioned. They want to make sure they have all the necessary warrants in hand. And and as they mentioned earlier, uh, this investigation is extensive, not just the scene in Round Rock, not just the FedEx facilities we've mentioned, but also the home now where we believe the suspect, the bombing suspect lived either for a time or currently. We know that he was in a hotel last night. We don't know how long he had been there. Which Again, one? we don't know exactly which one it was, but that's where they found him and were moving in at the time he exploded that device in his own vehicle, killing himself uh, this morning. Law enforcement has a lot of work to do, regardless of what scene you come across, whether it's the one in Pflugerville or in other areas of town. Just make sure you're cognizant of the fact that these law enforcement officers have been working long, hard hours. They're stressed, yeah. and that makes sense why they'd be stressed. So let them do their job, and us, we just kind of need to stand back and just kind of let them work. So we're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back. Nobody gets your carpet, tile, or hardwood as clean and healthy as Stanley Steamer. That's why I call. Call or schedule online and save 15% on your next cleaning. Stanley Steamer, your certified cleaner. As long as there is fear, 
As long as there is curiosity. As long as there are undiscovered corners of the earth. And as long as there is willingness and desire. Then you are capable of more. Right now, lease a BMW X3 for as low as $469 a month. Come experience Tanger and feel the savings. The finds, the brands, the classics, the flavor, the fashion, the fun, the laughter, the value, the delight, the selection, the fit, the decision, the thrill, the friendship, the price, the deals. Feel the deal at Tanger Outlets. It's March Mania at Star. Hit the floor with a huge selection of all the latest styles, colors, textures, and sizes of rugs, all at an extra 20% off, plus interest refinancing. Don't miss this savings opportunity. Make a fast break to Star. Let me guess, another spring event. Wrong, it's the Honda Dream Garage spring event. You can get big deals on Honda's amazing vehicles, and take it from me, these are all pretty amazing. Oh look, it's my amazingly amazing Honda IndyCar which is a great segue for me to say race into the Honda Dream Garage Spring event happening right now. Don't worry, baby, you're not for sale. The Honda Dream Garage Spring event is on now. You can get a great deal on a Honda vehicle at your local Honda dealer. Welcome back and good morning to you and what a good morning it is. The Austin bombing suspect is dead. Police found him overnight at a hotel in Williamson County and that is uh, led to an investigation on I-35 which is causing a huge traffic delay for many in Round Rock. Let's get right to Anavid Reyes to explain exactly where this is and how you might want to get around it. Anavid? Yeah, that's right, Brian, and this closure will remain closed all throughout the morning. So check this out right now. Delays extend all the way back to Georgetown. So this is also known as Highway 29. So if you're traveling in this area, avoid I-35 as much as you can because I-35 coming in southbound will be closed off and where it's closed off is between Old Settlers Boulevard and it's actually Round Rock Police just um, an hour ago released information that it's going to extend down to Sam Bass. So again, Old Settlers Boulevard down to Sam Bass. So if you're traveling in this direction, what you need to do is take A.W. Grimes coming in southbound to South Austin, especially if you live on the east side of I-35. You can also use University to get to the 130 toll road. University City going westbound will also take you to 183. So that's another good alternate route for you. Let's go ahead and take you over to Mopac where we were watching a major crash. It was blocking your on ramp on Far West Boulevard trying to get on Mopac southbound on your main lanes that has now since cleared. These are your drive times. I 35 northbound beat it to downtown a 43 minute commute and 27 minutes if you're coming in southbound. But that is just after Sam Bass down to downtown. Let's look at traffic. Let's toss things over to Erica Lopez for a check on our weather. All right, well, weather not too much of an issue today. We have clear blue skies out there this morning. Temperatures are a slightly on the chilly side. Low 40s right now for ABIA, mid 40s as we head to Camp Mabry. And then humidity levels are slowly creeping up also. But around Austin Metro, mixture of 40s and even 30s. 39 in Round Rock, Cedar Park, a degree cooler. Some low 30s for the Hill Country. Fredericksburg was just above freezing just uh, in the last 30 minutes or so. And then mid to lower 40s as we head to our eastern county. Now your rush hour forecast in terms of weather impacting your forecast, maybe just a light sweater as you head out the door. But this afternoon, lots of sunshine. It's actually going to be a bit warmer than where we were yesterday. Yesterday, our forecast highs were in the low 70s. Now we're talking mid to upper 70s, and this is going to continue to be the trend, increasing temperatures, including increasing cloud coverage as well, because south winds are now in place. But today, still very sunny, a forecast high of 76 degrees. It's tonight when we'll start to factor in some clouds, leaving us with partly cloudy skies tomorrow. Grass and oak were on the high side for your allergy count. That's going to continue to be the trend also, especially since we're officially in the spring season. Oak is usually the biggest issue. We'll update you every single day in the Statesman. But I mentioned a warming trend, so just a couple more days with temperatures in the 70s. Then we're bumping right back up into the 80s. A little bit more clouds as we head closer to the weekend. Also with our next rain shower chance, a spotty shower possible on Saturday. But then thunderstorm chances begin by the end of the work or weekend into the upcoming work week.
All right, Erica, thank you. Anna V, thank you very much. Uh, again, let's take a live look now at in Pflugerville. This is where we believe the suspect lived, a 24-year-old white male, a heavy police presence in this neighborhood. We just heard from Rebecca Lopez at the scene there that there was someone uh, arrested there. It appeared to her to be a journalist, a photojournalist with cameras and credentials. So we do not have an identity on that person, but we do know one person was taken into custody. Again, the suspect, a 24-year-old, lived in Pflugerville, at least family members did. He was at a hotel in Williamson County last night when police surrounded the hotel. He attempted to flee the scene in a vehicle, was caught by police, exploded a device inside of his own car, killing himself. Then around 530 this morning, we heard from Austin Police Chief Brian Manley addressing the events of overnight and things looking forward in the investigation. And for you now, we're going to play that in its entirety in case you have not heard the words from the chief on the end to this saga here in Austin. Good morning. Thank you all for coming out here this morning. Uh, my name is Brian Manley. I'm the chief of police of the Austin Police Department. I have Fred Milanowski here, the special agent in charge for ATF. Christopher Combs, the special agent in charge for the FBI. I have Austin Mayor Steve Adler and City Manager Spencer Cronk and several other members of uh, Assistant City Manager Ray Ariano and several members of the Austin Police Department's executive team. I think you all are aware and our community is well aware that it has been a long, almost three weeks for the community of Austin as we have dealt with package bombs and other types of bombs that have been placed throughout our community. We have seen members of our community that have lost their lives and others whose lives have been forever changed due to significant injuries. We have talked many times over the past couple of weeks about the level of partnership that has taken place with our federal officials, our local officials, and our police department to bring this to an end. And through all of this hard work, we identified several leads throughout the course of the weeks. But beginning within the past 24 to 36 hours, we started getting information on one person of interest that we continued to work on and continue to develop. And as we continue to do our investigations, this person of interest ultimately moved to being a suspect. And that's what we started focusing on was his involvement in these crimes. Late last night and early this morning, we felt very confident that this was the suspect in the bombing incidents that took place in Austin. We had surveillance teams looking for this suspect, and we ultimately located the vehicle that this suspect was known to be driving, and witnesses told us he was driving. And in fact, we found that at a hotel right up the road here in Round Rock. We had multiple officers from both the police department and our federal partners that took up positions around the hotel awaiting the arrival of our tactical teams because we wanted to have ballistic vehicles here so we could attempt to take this suspect into custody as safely as possible. While we were waiting for those vehicles to get here, much time had passed and the vehicle started to drive away. We began following the vehicle, again, waiting to get the tactical uh, vehicles here so we could take this, uh, make a stop. However, the vehicle ended up stopping in the bar ditch on the side of the road behind us. As members of the Austin Police Department SWAT team approached the vehicle, the suspect detonated a bomb inside the vehicle, knocking one of our SWAT officers back and one of our SWAT officers fired at the suspect as well. The suspect is deceased uh, and has significant injuries from a blast that occurred from detonating a bomb inside his vehicle. We cannot name the suspect at this time because he has not been positively identified yet by the medical examiner and next of kin have not yet been notified. So there will be a lengthy investigation that will take place regarding the officer involved shooting. The investigation will be conducted by the Austin Police Department's Internal Affairs Unit with the Austin uh, Police Monitor participating as well for a review of compliance with departmental policy. 
there will be a concurrent criminal investigation that will take place by the Texas Rangers of the incident that occurred here tonight. Again, this is the culmination of three very long weeks for our community. And throughout these weeks, we've talked about the importance of remaining vigilant and looking out for each other. I want to continue that message as we stand here this morning, though, because we don't know where this suspect has spent his last 24 hours, and therefore we still need to remain vigilant to ensure that no other packages or devices have been left through the community. So as we go through the day today, we want the community to remain vigilant, but I also want to look at where we are now in Round Rock and remind our neighboring communities of Round Rock and Cedar Park and the other cities that we do not know where he has been in the past 24 hours and you, we need your communities to remain vigilant as well. And again, if you see something that looks suspicious, if you see something that's out of place, if you see something that gives you concern, call 911 and let us know so that we don't experience any more tragedies in our communities because we've had far too many over the past three weeks. I again want to thank the tremendous support and participation that we have had from our federal partners. And since this is still an ongoing investigation, we're not going to release a lot of the specific uh, details that led to the incidents that occurred tonight. We did have one officer who was injured when that bomb detonated as he approached the vehicle, suffering minor injuries. And then we had one officer, as I mentioned early, that fired his weapon at the suspect. That officer has been with the Austin Police Department for 11 years and again is a member of our SWAT team. As is our standard practice, he will be placed on administrative duty while we conduct the necessary investigations into what happened here. Uh, I'm now going to turn it over for comments to Special Agent uh, Maliski of the uh, ATF. Thank you. Um, the unprecedented level of cooperation and partnership from the law enforcement agencies at the local, state, and federal level um, allowed each of our agencies to bring a skill set, different skill set to bear um, and identify this subject. All right, we're going to continue to listen to that, but we're also going to tell you about the scene here. We have our helicopter back in the air, and you can see on your screen here, this is in Round Rock, uh, just between I-35 southbound and the feeder road there. The suspect's vehicle, we believe, is the red vehicle there in the middle of your screen. Uh, it appears that the investigation is continuing. Uh, they do have the tarp out there, which would be expected in a situation like this. But again, to reiterate what happened, the person left the hotel in what we assume is that red vehicle they have surrounded. and then at some point pulled into that ditch, into that median area, and detonated a device inside of the vehicle, which officer, our chief, Brian Manley said, uh, caused significant damage to the person, and then obviously uh, he killed himself. I saw the back of that vehicle, it looks somewhat yeah. like a Jeep, kind of. I saw the back of it, looks like that was blown out. That would make sense because, as we've been mentioning and reporting, as SWAT team officers were making their way to that vehicle, that is when the suspect detonated that bomb, killing himself. Uh, again, Again, you can see a very active scene and now that the sun is out you can yeah. see a little bit more from this vantage point so this is a really good vantage point to show you what took place here and also the I would say the uh, impact of an explosive like that you could see some of the windows kind of blown out as well obviously that windshield is, co is completely shattered mm -hmm. uh, and the explosion did take place inside of the vehicle again this happened overnight we don't have a specific time but yeah. we do know that police surrounded the hotel in Round Rock on the southbound side of I-35 uh, with the intent of securing and arresting this individual. He then got into that vehicle and attempted to leave the scene. Police were there. One officer did fire his weapon. One officer was near enough to the explosion when it happened to suffer minor injuries. Uh, Chief Manley, I believe, said it knocked him back a bit mm -hmm. when the explosion went off. But both doors are open now. You can see the damage that was left behind. And that is the suspect's vehicle there in the middle of the screen. That is, again, the southbound side of Interstate 35. And the intent before all this was for them to officers to apprehend this suspect at the hotel where the car was parked. However, 
Given the severity of these explosions, I'm sure police wanted to wait for their tactical teams to arrive so they had somewhat of backup. When they had to wait, that's when the suspect just took off in the car. So the intent was not for this to be somewhat of a, uh, like a chase and something where, you know, they moved to another location, but that's just what transpired. So basically, they attempted to follow him as a vehicle drove away and then the car as you saw there stopped on the side of the road as officers uh, you know withdrew their guns and SWAT team approached that car that's when the suspect decided to detonate the bomb in the vehicle killing himself uh, again we do not have a name of that suspect at this time we can tell you it's a 24 year old male a white male a local here in town and we are showing you on the left side of your screen the inset picture there you could see that is the Pflugerville neighborhood where that suspect was living where he was uh, residing. So definitely we have teams, KVU teams, reporters spanned out across the area. We have one there in that Pflugerville neighborhood. We have this aerial video. We have this, this bird's eye view of the major scene where all of this took place and where the suspect was killed. Well, and significant damage. That's what yeah. strikes me about the picture. We couldn't see it earlier uh, before sunrise. Now that the sun is up, the helicopters gas back up and up in the air. And boy, the scene there, the damage left behind by that explosion, just amazing to see. And again, officers don't know exactly what this man's intent was this morning. He did obviously have an explosive device with him in the car. Now, whether or not he intended to deliver that somewhere to try and mail it, as we now know he did FedEx at least two explosive devices, or if his intent was to ultimately kill himself, which he did at this at this point on I-35 overnight. The red vehicle there again to recap is the vehicle the suspect was in when police began to try and apprehend him and the explosive device went off inside of the car, killing the man and causing significant damage. We do know again that the neighborhood where this individual uh, either lived by himself or with his family. We do know that is in Pflugerville and uh, the police in the area, along with DPS and federal officials. Uh, boy, just look at the look damage caused. Look at the front windshield. You can see completely bomb. shattered. Then also the side little smaller windows just blown out. I mean, you can really see the gravity and the impact here. Um, obviously, the suspect killed himself, but then also that officer was injured. That officer was injured, and that officer obviously in close proximity to the car and to the bomb when it went off. And Tony Pulehetsky is on his way. We are comfortable now naming the victim, and Tony will have that for you uh, coming up. We're going to tell you who the suspect uh, was in the car. Mm -hmm. uh, police believe is responsible for all of this. Tony's on his way in now, so stay with us here on KVU. We're going to have the very latest on that. And also, uh, as we look at this, he's going to explain more about where the man was from and uh, and who this man was. We don't have a motive yet. I know we're all working to find out why he did this uh, and all of these explosions caused police say by one individual. Uh, so Tony's going to have that breaking news coming up. Stay with us here for uh, momentarily for that. That's right. And also the multiple scenes that we're dealing with. We're talking about obviously one in shirts. We have the Brody Lane location. We have this location in Pflugerville. Multiple scenes right now and law enforcement just doing their best under these tense, stressful situations to get all the information as possible. Also, it's really going to take a coordinated effort. I know we spoke with the FBI, the FBI and the ATF were commenting, saying, you know, the full effort here was all everybody was involved. The full effort was the involvement of everyone, but that the feds aren't done investigating yet. They're not just going to you know, leave town now that the suspect is dead. They still have to help out local and state officials. We've also mentioned that the Texas Rangers are working in investigation, as is APD as well. The Rangers specifically on today's events to make mm -hmm. sure uh, everything is in line as this investigation is far from complete. But the scene you're looking at now is in Pflugerville. This is where the home is. We believe the suspect the uh, serial bomber lived either alone or with family members there. Uh, police doing their best to secure that scene from early on this morning. Reporter Rebecca Lopez has been there monitoring this and she reported. In fact, we saw live here on daybreak it, just a few moments ago a uh, journalist being arrested. We assume that journalist got into an area he wasn't supposed mm -hmm. to be in with his credential and his camera still on him and they handcuffed him and took him away. So this is the area police are focusing on now as this investigation moves into the discovery phase where they are trying to figure out a what this guy's background was what was his
his motivation and why he did what he did. And reporter Rebecca Lopez brought up some good points. She said now that the sun is out and the sun is up, I mean, there could be some booby traps. There could possibly still be packages out there, whether at that house in Pflugerville or even en route. So she was mentioning how law enforcement really has a tough job to do to make sure no one else gets injured or hurt or killed. And as far as um, police chief Brian Manley, he was mentioning the importance of everybody continuing to be vigilant. Some people might be thinking, ah, OK, it's over. That's it. No, it's not. So we have no idea if some packages have already been sent out prior to what took place last night. So it's very important that we just do our part to be very vigilant and be still be very cognizant of packages that come in. Absolutely. If you can zoom out, uh, we're going to get Tony in here right now. We've got breaking news here to bring you. Important part of this story, obviously, is who this person is. Tony's been working the phones and his sources to confirm this. You've known for a while the name, but now you have uh, the comfort of uh, the, you're comfortable in telling us who this person was. I am. The person has been identified by state, federal and local law enforcement sources as 23 year old Mark Condit. That is the name that has been confirmed by multiple officials this morning. Um, they are continuing to investigate. I'm being told that authorities are serving a search warrant on his home right now in an effort to gain other additional information in this case. But again, authorities are confirming um, the identity of this suspect. Uh, they have not yet officially confirmed his name. So this information, Brian and Yvonne, is coming from multiple sources that we've all pieced together within the last few minutes. Mark Anthony Condit, okay, 23 years old. That, that's right. Okay. Does this lead us to believe there is, uh, there is a comfortable, uh, police are in a comfortable state to say that he was working alone? Do you know anything as far as that is concerned at this point? So let me tell you what I've just learned in recent minutes. We all, and while we have to mourn the victims of, of what has happened here in Austin, we also are all very lucky to have our safety. There is evidence that this person was planning to continue their attack. I am told by law enforcement sources that uh, authorities found additional evidence on his computer that he was Googling addresses in the Austin area that they believe he was going to be targeting as well. I am also told that they found addresses that he had been Googling in Cedar Park in the overnight hours and in fact dispatched state troopers to those addresses last night to check their front porches and to notify the residents that they may be in danger. Wow, that's wow. new. That's something and that goes to the investigation. Uh, this is far from over and that is a huge part of what you're talking about. We don't know. Police even said the past 24 hours. They don't know exactly where this man was. This uh, Mark Anthony Condit, uh, who's from Pflugerville, 23 years old, and they are now putting those pieces to the puzzle together to to try to determine if there's any more danger out there. Please say, still be vigilant, right? That's right. I can't imagine being one of those people who he was possibly targeting and getting that phone call from investigators saying, just want to let you know you were going to be next. You know, that, that, yeah, that's we really scary. We clearly have people in our community yeah. who were having state troopers show up at their houses last night to mm -hmm. say, we believe that you were being targeted. My goodness. Just amazing. The layers to the story get more and more. Again, live it, pictures here. It like almost onion. takes my breath away yeah. Yeah. knowing that. To know that he had, he had packages that were sent to specific addresses. And as you just reported, this 23-year-old Mark Anthony Condent uh, Condit mm -hmm. uh, from Pflugerville was intending to do more harm, it appears. Uh, we do have to take a quick break. Tony's going to hang out, gather more information. Tony, great job as always. And we'll be back with you here on Extended Coverage, KVU News Daybreak. Stay with us. At Arita Ranch, a master plan community northwest of Austin. Experience our Home on the Ranch Roundup, March 24th from 12 to 4 p.m. 11 premier builders starting from the 190s. RSVP at SantaRitaRanch.com. And now at Star, it's March Mania. Score big with huge savings of 15 to 50% off store wide. Extra savings on sofas, mattresses, power reclining furniture, plus interest free financing. An extra 15 to 50% savings won't last, so beat the buzzer to Star. 
It's Ashley Home Store's anniversary event. We're rolling out the red carpet to give you 60 months special financing or save up to 25% off. Plus, each day, one person will win their entire purchase at all three Austin Ashley Home Stores. Universal Men's Clinic, specializing in treating erectile dysfunction and low testosterone. It's Ashley Home Store's anniversary event. We're rolling out the red carpet to give you 60 months special financing or save up to 25% off. Plus, each day, one person will win their entire purchase at all three Austin Ashley Home Stores. Let me guess, another spring event. Wrong, it's the Honda Dream Garage spring event. You can get big deals on Honda's amazing vehicles. And take it from me, these are all pretty amazing. Oh look, it's my amazingly amazing Honda IndyCar. Which is a great segue for me to say race into the Honda Dream Garage Spring event happening right now. Don't worry baby, you're not for sale. The Honda Dream Garage Spring event is on now. You can get a great deal on a Honda vehicle at your local Honda dealer. Joining us on KB News Daybreak for extended coverage of this breaking news situation. Just in, we have learned the serial bomber's name, 23-year-old Mark Anthony Condit. And investigators say he was intending to do more harm. Investigators say that they found additional evidence that he was Googling addresses not only in Austin but in Cedar Park, intending to send out more packages. And right now, you're looking at a scene, a very active scene in the Round Rock area. This is I-35, Old Settlers Park exit that area right Old there. Settlers Boulevard. I'm sorry, yeah. Old Settlers Boulevard area right there. See that red vehicle? That was a vehicle that Mark Condit was driving in. That was a vehicle where when everything went down and officers were trying to apprehend him, he decided to detonate the bomb, set the package off, and he killed himself in that explosion. SWAT team was right behind him trying to approach the vehicle when the suspect detonated that bomb. Now in that detonation, you can see the blast. And now with the sunlight, you can see the front windshield is shattered and the side windows are blown out. You can definitely see the gravity and the intenseness of this explosion. We believe that the body of the suspect is still there. That's why you can see officers are surrounding the vehicle there, and we're going to stay wide here with our camp. Well, uh, maybe a little bit closer, but we're going to try to stay as, as comfortably away from the scene as we can with our video and still give you an idea of what's happening. And you can see now, this is new. Anavid just mentioned this, and we're going to get to Anavid in just a bit, but traffic along I-35 southbound, that, that has reopened. Two lanes are getting through there. The uh, far inside lane there of southbound I-35, they're actually the far outside lane as we look, uh, is now closed. Jay Wallace is there keeping an eye on this. Jay, how long has the road there been open? And uh, if you can hear me, what is the situation there currently? Yeah, Brian, we swung around to the other side of the highway, and what we noticed that is, is that they're investigating the red car. And unfortunately, literally as you were speaking, Brian, I'll still show you uh, what I can see right now. Do you see this um, Austin Police Department truck, this van? Uh, it actually just backed up about five feet. It was on the left side of the road, you see, and they just actually backed up. Um, behind that van is a red car, and there are about 20 to 30 investigators in yellow vests in black black jackets. Uh, that is where the investigation is happening. We assume, as you can see, th this is down the highway, kind of going off the edges. We've been saying that he went off uh, the highway. We assume that that is the car. We're talking about the vehicle. Again, it's a red vehicle um, right past this Austin Police Department van. So we're going to stay out here on the other side of the highway, as obviously this is where the investigation is going on. Look at all of these flashing blue and red lights on both the highway and uh, off on the on the side road as well along all of these uh, hotels and businesses. We assume this is the vehicle they're investigating. So uh, just wanted to give you guys that quick update. We will stay out here and if we get a, a better view or if we know more, uh, we'll make sure and let you guys know and you can come back out to us. Brian Yvonne. All right, you can see the sheer volume of law enforcement there on the scene, especially from those wide shots. My goodness. Absolutely. The helicopter's still there. Again, this is the scene on I-35 uh, between Old Settlers Boulevard and Highway 79. This is where it all ended for the Austin bombing suspect, 23-year-old Mark Anthony Condit. Uh, police say he was responsible for all the explosions that happened in Austin, including the one that happened in Shirts yesterday. And the, the scary thing is, Yvonne, as Tony was just reporting, uh, police say, 
say, at least Tony's sources tell him that in the investigation they've discovered that he was intending to cause more damage and actively searching for certain addresses in not just Austin but in other areas like Cedar Park uh, with the intent, police say, of causing more damage. So that's something to keep in mind and police have mentioned that as well. Uh, the bomber is dead. We know who that person was, but we don't know the motive and we don't know how many explosive devices he had put together. Uh, this is a live picture from the scene there. I-35 southbound definitely still backed up. They are allowing traffic through at this point, and you can see the investigation. This is a ground vantage point of what we were just looking at from the sky. Uh, as the officers have the car surrounded, we believe the suspect's body is still there, and they are investigating. That will be removed as part of the investigation once they have all the evidence collected that they need. We assume, uh, given the number of people there, that's going to happen momentarily, but we also are trying to be very, very cautious with what we show you because this is an active crime scene. Another scene where they're trying to be very cautious is in Pflugerville, the neighborhood where Mark Condit lived. I know that we had video from there. We had a reporter, Rebecca Lopez, there on the scene. You could see some troopers there, but now that the sun is out, they're really trying to make sure that there's not additional packages to deal with, any kind of booby traps. They're trying to make sure that that scene is clear as well. I'm sure they went into the house by now. They've looked at that. They've talked to neighbors. I know they've spoken with Mark Condit's family, uh, his parents. Uh, Pflugerville is this area. Again, we can't give you the exact address, but we can tell you this is a Pflugerville neighborhood. So this is going to be very important in the investigation, this scene, as is the scene in Round Rock as well. Absolutely. We heard from Rebecca there was an arrest there earlier and a, a journalist uh, was taken into custody there because uh, obviously this is a very secure scene and they want to keep the uh, keep the scene as clear as possible of people from the outside. These are live pictures from our helicopter above the scene of where this all ended overnight in Round Rock there just by uh, Old Sutler's Boulevard on the southbound side. Anavid reporting now. I don't know if Anavid's uh, ready for an update, but she's going to give us an update in just a moment about this area. We do know there's good news, at least for traffic through this area. The investigation not complete. They're still on the scene there, but let's get ready uh, right to Anavid Reyes, who's got uh, an update on traffic right in this area. Anavid, what is the latest there? So residual delays are still intact in this particular area. The good news is that I-35 at Old Sellers Boulevard down to Sam Bass has now been reopened. All those lanes on I-35 coming in southbound have been reopened. But like I mentioned earlier, delays still remain. They extend all the way back to Georgetown. So right now I want to let you know that Leander Road traveling westbound is another good alternate route to get on 183. Now Leander can take you over down to Ronald Reagan Boulevard, but it can also also take you to US 183. Now I did see reports of University Boulevard being super slow this morning. You're seeing uh, drive times, uh, you know, as long as 30 minutes just to get onto 183, and that's because everybody's being deviated into that direction. So Leander, if you're coming in from Georgetown, is a really good option for you to get to Ronald Reagan down southbound or to US 183. Back to you. All right, thank you so much again. This is a very developing situation, a fluid one. We are spanned out across this area, getting every single aspect of the story, confirming all the facts before we bring it to you live. Uh, we're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back. And now at Star, it's March Mania. Score big with huge savings of 15 to 50% off store wide. Extra savings on sofas, mattresses, power reclining furniture, plus interest free financing. An extra 15 to 50% savings won't last, so beat the buzzer to Star. The main reason why I came was the hot flashes, not sleeping, and the brain fog. I couldn't focus on anything. I'm sleeping all through the night. I have a libido. I'm not tired. I'm not fatigued. I focus on things. Everything is just totally different. I recommend HWC. I tell everybody about it. Come to HWC. They will change your life. They will make you feel better. Call HWC of Texas today at 512-458-2000 for your free consultation. You wanted it. You asked for it. And we listened. Introducing new Applewood Smoked Texas Brisket at Taco Cabana. We're serving it all day, all the ways you like it. Including delicious new tacos, fried jalapenos and onion strips with barbecue sauce, grilled peppers and onions, queso and roasted jalapenos, brisket with barbecue sauce, and a brisket egg and cheese all day breakfast taco. New Texas Brisket, all the ways you like it. Only at your Taco Cabana. 
we know there's a lot of other cleaning companies to choose from. Not for me. I've tried those other guys. They just don't clean my home the way these guys do. That's because they don't have our equipment. We make ours right here in the USA. And our cleaning solution meets rigorous EPA Safer Choice standards with no harmful residue left behind. That's why I call. Call or schedule online for this special offer. Call 1 800 Steamer. Stanley Steamer, just certified cleaner. It's 250, 250, 250 at Southwest Kia. All you need is $250 down to take home a brand new Kia Optima for $250 a month or less. And we have more than 250 brand new Kias to choose. 250, 250, 250 at SouthwestKia.com. All right, if you're just now joining us, we continue with our cover continuing coverage on what's taking place overnight. We can tell you the serial bomber is dead. Again, just moments ago, Tony Pleheski, you gave us the name of that serial bomber. It was 23-year-old Mark Anthony Condit of Pflugerville. The one bit of information that I found a little startling was the fact that more people were intended here to be hurt, right? That is my understanding is that authorities do feel as though they intercepted the suspect at a time when he continued to apparently be searching addresses in the Austin area that were going to uh, potentially target. And I'm told that as recently as in the overnight hours late last night, authorities were going to homes in the Austin area to actually notify homeowners and to check the surrounding areas, including their front porches, to ensure that um, the, those homes were in fact safe. And we were just talking earlier, Brian and Yvonne, about how unsettling and frightening that must have been to those homeowners to have uh, state troopers showing up at your house and notifying you that your home may have been targeted for one of these explosive devices. I can only imagine. Let's go out live now to Pflugerville, uh, the neighborhood where this young man either lived with his family or by himself. Erica Lopez is there now with more details on the situation as it developed. I'm sorry, Rebecca, Rebecca Lopez, Lopez, I apologize. Rebecca? <laughs> That's okay. Yes, um, it is still surrounded. The troopers have still are set up outside the house. I'm going to move out of the way so you can see the shot of what is actually going on here. This has been the case pretty much all morning. We first got here at five o'clock this morning, and as I've been reporting, they had told us to move back. We we approached. We were right there on the edge where those troopers are. That's where we first encountered the first trooper, and he told us that uh, for our safety and that we needed to move out of the way. Uh, that there was also possibly someone in the home, and then. Some other troopers later told us that we needed to get further back, that the home was not secure. And so at this point, they're waiting to go inside. They're going to be methodical about this. They have to get a warrant. They want to make sure that everything is is uh, processed properly, but also uh, they want to make sure that it is safe. Uh, this is a person that set, tri um, set uh, trip wires and had knowledge of, of bombs, obviously. And so uh, it could there could be booby traps. They're going to take their time, make sure that everyone is safe as they enter the home and they are hoping that there will be a trove of physical evidence in there that they can you know use to go back and trace back what this suspect was doing and sometimes they might leave uh, clues as to why the motive the motive is what they really want to know now why did he do it is there anything in that home that will lead them to get a better understanding of why he was targeting certain people and 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 his uh his motive Rebecca, we appreciate your time and uh, your insight there. Now, that's the thing, the motive. So from here on out, it's going to be really important for this investigation to continue so they can kind of figure out a little bit more about what's taking place and if there's any more potential danger out there. Exactly, and that is what they are doing right now. And in fact, I'm told that they are, authorities are serving a search warrant at that home in the Pflugerville area right now, trying to figure out if there remain uh, materials at this time that could be used um, as for additional explosive devices. And so that is what they are doing right now. Obviously, search warrants, once uh, they have been executed, become public documents. So we are, of course, trying to get, we'll be trying to acquire that as well. And these search warrants, the affidavits that are attached to these search warrants, often contain very meaningful information mm -hmm. about the investigation that authorities haven't released. So as you can imagine, we will be trying to acquire that search warrant as well. I'm unclear at this point whether or not it will be sealed. That can happen sometimes, particularly in federal cases. But uh, I can assume 
and do assume that that search warrant will have, um, could be complete with information. Let's talk about that. Obviously, federal officials have been here helping and assist with this investigation. Austin police have been leading the way. Now, what is the jurisdiction for something like this? Obviously, with, with him being dead now, we don't have a suspect to go to trial and to prove guilty and to do that whole process. But when it comes to anybody that might have helped him along the way, how does this process take take place going forward with the investigation uh, into what caused him to do this? Well, I think the investigation in terms of determining more about this suspect will continue to be very intense. Authorities will really Really want to understand in coming weeks and months the possible motive behind this person. But you can also imagine, too, and now as this whole case moves into its next phases, uh, there are experts out there who will study this case and study the suspect, Brian and Yvonne, to try to um, come up with what kind of, of uh, assumptions they can make about a person, FBI profilers, so that they then become more educated on the mindset mm -hmm. of individuals like this, so that next time when there is a serial offender like this, they can apply that same knowledge to those cases to try to help come up with um, who the suspect is. One thing that I would be curious to see in coming weeks is um, the any type of profile information that had been derived in this case and how much it matched mm -hmm. the suspect in the end. And that's something that we just don't know right now. Great I think point. that's a good point also you're saying. I mean, yes, we're talking about this case, but the hope here from all investigators to thwart potential copycats or potential cases from happening again, whether it be in Austin in Central Texas or somewhere else. But I think also something to take note of is that this when if you do something like this you will get caught there's too many eye eyeballs and in this day and age too too many ways that you can get caught whether it be through surveillance video or you know the cell phone technology as you mentioned a lot of leads and it was great that people here in town were also pitching in just the average joe was pitching in on this investigation as well helping out and let's be clear how this person was ultimately caught was his own actions walking sure. into that FedEx store yeah. on Brody Lane and Sunset Valley um, within the past couple of days. Everyone I have talked to is making it clear that was the tipping point mm -hmm. in this case. Yes, they had other evidence that they were tracking. Yes, um, they were following leads. Yes, they had done interviews. But until that person walked, this suspect walked into that door, mm -hmm. um, that was the turning point. You can definitively in this case. tie them, the, the, maybe some names they had to a face. That is what I am being told, yeah. yes. All right, again, you're looking at live pictures here from the ground level of the scene in Round Rock, and this is the neighborhood in Pflugerville where officials tell us the suspect lived. Let's go back out to Rebecca Lopez, who is at the scene there and has been there for several hours this morning. There's some activity going on, Rebecca. Could you describe what you're seeing there this morning? Well, you can see the uh, trooper just took out uh, his high-powered rifle, and then he came out and stood there near the stop sign and looked, and there was another reporter that tried to make their way in there. But then I also saw some other troopers grab their rifles and looked like they moved towards the back. Typically, when you see something like this, I've covered law enforcement now for almost 30 years, uh, they begin to stage to go inside. And that's what it's looking like to me, like they are preparing to possibly enter. Uh, from what I can see, you guys might have a chopper shot here in a little while that we can see, get a better idea of what they're doing. But we did see a couple of uh, troopers uh, get their, their rifles and, and put them on them. And so to me, it looks like they're getting ready to do something else. Or they are trying to definitely keep people away from this neighborhood. Rebecca and Lopez, thank you so much. Let me let me ask you this since we've got you and we do see some things going on. Uh, if you could, this seems like a very average middle class neighborhood there in Pflugerville. I, is anyone outside their home? Are there anybody? Is there anybody milling around wondering what's going on? No there? worries. You can see it. Yep. Okay, great. Uh, I think we lost, lost her. Yeah, she's working to get more information there, no doubt. Has been there a while as, mm -hmm. uh, as that scene has unfolded this morning. We found out that's where the suspect lived. She went straight there and has been watching that uh, develop over the course of the last, I guess, four, four and a half hours this morning. But to answer your question, we were going to that scene quite some time, and it didn't look like anybody else was out there other Very than quiet. law enforcement. And then, obviously, reporters and journalists from a safe location. But uh, 
Here's wow. an aerial picture of the yeah. neighborhood. Now you there can see uh, where police are. This is again in Pflugerville where the suspect, the bombing suspect, Mark Anthony Condent, either lived with family or by himself. We know that a residence is there. Uh, that is uh, very, very uh, a serious situation, at least for police to be there in the numbers that they are. There is something they're looking for here, either to notify or to find out if there's more danger. We don't know exactly what's happening in this specific location, other than the fact that police, DPS, and no doubt federal officials are there at the residence in Pflugerville uh, and have been there for some time this morning. You know, interestingly enough, I just saw a tweet from our former Austin Police Chief, uh, Art Acevedo, and he was saying, you know, just thanking the Austin Police for all the work and the courageous work they have been uh, doing and stuff. And he says, now let's remove that interim title, <laughs> Brian Manley, and build the department, which is long overdue. Congratulations. And I think it goes without saying that interim chief Brian Manley has done a phenomenal job making sure he was very transparent, making sure that he was like the calming voice, making sure that we, we got the information that we needed to give out to the public. I think many in the many people in the community, and I've been hearing this from community people we've been talking to. We had Nelson Linder on earlier today, the president of the Austin chapter of the NAACP, who was praising the work of Police Chief Brian Manley. And you know, when you look at these types of events that happen in communities. I'm thinking of Hurricane Harvey that happened in Houston last fall and these types of crimes that really do shake the core of a community. It's so critical that strong leaders are in place and I think many people in the community while they may have some uh, some questions or maybe some unresolved issues from what I'm being told by community leaders is that there is a pretty much overwhelming sense that Chief Manley, Interim Chief Manley, has exemplified true leadership throughout all of this. And we talked about this earlier, and he has talked about this publicly, specifically in his briefing yesterday with the Austin City Council, and that is the need to continue to balance f getting information out to the community, Great allowing mm -hmm. the right information to flow to the community, but at the same time, not saying or doing anything hinder, that would yeah. jeopardize the investigation. and. I think that that has been an ongoing consideration um, in this case. In terms of uh, his status as interim chief, since we brought it up, um, what my understanding is about that, and for people who have been following his own time here, is that uh, in, uh, the new city manager, Spencer Kronk, who just moved here from Minneapolis, is going to likely, it will be his appointment, uh, confirmed by the city council, but uh, actually appointed by the city manager. And I think that sometime in the next few weeks, um, we will see Spencer Kronk make a formal decision about whether or not he wanted to open that position to the outside and have a national search or to appoint Chief Manley as permanent chief. And if he is appointed permanent chief, it would be um, the first Austin police chief mm -hmm. in a number of decades who grew up in Austin and is an Austin native. Started Someone as who an Austin started officer. Started as an Austin yeah. officer yeah. and has risen through the ranks. And let's, nice story let's there. talk yeah. about that too because this was a coordinated effort. Chief Manley has been the face of the investigation, but there has been a coordinated effort. We do also want to bring you now uh, a picture of the suspect that Tony told us uh, who he is. This is a picture I believe is about four, three or four years old, but Mark Anthony Condit is the young man's name. This is his picture, I believe from a Facebook profile picture. Uh, and uh, this young man, 23 years old, is the suspect it was posted in 2013. Thank you for that uh, to one, our producer doing great work this morning to show us these pictures and bring all the coverage. Uh, but Mark Anthony Condit is the suspect. Anth uh, uh, Tony, you named this suspect earlier this morning. You've known for a while. Uh, again, the most important thing, I guess, at this point is we don't know his intention. We don't know his motive. We don't know if there are any other devices out there. We now know who he is and we know that he took his own life this morning. We do know something about his intention. His intention clearly has been to wreak havoc and cause terror, to yes. cause terror mm -hmm. in this community. And that has been what is happening. But in terms of why, that answer is just not known by investigators right now. You know, we're talking a little bit more just about this individual. Uh, as far as they're going to be talking to, 
the parents are going to be talking to neighbors but again uh, roommates I understand roommates. that's in the mix so as we're well not sure. did he do we know at this point can we confirm if he lived alone or if he lived with someone it is my understanding that he had at least one roommate okay. but possible more, possibly more roommates. And that begs more questions. I mean, if you're living with someone, don't you know what's what's taking place in the room next door? I mean, I would think that you might have some kind of a clue, even just to their kind of temperament. Oh, they're a little off. They're not a little off. They seem a little agitated. So it, it, it's going to be interesting for police to gather more information. And all of that is what is happening right now at that location outside that home, as well as actually executing a federal search warrant allowing federal agents to go inside that home to search it and to develop and come up with what they hope is going to be a trove of information. But again, based on what we know so far, authorities have already gotten a lot of meaningful information linking this suspect to these cases and also again establishing that this person planned to possibly continue this path of destruction and fear in our community by continuing to possibly target additional addresses. By the way, Vice President Mike Pence just tweeted out saying that he is proud of the efforts of all of the law enforcement here in town saying thank you for your hard work. We'll always be grateful for the courageous men and women who risk their lives to protect our communities. He's speaking on behalf of what's been taking place here in Austin. Also adding to that conversation I um, spoke briefly with Travis County District Attorney Margaret Moore, who has also <coughs> been a part of this whole effort, and she too is praising the Austin Police Department, saying that they led this investigation the whole way, but acknowledging the absolute strong work of ATF, FBI, U.S. Postal Inspectors, and, and really giving credit to this army of three mm -hmm. to five hundred investigators extending from Austin all the way to our nation's capital who have worked on this case. And let's further explain on the left hand side you see the picture of the suspect that killed himself this morning Mark Condit. On the right hand side aerial views of the neighborhood in Pflugerville where officials have now uh, surrounded and Tony, you can speak more to this as well. Yes. In order to get a search warrant, they have to cross all the T's, dot all the I's, make sure everything is in order, and then the process of serving that search warrant takes a long time. It's not just go in, look around, come out. They're going to make sure this investigation is completely thorough in that location, as you say, just to make sure people are there, are safe, and could they have anything, any knowledge of what has taken place over the last 19 days? That's right, and certainly to obtain a search warrant for someone's home, authorities have to go through a very specific process. I believe that the this case in particular has had input at the highest levels of the U.S. Justice Department to establish a, probable, a search warrant, to get a search warrant and obtain a search warrant. You do, of course, have to have probable cause. So in order to write the search warrant, authorities would have had to spell out why they believe that this suspect is, in fact, the suspect before entering that person's home. In terms of a time frame, how quickly can that search warrant kind of be processed and then they're in? How long is it usually on average take? You know, a search warrant can take anywhere from, you know, a few minutes okay. to draft to okay. hours. It just depends. In a case of this magnitude, um, uh, that that is so expansive, but also where authorities truly want to dot every I and cross every T, uh, it can take some time. And you can imagine that the officials um, writing the search warrants and the prosecutors writing the search warrants would want to be as thorough as possible um, before going to a judge and asking a judge to sign it. All right, we're going to recap everything for you. It's just about 9 a.m. this morning. You are watching extended coverage here on KVU uh, of what has been a very, very big night in the investigation into the bombings in Austin and in Schertz. Again, the suspect police surrounded a hotel in Williamson County in Round Rock this morning. The suspect then got in his vehicle, uh, attempted to leave the scene. The vehicle uh, the guy was in, he had a bomb on him and he blew himself up, killing himself uh, prior to police being able to apprehend him. One officer was had a minor injury from the explosion, but is expected to be okay. But that investigation you're seeing now has moved. Uh, it, it's still going on I-35, but they've moved some resources now to a neighborhood in Pflugerville. The man's name is Mark 
Anthony Condit. He's age 23. He was from Pflugerville. There's his picture from 2013. Uh, again, this area in Pflugerville with a very heavy police presence this morning. We do know from Tony Plohetsky's reporting uh, that police do believe he was intending to do more damage. He had at least one explosive device on him this morning. And according to Tony's reporting, uh, he was searching for other addresses as well. And what Tony is mentioning is, yes, investigators are serving a search warrant right now, currently at that Pflugerville address. Uh, we've been chatting with Rebecca Lopez, who is in that Pflugerville neighborhood. And uh, not that long ago, we saw that someone was being arrested, a journalist there. Now, Rebecca, what else is taking place there? Still a heavy police presence, I see. Yes, you just see a lot of officers walking around. Um, as Tony was saying earlier, they are waiting for the warrant. They have to have uh, the, that warrant to go inside and collect all of the evidence. And so uh, they are waiting for that. And so right now they're just trying to keep everyone out of the neighborhood. We did see some people leaving uh, earlier. Uh, we have not seen anyone go in the neighborhood. They've been trying to keep everyone out. And again, they're just looking for physical evidence. They're looking for anything that will lead them to a motive. Did he leave behind any papers? Did he leave behind any clues as to why? Was he working with anyone else? Uh, when I first arrived here at the scene, the first trooper that I encountered told me that uh, there was still someone inside or they weren't sure if there was, he said he or she was still inside. Um, and so we pulled back and then they told us that the home was not secure. They have to be very methodical. Look, the threat has been stopped. He has, uh, he is dead, and so there is no urgency to get into that home. So they want to make sure that it is safe and that they have all the proper paperwork before they go inside. And as Tony has been reporting, it is a lengthy process to get a federal judge to sign these warrants. Most of the time, they will seal this warrant. They can keep that sealed for quite some time. Uh, typically, if it is a state warrant, you can at least get the uh, the warrant itself as to why they're going in, but not the affidavit, which describes everything that they're looking for and the motive and all of that that the judge signs. But then they return the warrant within a certain amount of days, and then you can find out what they took from inside the home. Uh, that's typically uh, for a state um, case, but also federal case, you can get that as well. We will at some point know what all they took out of that house, and all of that stuff that they're taking out is going to help them build a profile of this guy. Why did he do it? Who did he work for? Where did he, you know, get all the materials? How long has he been planning this? Those are all questions that people want to know. Were there other targets? Who else may have been on his list? What drove him to this? His history, all his family history, all of that stuff. They need to go in there, and so they're going to take their time. But you can see right now, you can see officers walking around with uh, with weapons. They have already um, arrested one person that looked like he was a photographer. Uh, he was handcuffed and taken away in a DPS trooper's vehicle. And then we saw a reporter uh, get halfway up the street, and then the officer uh, with the, uh, the high-powered weapon came up to him, and, and he left. And he's over here by us now, but uh, he was not arrested. Uh, the other person must have been warned, because when I first got here, they were very serious about us not being near that house and to get off that street. So that is what is happening here at this time. All right, Rebecca, thank you for that. Patrick Perez, our KV reporter in that area as well, says he spoke to a neighbor who has visited with members of the family there in the home, came out, told Patrick that the family's upset and puzzled by this. Uh, no doubt about it. If they didn't know what was going on, I can only imagine their uh, shock about this. Uh, and I think we still have you, Rebecca, there. Uh, have you noticed an increase in the police presence there, or has it remained steady for most of the morning? Well, when we first got here, there were literally two troopers. That was it. There were two uh, squad cars out here, and there has increasingly been more. The the first trooper, or the second trooper that we talked to, told us that they were waiting for uh, reinforcement and that a lot of the resources that they needed to go into the home uh, and to uh, process the scene were tied up at the other location, and so they were waiting uh, for some more people to come in from that area. So, and again, right now, now you're seeing more troopers and what you what I saw earlier that was a little different from what we've seen most of the morning as they some of them took out their their rifles and uh, and put them around there also many of them have their heavy ballistic vests uh, that um, 
no, normally they have the uh, the Kevlar vest, but then they also have ballistic type vests that they put on over those. Uh, those are heavy, uh, heavier duty type vests, and I saw that they some of them were putting those on as well. So that's kind of the activity that we're seeing here um, that's changed from earlier this morning when we first arrived. All right, Rebecca Lopez, thank you so much for your work this morning. Uh, we will again check in with you uh, as things develop there in Pflugerville. Again, on the left-hand side of your screen, you see the picture. This is from 2013. Uh, Mark Condit is the person police say was responsible. Jay Wallace is now still at the scene there in Round Rock. Uh, it is still active. This is a video from earlier, Jay, but what is it looking like now there in, Flug in a Round Rock? Excuse me. Yeah, Brian, well, we've been showing you what the suspect now looks like. We've been giving you that photo. Well, now let me give you an idea of what the car he was driving overnight, what it looks like as I'll step to the side here. As you can see down the highway, we've switched sides of the highway, came over uh, to the other end near the hotels. You can see down the road, there were about 20 to 30 investigators by the car. You're seeing just the edge of it, but that's down the highway. You can see it on the edge of the grass with some of the um, investigators vehicles around the car. And this is what this is what we assume he was driving. Uh, it looks like uh, possibly a red Cherokee Jeep potentially, but you can see the grill and the look of the car right there on the edge of the grass and investigators will be out here obviously a while. You can see the long line of flashing blue and red lights as investigators are here uh, trying to take care of the situation and make sure everything is clear with the sun now up. So uh, we'll continue to remain out here and keep an eye on the investigation that's going on from this end of things where we can have a little bit clearer uh, view and idea of exactly what they're doing. Again, there were about 20 to 30 investigators surrounding the car about probably 10 15 minutes ago uh, but that's cleared for the moment and if we see more activity or anything of that nature we'll make sure to come back on air and let you know brian yvonne all right jay thank you so much and just to kind of recap what happened overnight right now on the right side of your screen you're looking at that pflugerville neighborhood where the serial bomber suspect resided in we're not sure uh exactly who he lived with uh, but i know that a search warrant has been put out to get more information but rewind all the way to about I don't know, I would say maybe around 11, 12 at about night. About 9 o'clock last nine night was last when night. Yeah, police began to really move in. That's when they started to move in because they had some information, some solid information that there was a person of interest and they located a vehicle. That vehicle was at a hotel in Round Rock. Multiple officers arrived. They were trying to wait for tactical teams to kind of follow them to get apprehend this individual, but that vehicle just took off. It drove away, so they began following the car. The car stopped on the side of the road on I-35 there in Round Rock, and that's when the SWAT team approached the car. The suspect detonated the bomb, killing himself in the process and injuring an officer when the bomb detonated. That officer suffered some minor injuries. So yes, we do know the name of the suspect. That suspect is dead, but so many questions remain this morning, trying to piece together several scenes, a scene in Round Rock, the scene in Sherman, the scene in Pflugerville. There are many pieces to this puzzle. And a dramatic end happening at those scenes within the past 12 hours or so. And Yvonne and Brian, again, this investigation really taking yet a new turn within the past 24 hours after officials strongly relied upon surveillance video and security video from that FedEx store in South Austin where authorities believe the suspect shipped two additional explosive devices. One of those being detonated early yesterday morning in the town of Shirts, where uh, there is a FedEx distribution center. The second package uh, that was acquired by federal and local law enforcement at that FedEx facility near Austin Bergstrom International Airport. But again, the culmination this morning and in the overnight hours of several weeks of investigation by an army of federal, state, and local law enforcement officials Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton giving us our first real um, assessment of the investigation last night, calling into KVU while we were live on the air and telling us that he thought that the investigation had in fact picked up momentum and telling us that he was very close, that investigators were very close to solving this case. And then just a few short hours later, we see um, these events in Williamson County, just to the north of Austin, unfolding. All right, Tony, thanks a lot. We're joined here on the set by Jeremy Rogalski with more information on the serial bomber. We do know his name now. What else have you learned? Jeremy? So I spoke with uh, the owner of a company where Mark Condit worked for for the past four years. The company is Crux Manufacturing. 
It is in Pflugerville. It's an engineering and machine shop, a sort of turnkey operation that buys raw materials from vendors and works up some plans and then makes parts for various applications in the oil industry and so forth. The owner, who only wanted to identify himself by his first name, Tim, said he hired Mark Condit uh, about four years ago when he was 19 or so. Um, I asked him why he hired him. He said, well, he seemed like a smart kid um, who had a lot of promise. And so he hired this young man, uh, and he worked in purchasing and sales, we are told, for this manufacturing company in Pflugerville. The owner did say uh, that he had to let him go uh, last August after about four years. I obviously asked him why. He said he wasn't meeting expectations. Um, he wasn't taking job tasks seriously, and the company could no longer uh, keep him on. I asked about his personality, yeah. um, which we all want to know. We want to get into the mind of Mark Condit. He said he was very reserved, very introverted were the words that this uh, small business owner used to describe uh, this serial bomber. Um, he said uh, that he was not confrontational, but he would um, prioritize things in his own way, the small business owner said. And so uh, in, in, the, in the sense of a, uh, doing the job and, and getting things done, he said he, he would not take those tasks to the hands. They gave him several warnings at the job. He did not heed those warnings, and again, they finally had to let them go. Uh, so there was no apparent acute incident, Ivana Bryan, that uh, you know, caused uh, his firing last August. Uh, but again, this information coming from a small business owner of a um, semiconductor business uh, up in Pflugerville, who uh, worked with this uh, this young man for for four years or so. And Jeremy, we know from talking to law enforcement that they have interviewed dozens if not hundreds of people as part of this invest investigation. Did you get a chance to ask him or did he say whether or not he had been interviewed by federal agents at all? He did say that he was notified yesterday, I don't know exactly what time, uh, by authorities, don't know which agency, that in fact Mark Condit was a person of interest. So that coincides, Tony, with a timeline we've been talking about that in the last 24 hours or so, uh, that he was identified as a person of interest and then you know, from when you piece together everything, the ball really started rolling in terms of, you know, trying to, to track down his trail. Did the owner perhaps, maybe as you were speaking with him, did he seem somewhat shocked or surprised or you didn't get any kind of a grasp as to what he personally felt about being asked about Mark Condit? Yeah, absolutely. I think this, uh, this was a shock to him as well as it was to everybody. You can only imagine this is a small business. He, he has about 20 employees. We're not talking a medium or a large type of operation mm -hmm. where you know, you're uh, just another worker punching a clock. This was a rather intimate environment, uh, a small, not quite a mom and pop shop, but a small business. Um, and, and just think about it. Somebody you're working with side by side for, for four years or mm -hmm. so, all of a sudden you, you get a call from authorities saying um, he's a serial bombing suspect. So yeah, quite uh, quite blindsided, quite a blow. Um, but I think the takeaway here is uh, is how this small business owner described him again. Very reserved, very introverted were the exact words he used, um, and very quiet. And he had to let him go yeah, uh, back in August, you said, which mm -hmm. seems to be a big step in this. It, it could, and we obviously would like to learn more. A couple other tidbits uh, we'd like to add that we've been kind of piecing together um, from the small business owner as well as from some social media posts. Uh, the small business owner confirmed what we have been hearing that he was homeschooled. Um, so we have that other bit of information about Mark Condit. He also, uh, for what it's worth, said he was uh, into gymnastics and he was uh, an avid gymnastics enthusiast uh, growing up. And so, you know, all these things uh, tend to, sometimes can be benign, but again, we're trying to paint the picture yeah. of who this young yeah. man was. And I was going to ask you about that, Jeremy, because so often after we have incidents like this, people will criticize the media and say, well, why are you spending so much time on the suspect? We really want to know about the victims and the lives that have been shattered by all of this. But Jeremy, I know that, that it is also important to many members of the public, but law enforcement as well, to try to create as round of a profile as possible. Can you just talk about why that is so important? Well, let's talk about the profile a little bit more about what we know. And this comes, uh, full disclosure, from a kind of piecemeal and a triangulation, if you will, of social media posts and, and other information vending systems that we have. Um, but we do know, and so I say this with a bit of caution, because 
you know, social media, social media. But uh, Mark Condit, we have been able to piece together, was the oldest uh, brother of uh, four siblings. He had three younger sisters. Um, the photo we're seeing, and forgive me if you've already talked about this, was from a 2013 Facebook post from his mother uh, in which she, says, she said, and I'm paraphrasing, I'm happy to have graduated my son Mark, which by the verbiage there would coincide with the fact that uh, this young man was homeschooled rather than he graduated from XYZ High School. Uh, getting back to your point, Tony, um, you know, when they try to deconstruct uh, a motive, and that's the big question mark here and will continue mm -hmm. to be. What was in this young man's mind to spark him to do this? And so that's why a profile is so important, is to get to that motive. Did he have an agenda? Was it politics? Was it religion? Was it... Race know? has been a, a, mm -hmm. a part of the conversation That is all well. up in the air right yeah. now. But the answer is the more you can know about the past and the present of someone, the more you can try to you know, develop a hypothesis for motive. And the immediacy of the investigation also would at least lend itself uh, to learning more information from people that might have known him. Knowing that there were certain things maybe planned in the future, people that knew him might have an idea, if they're not the ones in danger, of what he might have been planning to do. Now, Jeremy mentioned this, uh, the Facebook post back in 2013 from that picture. Uh, the mom posted it back then saying, quote, I officially graduated Mark, as you mentioned, from high school on Friday, one down, three to go. He has 30 hours of college credit, too, but he's thinking of taking some time to figure out what he wants to do, maybe a mission trip. Thanks to everyone for your support over the years. You know, I did ask the back to the small business owners, only going by Tim right now. We are sending a crew his way to try to hopefully learn more. I asked him, was there anything uh, that, you know, was a red flag that, that possibly could, could lend some sort of insight uh, in, into what happened here. And he said no. Um, you know, he said we just simply had to let him go. We, have, we gave him a couple warnings. He wasn't meeting job expectations. But there was no blow up, if you will. There was no inter-office uh, quarrel or fight or at least anything that would say, you know, this was a loose cannon. He, he simply said he was quiet, he was reserved, he was introverted, he prioritized things his own way, and obviously his set of priorities in the workplace uh, didn't coincide with ours in terms of running a business. And one thing that I think is noteworthy, too, is that there has been a lot of discussion by experts and law enforcement that whoever was doing this had to have extensive experience in terms of manufacturing explosive devices. And typically, or at least in very often, it is the case that sometimes people who are familiar with explosives maybe have law enforcement type experience or military type experience. But Jeremy, based on the on the research that you've been doing, that is not the case here, right? Well, we have combed all sorts of social media posts because, you know, in today's world, that is one way, yeah. certainly, to learn about somebody. Uh, he had a YouTube channel. There was no content on it. Oh. He had a very limited Facebook profile. Uh, we don't know how private it was, um, but, you know, 16 friends. Uh, you know, in today's world, that is relatively low. Um, there is no indication so far that talks, you know, anything about bomb making, about, uh, you know, anything of that of that nature. He uh, did. We've been able to identify um, have some blogs that appeared to be in conjunction with some sort of class assignment, in which he had to write a persuasive blog about certain topics. But again, nothing. Uh, that stands out so far. So that's a big question mark too, guys. Very good reporting. Jeremy Rogalski, Thank Jeremy. thanks so much for being with us here. We're going to take a quick break here on KVU to reset things. Again, a, lot, a picture of the suspect dead here in Austin this morning. We'll have more on how it all went down straight ahead. Stay with us here on KVU. If you are 53, 54, or 55 and are thinking of early retirement, call Reyes and Reyes to formulate your retirement plan. 512-371-1990. If you are 62 years of age or approaching 62, do not go to the local Social Security office before consulting with Reyes and Reyes Law Firm. We will save you thousands and thousands of dollars. The Social Security Experts, 512-371-1990. All consultations are free. Call Reyes and Reyes, 512-371-1990.
For the first time ever, Mattress Firm is offering beds starting at just $9 a month across our widest selection of famous brands. And now with 0% interest for 72 months, it's never been easier to bring home a new mattress. Starting at just $9 a month, our lowest payments ever. Don't wait, the big deal won't last long. Your budget stretches further at Mattress Firm. happens here. Make it happen in a home you love. Get your sunglasses ready because it's spring break time at Capital Chevrolet. You'll be looking too good in your new Chevy Silverado with 13000 in spring break savings. And at Capital Chevrolet, we offer all changes for life at no extra cost. Plus, get a spring break from down payments and a break from monthly payments for 90 days. I'm a veteran, and veterans are always welcome at Capital Chevrolet, the number one volume Chevy dealer in Austin. Thanks for joining us. We continue with our developing story, so continuing coverage here from breaking news that transpired overnight. In the overnight hours, we can tell you, and you've been learning all morning long, the serial bomber here in Austin who has terrorized our community is now dead. We are showing you a picture. This was from back in 2013 when this picture was posted. Not sure when it was taken of the suspect, 23-year-old Mark Anthony Condit of Pflugerville. Now we have crews at the Pflugerville neighborhood where Mark Condit lived. We're not sure if he lived with someone. I believe he had a roommate. That's what Tony Plahetsky was finding out for us. I believe that's for sure, but we are just learning more information about him as an individual, as a person. Uh, just moments ago, we had Jeremy Rogowski, KHOU reporter from our sister station in Houston, and he was saying that he spoke with a manager, the owner, I believe, from Crux Manufacturing, a small business, and he was saying that it's an engineering, a machine shop, about 20 employees, and at one point, Mark Condit worked there, and he said that um, Mr. Condit had to be let go last August, right? Right, last August. But as far as a description of maybe perhaps the personality of our suspect, reserved, introverted, quiet, we do know that Mark Condit was homeschooled. That's another uh, bit of information there. And as far as uh, this picture again taken back in 2013, his mother posted this Facebook post back then. And the post says, quote, I officially graduated Mark from high school on Friday. One down, three to go. He has 30 hours of college credit too, but he's thinking of taking some time to figure out what he wants to do, maybe a mission trip. Thanks to everyone for their support over the years. That's right. Earlier this morning, we had an opportunity to speak with Austin Mayor Steve Adler about the news. He was at the news conference this morning. Here's what he told our uh, our reporters this morning. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm feeling great relief and, 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 and appreciation. I had the opportunity to thank uh, Chief Manley. Uh, and his officers, as well as this incredible team, uh, federal agents and just an army here, ATF and FBI, people from the state and all over. Uh, but it's important to remember that, that this investigation is continuing. Uh, we don't know the whereabouts of this suspect over the last 24 hours. Uh, so the, the message is still to, to be observant, to be vigilant. Uh, if you see something that's suspicious, we're still having people call 911. Uh, there's still some unanswered questions, uh, so the investigation is continuing. Uh, but boy, I tell you, right now, it is, uh, it's, it's feeling pretty good. And there has been a lot of partnership, the FBI, the ATF. We even heard word yesterday that the White House was monitoring this situation. What are your thoughts and what do you have to say about that partnership? Well, yeah, I think the whole community is real appreciative of the resources and priority that was put against this, uh, and we're real thankful. And when you watch the, the sophistication uh, of this team, uh, it didn't do anything but, but, but bring a sense of confidence that they would be able to, to get answers to this and, and be able to, to, to stop it. Uh, 
and it's it's been a pretty impressive thing to watch. And you know, this ordeal began back on March 2nd. You know, we've had a number of bombings. We have had two deaths. Four people were injured, at least four. What do you have to say to the victims' families? Well, you know, the, uh, the thoughts and prayers of, of me and Diane and the entire community are with the family of the of the two gentlemen that died, as well as the the folks that have been have been hurt. I had the chance to to talk to uh, the families of the of the first uh, several uh, incidents and. Uh, express that uh, as well as the determination that we would answer everyone's questions and that we would we would we would put an end to this and I'm happy that we've gotten to this place. Uh, the other thing that, that I think is real striking uh, about this and going to the neighborhoods, uh, being at um, uh, uh, Greater Mount Zion, uh, as a community, we need to do a better job of knowing the people that live across the street from us or across the hall or down the street. And, and if there's a takeaway from this, it's that we can be and should be a better community if we get to know each other better uh, in our neighborhood. And you got a sense of that when we told everybody to start looking around them and seeing what was suspicious, uh, neighborhoods beginning to pull together, but also people realizing that they don't know who lives down the street or across the hall. Uh, so I hope that moving forward we, we do a better job of that. I'm going to do a better job of that. Okay, and as you said, the investigation is ongoing, uh, encouraging people to stay vigilant. Absolutely. Uh, uh, this is really good news tonight, uh, but there are still unanswered questions, as the chief indicated earlier. Everyone has to remain vigilant. Everybody should continue to, to, to look for things that seem out of place. Uh, and that's not only Austin, but that extends to the cities around us, uh, you know, Round Rock and Cedar Park. And as the, as the chief said, uh, we just don't know where the suspect has been the last 24 hours. That, an interview with Mayor Steve Adler from this morning in Round Rock. You can see the suspect's picture on the left, Mark Anthony Condon, age 23, from Pflugerville, killed himself with an explosive device this morning in Round Rock after police surrounded a hotel he was staying in, just alongside of southbound I-35 in Round Rock, there near Old Settlers Boulevard. On the right-hand side is a live picture from the neighborhood. Police have now surrounded the home. We have learned from our reporter there, Rebecca Lopez, that they are efforting a search warrant, if not already serving a search warrant there. We haven't spoken to her in a few minutes, but they will now investigate the home where police believe he lived. Let's take a quick break and then after on the other side of the break, we'd like to hear from some uh, state and uh, federal law enforcement officials and just officials in general, their take on what has taken place here in Austin overnight. We'll be right back. It's the little things that are all the motivation you need and for a little extra inspiration, check today's deals online for new coupons, markdowns, and more. Fresh styles, big savings, and fun perks every day. Bells, little things mean everything. We get the idea. You're looking for your lost dog spots. Does anybody know him? No. no. Wherever he is, we'll find him. We're a pack of alpha dogs. You're Rex. I'm an indoor dog. You're King Spots. He's nowhere around here. You're Duke. I wish somebody spoke his language. Your boss. I think the little pilot's got a screw loose. I'm chief. Nobody's giving up around here ever. Wow. Isle of Dogs. Rated PG-13. Hendrick. Choose a premium car buying experience at Audi South Austin, where luxury and excellence meet. We offer exceptional service and vehicles like the new 2018 Audi Q3. Lease for just $3.39 per month. Or lease the new 2018 Audi A4, just $3.59 per month. Or lease the new 2018 Audi Q5, just $4.59 per month. Experience the difference at Austin's Audi Magna Award-winning dealer, Audi South Austin. Just off Interstate 35 South and at AudiSouthAustin.com. I'm Sarah Osborne, and I love walking around Austin with my dog Jet and my Panasonic GX85 from Precision Camera. I love having a real camera with an actual zoom that can take action shots of my dog running in Zilker Park. I live in downtown Austin, and I love exploring everything we have to offer with my dog, and I always take my camera. The Panasonic GX85 is simple to use, and it always takes great shots. The Panasonic GX85 with 12 to 32 millimeter lens on sale for $5.99. 
It's our 128th anniversary at Cons Home Plus. Celebrate with no interest until 2020. Over $20,000 in prizes. And this Saturday, our first 128 customers will get scratch and win cards for free Bose headphones, free gift cards, and more. Go to cons.com to apply for your yes money and get approved instantly. Then come join the anniversary celebration at Cons Home Plus. You want a better life and a better It's the little things that can't help but make you smile. Like great prices on new trends and the biggest brands in beauty, fragrances, and gifts. Fresh styles, big savings, and fun perks every day. Bells, little things mean everything. Welcome back, 9.30 now. Again, extended coverage here on KVU of what has been a very important night in the serial bomber case, the serial bomber exploding a device inside his vehicle this morning. This is the man that killed himself in Round Rock, Mark Condit. Police say he was responsible for all the explosions in and around Austin, beginning back on March the 2nd, taking the lives of two men in Austin. So let's take a look now. Uh, this obviously, this news has been national over the last couple of weeks, mm -hmm. and our state leaders and national National leaders now chiming in, uh, giving their thanks. This is from Lloyd Doggett, Congressman Doggett said an immense thank you to all those at APD, the FBI, ATF for working around the clock to protect us. While the investigation continues to ensure nobody else was involved and no other bombs have been circulated, our immediate nightmare has ended with the bomber's death. That from Lloyd Doggett today. We are also hearing from Representative Bill Flores saying grateful for all of the hard work by local, state, and federal law enforcement and the Austin bombings case. And other leaders, we've heard from President Trump, Vice President Mike Pence, also Austin Representative uh, Congressman Roger Williams there. Thank you. He's been following this case very closely. Thank you to Austin Police and Chief Manley and all of the law enforcement officials at the local, state, federal levels that were involved. A very extensive team effort here. Texans are forever grateful for your tireless work and appreciate your service. That's from Congressman Williams this morning. And Senator John Cornyn also saying grateful for the work of the Austin police and uh, the state and the federal partners during the bombing investigation and for the risks that law enforcement across the country face daily on our behalf. And he really brings up a good point. Law enforcement, they're going into scenes where everybody is running away from. So the fact that they're doing such a thorough job and really putting their lives on the line each and every day, uh, that really says a lot. Ted Cruz also, uh, our Senator Ted Cruz, U.S. Senator, saying Heidi and I would like to thank the work of the Austin Round Rock and the Schertz Police Departments, Texas DPS, FBI, ATF, and all law enforcement who helped identify the Austin bomber who is now dead. He also urged his Texans to remain vigilant, as we've been saying, as authorities continue to work to ensure that there are no further bomb threats. Congressman Michael McCall, thank you to our law enforcement on the local, state, and federal levels for their tireless work in restoring peace. Uh, the hashtag Austin bombings. Hopefully we won't see that hashtag very often in the future. Again, uh, this is the picture of the suspect. Police have identified Mark Condit is the Austin bombing suspect. He is dead this morning. We're going to take another break. Stay with us. It's the Rooms to Go anniversary sale. Prepare to be amazed with furniture like this for $14.99. You'll fall head over heels for $25 a month, interest-free. Find the room you've been looking for. Like this and more, just $14.99. Great selection, amazing prices. At $25 a month, interest-free. Celebrate the most incredible offers all March long. There's one Broadway musical critics are calling despicable, diabolical, unseemly, and, oh yes, ingenious. Winner of the 2014 Tony Award for Best Musical, A Gentleman's Guide to Love and Murder. March 20th through the 25th at Bass Concert Hall. Tickets at BroadwayNaustin.com. Life could be a dream. If I could take you up in paradise above. If you would tell me I am the only one that you love. Life could be a dream. Daniel Stark really went to bat for me. They fought tooth and nail to get me everything that I deserved. They didn't just let me settle for less. 
Saturday, March 24th, come to Vineyard Ridge and save $20,000 off your new barn dominium shell and four acres on sale for only $129.9. Start living your dream in the heart of the Texas wine country near historic Fredericksburg and own your new barn dominium shell and four acres for only $129.9. That's a savings of $20,000. Hurry out early for the first and best selection. Excellent land financing is available. Call now, 877-333-9413. Right now at NGB, buy two tires, get two free when you purchase our value installation package. Plus, use your store credit card and receive a $50 mail-in rebate on any purchase of $500 or more. Only at NGB. All right, welcome back to KVU 935. Now we are breaking into regularly scheduled program to continue our coverage of the Austin bombing suspect killing himself in Round Rock overnight. This is the person police have identified as the man who took uh, took the lives of two Austinites and then distributed five bombs in Austin and down in shirts. Uh, all those leading to explosions, multiple injuries. This man took his own life. Here's the scene uh, in Round Rock from earlier today. This is recorded from our chopper. You can see the red car there on the right hand side of the screen. That is the vehicle Mark Anthony Condit was in overnight when police surrounded him. He then detonated an explosive device inside of that vehicle killing himself at the scene. This is from earlier, but we are told that uh, traffic on I-35 southbound still being affected by this investigation that does continue. And with the sunlight, we were really pointing out, you can see the impact of that blast, of that explosion, the front windshield completely shattered, then the side windows just kind of blown out. Jay Wallace, KVU's Jay Wallace is there on the scene. And Jay, what have you learned since we've last spoken? Yeah, Yvonne, well, you know, we showed you that chopper video we were just showing you. I want to show you a live picture of the car right now. We decided to switch sides because of that barrier between the northbound and southbound side of I-35. We can now have a clearer picture of the car and the effects of that explosion. I'll step to the side so you can see as we zoom in. And you can look past the yellow tape here, the red car on the edge of the highway. If you remember, we were reporting overnight that police found the suspect's car and started following him before he drove off the road onto the edge. And you can see on the edge. There's actually uh, been some people coming out of uh, some of the investigators trucks and cars since we uh, last went on air right before I came in. They, they were not there, so uh, they're out of the car looking at this car. And you can see you can see based on the grill, possibly a truck of some some kind. We also were able to show you that chopper video. And so for some of the people that were here near uh, this explosion when it when it happened overnight, uh, it's cut, obviously shocked and can't believe that it happened so close to them. We just woke up and heard a bunch of commotion and my little baby was like talking to herself and I was like, oh, hush, hush, go to sleep. And the TV was super loud, I thought. So I just fell back asleep and then I wake up and here's all this. Well, I'm glad we didn't stay at the Red Roof Inn. And just to review again, when this car exploded, it was when the, a SWAT team were, they started to approach this car after he made it to this side of the road. As you see, this is where the car was and the SWAT team started to approach the car when then that is when the suspect took his life. The car exploded from a bomb that was detonated inside the car. So obviously this long line of cars, it has been this way since we got out here overnight and it's most likely gonna remain this way for quite some time. They wanna make sure this scene is clear, this scene is safe and they also get all of the information and information and evidence they need to to eventually clear this case. So we'll remain out here and give you these live pictures and live updates as as we as the day moves on live in Austin. Jay Wallace KV News. Jay, we want to get a look at the traffic in and around that area. Still an active scene. Anavid, I know it's not clear, but traffic is kind of crawling a little bit. Yes, so what is clear are your I-35 southbound main lanes. Now two left lanes are open near that investigation scene, so I don't know if you kind of paid attention to there, but APD SUVs are blocking off that right hand lane. Um, but as soon as you pass that investigation scene, all of your southbound main lanes are open. So basically after Old Settlers Boulevard, so if you're coming in southbound, you're still seeing a crawl there. You're driving at about seven miles per hour, just stacked. Traffic is stacked driving.
driving super slow coming in to downtown Austin. So as I said, I've been suggesting all morning long AW Grimes. If you live east of I 35 is a good route for you. University Boulevard is actually crawling at this time trying to get onto 183. So if you're coming in from Georgetown, Leander Westbound is a good alternate route down to Ronald Reagan or taking it all the way to 183 this morning. Back to you. All right, Anna V, thank you for your work this morning. No doubt a lot of people affected by the investigation. Again, a photo of the person police say is responsible for the bombings in Austin. Mark Condit, 23 years old, killed himself this morning alongside I-35 in his vehicle. Uh, okay. No. We also are going to now bring you a bit of breaking news. We talked about this. The investigation continues and now at the FedEx facility on McKinney Falls Parkway. We're also telling police okay. have now evacuated the building. This is the same building down near the airport in southeast Austin where there was a suspicious package yesterday. Now there is another suspicious package there and so they're going to evacuate the building once again to make sure everything's safe there. But again, as we talked about, this isn't done just yet. You're right. Employees right. are being evacuated right now as we speak. I think they want us to take a quick break, uh, but again, we do have a crew headed to the scene. We'll be right back. This is Alice. She has the AT&T Direct TV bundle. I get tons of HD. Spectrum has tons of HD on demand and the sports channels are included. Direct TV Select doesn't include sports channels and I had to get a cinema connection kit to watch on demand. And I love Spectrum's 24 hour local news channel. I don't get that. No, you get an ugly satellite dish. Get Spectrum TV $29.99 a month. Call 844-536-2999. Spectrum Internet starts at 200 megabits with no data caps. My starting speed is only 50 megabits. Spectrum's four times faster. Get Spectrum Internet $29.99 a month. And Spectrum Voice has unlimited nationwide calling with no additional taxes and fees. I'd switch, but I'm in one contract for TV, a second one for internet. I could pay hundreds to cancel. Spectrum has no contracts, and they'll help buy out yours. I'm calling Spectrum. Spectrum TV, internet, and voice, $29.99 a month each. Call 844-536-2999. Daniel Stark wins means I can go back to work. It means I got the medical treatment that I need. It means that I can enjoy my family. They've helped me so much. Growing up, I was among the one in five American kids who struggle with hunger. But with the power of breakfast, the kids in your neighborhood can think big and be more. Go to hungeris.org to make breakfast happen for kids in your neighborhood. More and more people have discovered something stronger, more dependable, longer lasting in a Chevy truck. And now you can too. See why Chevrolet is the most awarded and fastest growing brand the last four years overall. Get a total value of over $8,700 on this Silverado Texas edition. Plus, current competitive owners get an additional $3,500 total cash allowance when you finance with GM Financial. Before I found out about HWC, um, I was having horrible night sweats all night long. As soon as I got treatment, um, the hot flashes went away. My night sweats have disappeared. My memory is back. The fog has lifted. Uh, I have so much more energy now. I feel like I did in my 20s and 30s. My libido is back. So I am very happy. Call HWC of Texas today at 512-458-2000 for your free consultation. This is not a showroom. This is a home, a place to experiment, play, and refresh. Here, we say yes to decorating the walls, yes to rearranging the furniture, and yes to the seasonal makeover. And over. If we get bored, we move on. Scratch that. We move on so we never get bored. When you find endless possibilities for every budget, you can refresh for any season or any reason. Only here at home. The Home Decor Superstore. When you buy a home with a Redfin real estate agent, you open more doors. The more you open, the closer you get to finding the right home. Redfin sends new listings hours faster than other sites. And you can quickly book tours to see more homes first. Your Redfin agent will guide you at every step until you open the door and close the deal on the home that's right for you. Redfin, the modern way to buy or sell a home. 
All right, thanks for joining us. Now, earlier we heard from Chief Manley, and he said we don't know where this suspect, this suspect Mark Condit, had spent his last 24 hours, that he wanted the community to remain vigilant because more packages could be out there. And now we're hearing word of another suspicious package, right? This is the same FedEx facility on McKinney Falls Parkway. This is video actually from yesterday because there was a threat there of a suspicious package. A package was found. They evacuated the building and have since evacuated the building once again today. So we do not know the extent of this threat, but we do know another suspicious package report has been made at that same facility. Tony Plahetsky is here to explain more about the investigation, and we talked about it, Tony. This was a key piece to the puzzle yesterday, and it appears it's still in play as far as the danger goes. And this is consistent with the warning that federal and local authorities gave earlier this morning, that they were unsure that they had uh, ascertained all of these explosive devices. And so earlier today you saw and heard interim police chief Brian Manley continuing to urge the public to remain vigilant. But we do know that in his some of his last acts, the suspect Mark Condit was using FedEx to distribute his packages. We know that because overnight Monday night into Tuesday, we saw that explosion that happened at a FedEx facility in Shirts. At the same time yesterday morning, uh, just as the sun was coming up, emergency responders were dispatched to a FedEx facility here in Austin, near Austin Bergstrom International Airport. And we know that later in the day, uh, authorities did confirm and government officials confirmed that that package was in fact a bomb that was at the FedEx facility here in Austin. So authorities have expressed concern that there may be other packages out there that we don't know about. We know that this suspect, again, he's been identified as Mark Condit of the Pflugerville area, did have a bomb with him in his car this morning that he used um, in an effort to end his own life. So now, again, we're being told that authorities yet again have been called to this FedEx facility. It's near McKinney Falls Parkway, near Austin Bergstrom International Airport. That emergency Emergency call coming in from what we're being told around 932 this morning. So just a short time ago, about 15 minutes ago, and this is an active scene. Also, we're going to go back out to Pflugerville in just a bit, and that's where the man uh, that is believed to be behind all of these explosions you see there on the left lived a live picture from the scene there. I know there's our reporter Rebecca Lopez, who's been doing great work this morning there in the neighborhood, and we're going to check in with her momentarily to see if there's been any developments. I see. Uh, let's go now to Rebecca. In fact, we've seen some activity going on there, Rebecca. What is the latest from the neighborhood? Well, right now they're again still trying to keep people out of here. There were more reporters that are trying to get closer and they are very serious. DPS troopers with high powered rifles are shooting anyone that is trying to get anywhere near this house. Since five o'clock this morning, we were told to stay away. The house is not secure. They don't know what's in there. They need to get inside. Let me show you what's happening here right now uh, at the scene. Authorities have to get that warrant to go in the house and search it. When we first arrived, a trooper told us that there might still be someone in the home. Uh, did that person know what Condit was up to? Did he have help? Also, they don't know if there are other bombs uh, and also explosive materials in there, booby traps. A, a trooper told us early on the home again was not secure and that's one of the reasons they're not letting one near that house. What they are hoping to find is evidence that could lead them to a motive. Why did he do this? Why did he tar target certain people? Did he have help? They will look into his, into his history to to build a profile of him. Uh, his parents live right up the street from here. They are going to want to talk to them. Apparently he has a sister. Uh, he may have had a roommate. They want to talk to all of those people. Authorities are taking their time. There is no rush to get inside that house because he is dead and the threat is over. So this could uh, take some time uh, to get into this house. And also what I've seen in my experience of years of covering law enforcement is uh, typically 
typically they'll send in a robot or um, some something like that first uh, before they enter before officers will enter to make sure that it is it is safe uh, you know this is a person that has set a tripwire he uh, knew what he was doing and so they most likely will send in some sort of bomb squad robot is what I'm assuming will happen before they actually enter the home to, uh, to search it. Uh, and it could take some time uh, for them. They uh, have, are looking like they're just taking, uh, taking their time right now. Right now, just keeping everyone out of the neighborhood, make sure they can uh, get their investigation completed uh, and then open the neighborhood back up. We did see some people leaving, but they are not allowing anyone inside uh, the neighborhood at this time. That is what is happening here at the scene. And if we see more movement, I'll, of course, I'll update you guys. All right, Rebecca Lopez there live for us in Pflugerville. While we've got you, I know we've got a bit of a delay for our viewers there, but I would like to ask you, I heard you say this is where the man lived and you believed his, his parents lived nearby. Is that what you were reporting, Rebecca? <laughs> Yes, I'm hearing that his parents live nearby, just up the uh, street, uh, and that they have obviously already been informed. Uh, there were also officers or troopers in near his uh, parents' home as well. Uh, and um, actually, we heard that one of your reporters has uh, talked to a neighbor that said that the parents are very upset. Uh, as you can imagine, that would be horrifying news to learn that your son uh, is, in fact, the man that they have been searching for, a serial bomber that they have been looking for. So uh, we are being told right now there appears to be an ATF uh, person here that is telling us that we all have to move now. They are moving us from this area. I'm not sure why, but uh, at this time, it looks like they're getting ready to move all of us again. All right, Rebecca, go ahead and adhere their um, call and we appreciate that. Just make sure we move to a safe location. Now, again, if you're just uh, tuning in right now, yes, we've been continuing uh, co this coverage on 23-year-old Mark Anthony Condit from Pflugerville. He has been killed. He died in an explosion overnight, the serial bomber. But now we're learning new information about a second call of a suspicious package at that same FedEx near ABIA for a second day in a row, the, the location McKinney Falls FedEx. You're looking at a picture there of the scene. Again, this was the same location as we had yesterday where there was a suspicious package. So another report, this call came in at 9.32. We're going to take a short break and we'll be right back. At Lazy Boy Furniture Galleries, we know everyone has their favorite spot. It's the Lazy Boy Super Sale. For a limited time, save 20% store-wide and get 24 months special financing. Lazy Boy Furniture Galleries. Live life comfortably. More and more people are finding themselves in a Chevrolet for the first time. Trying something new can be exciting, empowering, downright exhilarating. See for yourself why Chevrolet is the most awarded and fastest growing brand the last four years overall. Get $2,000 cash allowance on most 2018 Chevy Cruze models. Plus, current select competitive owners and lessees get an additional $2,500 competitive cash allowance when you purchase. Chevy drives Texas. Find new roads. At Lazy Boy Furniture Galleries, we know everyone has their favorite spot. It's the Lazy Boy Super Sale. For a limited time, save 20% store-wide and get 24 months special financing. Lazy Boy Furniture Galleries. Live life comfortably. Find incredible deals at Haverty's during our Tempur-Pedic floor model closeout. Let our experts find you the right mattress as we make room for new models. Save up to 50% on select Tempur-Pedic floor model mattresses and adjustable bases. Choose from select Temper Cloud, Temper Contour, and Temper Flex models. Hurry, once these great deals are gone, they're gone. With Haverty's, your mattress can be perfect, even when life isn't. The Tempur-Pedic floor model closeout at Haverty's. Life looks good. Where can you get cash fast? Right here, with a title loan at Speedy Cash. Get up to $10,000 cash on any year, make, or model. You can keep your keys and keep your car. Apply today for a title loan at Speedy Cash. Love that Speedy Cash. More and more people have discovered something stronger, more dependable, longer lasting in a Chevy truck. 
and now you can too. See why Chevrolet is the most awarded and fastest growing brand the last four years overall. Get a total value of over $8,700 on this Silverado Texas edition. Plus, current competitive owners get an additional $3,500 total cash allowance when you finance with GM Financial. A juicy, flavorful cheeseburger that's under 350 calories? Feels like we're getting away with something. I know, right? You thinking what I'm thinking? Taking these burgers, crossing the border, and changing our names? No. <sighs> Ordering shakes. Oh. And changing our names. I'm gonna be Marianne. I'm gonna be Dottie. I'll be Shane. For a limited time, get a flavor-packed cheeseburger with none of the guilt. New Sonic Signature Slingers, starting at just $1.99. This is how you Sonic. This is Dakota Isaacs. Did she discover medicines derived from bioluminescent squid? Yes. Yes, she did. But did she buy her car at drive time using the industry's smartest online tools? No. No, she did not. Dakota Isaacs was almost a genius. Intelligent online financing and live market-based pricing on over 15,000 vehicles. DriveTime.com, the genius way to buy a car. Speedy Cash is the name you can trust for delivering cash fast. Speedy Cash has competitive rates, fast, friendly service, and most importantly, they're state licensed. Relax. Speedy Cash has you covered. I love that Speedy Cash. All right, welcome back. We're going to carry you to the top of the hour here on KVU as we have extended coverage of the bombing suspect killing himself this morning. And this is a live picture. Uh, they just moved our reporter, Rebecca Lopez, away from where they were standing. It looks like they're going to move in. They have serious uh, artillery there. It appears the ATF and the FBI involved in this uh, warrant search of the suspect's home there. The suspect's name is Mark Condit. He was 23 years old. Again, he killed himself this morning, but is responsible, according to police, for all the bombings taking place in and around Austin over the last 19 days. And very, very active scene there in Pflugerville this morning at the home of Mark Condit. When you see all this action in such an active scene, it only begs to, you know, you ask yourself, hmm, is it because they found some something in that house that perhaps could be very dangerous? Are they perhaps trying to detonate maybe some other projects that Condit was working on at this point? Uh, as this is taking place, we're learning more about who he was, Condit was as an individual, and we uncovered that he worked at a turnkey manufacturing solutions company called Crux Manufacturing. He was a staff member there. He was hired at the company at the age of 19. Uh, so that was several years ago and that he was let go last August due to the fact that they said he wasn't meeting expectations. Uh, but they said that he also worked in uh, the purchasing and sales department at that company. And we're also just learning about his kind of demeanor, the kind of person that he was. And according to people who work with him and the owner of that small business saying that uh, Condit was reserved, introverted, quiet. Uh, let's l check back in with Rebecca to get an update. Rebecca, what are you seeing from your vantage point? Oh, Y'all guys need to wrap this up. Did you want him in front of that? <coughs> Try him again. Well, we are seeing that they are moving in. There are, looks like the FBI SWAT team. They have a military style vehicle. They are yelling at someone to get their hands up, to put their hands up, to come out. They are yelling something at someone uh, inside the uh, home. And as I first reported, when we first got here, the first trooper told us that there might still be somebody inside that house and that it was not secure. So you can see right now, that they have moved in with uh, the heavy uh, artillery, heavy um, equipment. Uh, they are yelling at someone to get their hands up to come out. Uh, now, again, they sometimes will do this even if they don't think there's someone inside um, as a precaution. They often do this even when they're going to go in and, and they're not sure if there's a barricaded person or not. So it does not tell me that there's someone inside, but they, that's one of the first things that SWAT team members do. But again, for some reason, one of the troopers when we first got here thought that there might be someone there and also now they um, will be able to send in the robots and take a look at what's inside the home before they enter that house but they were shouting at somebody come out with your hands up get your hands up and now you can see them moving uh, more uh, SWAT officers in place uh, again they had been waiting for a warrant to go inside 
uh, and it appears they have what they need and they are moving in. They want to process the scene, see what all is in there, see if there's bomb making materials, see if there's any kind of evidence, letters, anything, manifesto, anything that could let them know why he did this. But this is the activity that is going on. We've been here since five this morning and they had the street blocked off since then. They're not letting anyone near. They kept telling us it's not secure to stay back. They're trying to move some of the media to the staging area, but uh, everyone has kind of still staying put uh, as we watch all of this unfold. Okay. Um, very uh, dramatic here. Uh, we had been told, your reporter, Tony, has been reporting that he possibly had a roommate. Uh, when I first got to the scene, though, the officer said she is still in the home, and then he said, or he, or, or he but his first words were she may still be in the home, so it's, it's unclear if there's anyone still inside. But it, again, in my experience of years of covering law enforcement, the first thing they do is they want to clear the house, make sure there's no one, so they will do this. They'll uh, have their negotiators first. And if there's someone inside, they'll try to negotiate them out of the home in any kind of barricaded situation. FBI has some of the best negotiators, so they might do that first and then enter the house. Those are uh, the words of Rebecca Lopez at the scene there. Let's continue to watch this. And as she was mentioning, uh, they have to take the utmost caution in these situations because they don't know what's in there. This man made these bombs somewhere. You don't buy a bomb. He had to manufacture what he was using as explosive devices. And if he did that in this home, no doubt, there could be remnants. Mm -hmm. She mentioned he could have booby trapped something. That's always a fear for law enforcement. And quite frankly, there might be somebody in the home uh, that could still do harm to either themselves or to officers. So they're taking as you can see through the live pictures from Pflugerville, the utmost caution in approaching this house uh, where the bombing person, the bombing suspect, Mark Condit, lived there in Pflugerville. Rebecca was saying in her years of covering these kinds of situations, SWAT situations, that it's standard for them to yell and say, okay, come out with your hands up, come out. They're yelling at someone right now. That's what she had noticed. But she said maybe that's just part of the procedure, that they do that. They have the negotiators say, okay, come out with your hands up. And then after the negotiators, confirm that no one is in there, then they would send the robots in. So she said it's very possible someone is inside, perhaps they're not inside, but they are definitely taking precaution, making sure they are doing this from a very safe vantage point and also that they're following the proper procedures to make sure that also I would assume you want to make sure that you get all the information you need from that house without putting other neighbors in danger. No doubt about it. It's really this whole morning has been just surreal to watch all this unfold. We came on the air just after 3 a.m and have been on since then. So we're going to take a break here directly, but I do want to reset for you as we head towards KVU midday at 11 a.m., which we will be back live for with any updates that happen. There is a suspicious package at a FedEx facility. This is the same FedEx facility in Southeast Austin, just west of ABIA, that the video from yesterday you see here has now been evacuated once again today. Our reporters at the scene are telling us that it is an active situation. Police are there as they sweep this building. This is current. Now, again, from yesterday, the video you're seeing, but the event taking place today is active. Of course, we're keeping an eye on that for you. We're also watching that where Rebecca Lopez is in Pflugerville, the neighborhood where the man lived and an active situation going on there as they look to get into the home. Here's the video from there. Rebecca is going to be back with us uh, as well coming up later here on KVU. We're going to Check on that situation and keep an eye on it for you. And the investigation on southbound I-35 where this all began overnight, uh, where the bomber detonated a, detonated, uh, a device inside of his vehicle uh, and killed himself. All three scenes we're going to be monitoring over the course of the next hour. And we're going to go off the air right now, but we will still be here online as well. You can find us on Twitter, on any social media platform that KVU has. Again, we hope you join us again at 11 a.m something transpires before then we'll bring it to you live. Saturday, March 24th, come to Vineyard Ridge and save $20,000 off your new barn dominium shell and four acres on sale for only $129.9. Start living your dream in the heart of the Texas wine country near historic Fredericksburg and own your new barn dominium shell and four acres for only $129.9. That's a savings of $20,000. Hurry out early for the first and best selection. Excellent land financing is available. Call now, 877-333-9413.
Are you still struggling with your New Year's resolution? Stubborn fat that just won't go away? Now you can lose that stubborn fat at Sonobello, America's number one cosmetic surgery specialist. In a single customized procedure, Sonobello gently removes fat in just one day and shapes your body for life-changing results. I just never thought that I would get there and look at me now. Why wait? Discover the new you. With over 100 board-certified plastic surgeons across more than 40 locations nationwide, now is the time to get your best body. Call 800-848-9425 to schedule your free, no obligation consultation. Remove your stubborn fat in as little as one day. Book now and get $250 toward looking your very best. That's $250 toward your love handles, thighs, even your chin. Call for your free, no obligation consultation today and find out how to get $250 off. This is a limited time offer. Call 800-848-9425 now. <laughs> when President Obama was caught on a live mic with President Medvedev saying he was going to have, quote, more flexibility after the Russian election. He made fun of Mitt Romney, saying that it was a, quote, 1980s are calling for their foreign policy back because the Cold War has been over when Romney brought up how intense of an issue uh, the Russian and Putin, Russia and Putin would be going forward. <laughs> I, I think one thing that I never understand is why there isn't more coverage of what's going on in Syria and chemical gassing of young people, young children. It's the largest refugee crisis since World War II. It was aided and abetted by Putin. Assad was and his t uh, team of Another uh, reason not army. to congratulate yes, him. Yes, but I'm yeah. just saying this is raging out of control. The Syrian army had actually put, had actually started losing and the rebels started winning. Right. And the reason why it raged into the place that it's at is because directly from Putin aiding and abetting Assad. Well, why so, is Trump sticking up for him so much? Why is he so I never so understood why anyone normalized any of this.
vivo.
Look at it, it's up.
Really? Really? Okay.
<laughs> they double barreled it. Layers to this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, do you guys uh, turn the CPU in your hot spot? I've done it before. Um, I got one bar on my hot spot. Now, investigators are at what is believed to be Thomas' home north of Austin, looking for more evidence in this bombing spree. Marcus Moore, ABC News, Hugo Texas. Wait a second. No problem. Do you do you uh, you have the right ISD? Yes. You're set. Okay. No worries. No worries. No worries, man. We're good. He can still talk to a cop, right? It doesn't, no, no, it's a block of the, it's a... Robin was, uh... It's a car. Roughly, cool. And roughly, how long do you want from me? Any pointers? It is connected to a camera that you want to make it.
situation. Though certainly many people in the community from an emotional place have questions about a motivation, but at the same time, their urgency mm -hmm. really remains on solving the case, getting a perpetrator into just uh, into uh, into jail and bringing them to justice, and less on the motivation itself. That's and right. And stopping the attacks. And stopping the attacks. That's well, right. Before we go to break, we're going to continue to follow this breaking news of the bombings throughout midday, and you can also visit kview.com/austin. Explosions. We'll be right back. The only, the only thing that um, that uh, he said that he commit, committed suicide. We don't So can you can you ask her Hi one two three four five one two Okay. Okay. Yeah, well, we're here right near the highway on the southbound side of I. Welcome back to KV News Midday. Here is what we know about the now dead bombing suspect so far this morning. Sources have identified him as 23 year old Mark Anthony Condit of Pflugerville, a local here in Central Texas. Earlier this morning, authorities tracked him and his vehicle down at a hotel along I-35 in Round Rock. The suspect then drove away as authorities waited for tactical teams to arrive. The vehicle stopped in a ditch on the side of the road. As the SWAT team approached, the suspect detonated a device, according to police, killing himself and injuring an officer. Uh, minor injuries there. The officer is going to be okay. Police don't have a motive yet, as we've talked about, and they do know the suspect was planning on delivering more bombs at the time of his death. It is uh, the community still urged to report any suspicious packages you might come across, especially because authorities don't know now if there are more out there. We believe that this individual is responsible for all incidents that have taken place in Austin starting on March 2nd, those that occurred since then as well. We don't know whether he was on his way to deliver another bomb. It is obvious that he had one with him and that's the one that he detonated uh, in the vehicle as we approached. Now again, as we've been talking about authorities urging families to report any suspicious packages or devices, that still stands. They say there is a chance more explosives could be out there, so just 
keep that in mind. Patrick Perez is also in Pflugerville this morning, the home uh, of the parents of this bombing suspect. Yes, and Patrick got there around 5 o'clock this morning. Patrick, walk us through what happened. I know it's loud there, but if you can, walk us through what happened. Well, Brian and Yvonne, I can tell you that within the past hour, investigators with the Austin Police Department, the ATF, and the FBI have been out here talking to this family to find out more information about the suspect. And I want to turn the camera really quickly. You can see a canine unit with the ATF. He's been around checking for any explosive devices, investigating this scene. But I can tell you that the family is cooperating. Now, when we got here at about five o'clock this morning, there was nobody out here. So when I knocked on the door of the father, of uh, the home of the, of the family, the father was surprised to see me. Here, here. Tell us that he is the suspected bomber here in Austin. What? The family of the suspected bomber was unaware Wednesday morning of their son's involvement in what police say caused two weeks of chaos in Austin. Sources tell KVU he's 23-year-old Mark Anthony Condit. He grew up in this quiet neighborhood in Pflugerville, northeast of Austin. His family's next-door neighbor is stunned. It's truly unbelievable. Jeff Reeb says he's known the Condits for years and never suspected their son could be capable of killing two people and injuring three others. Over the years, I, there's nothing that I could point to. Reeb says Condit was the oldest of four kids with three younger sisters. He describes him as a friendly neighborhood kid. My assumption would be that they knew nothing. Uh, they're as nice as family as you'd want to have, nice as neighbors as you'd want to have. And while this family now deals with the death of their son and brother, the families of the package explosion victims can finally start getting some answers, but not yet the biggest one. Why? Conlet's father didn't respond to her question this morning. Any message for the families? From all over the, you know, ATL. And so a neighbor who did speak with this family earlier this morning tells me that they are upset and puzzled, which goes to show you that they really had no idea what their son was doing. Brian and Yvonne. Patrick, since we have you, hopefully we can ask you a question or two. Now, you know, regardless of what neighbors are saying, you always hear the same, I'm shocked or, you know, I didn't think this could happen in our neighborhood. I mean, I, I want to know, are people being, is there anyone that's being pretty candid about the fact that something was a little shady that was going on in, in, in that home? Are you there, Patrick? <laughs> In yeah, so actually, Yvonne, at least in this part of the neighborhood where we are, where he grew up, uh, what we've heard from neighbors is that this family, yes, they were quiet, but there was nothing suspicious about them. There was nothing that they could think that would, that they could imagine really lead up to this to this man uh, doing what he did. But um, they all, all said good things about this family, really. Patrick, what's going on there where you are? Again, set the scene for us. Are the investigators still there? Have they completed the search? What's the situation? currently there. It's my job, but as far as driving... So, Brian, right now we have ATF uh, investigators, we have FBI investigators, we also have the Austin Police Department out here. There's actually right now a canine unit with the ATF that was checking the house for explosives as a precaution, of course, because this is where that man grew up. This is his childhood home. But they have been talking to this family. We've been told that they have been cooperating, that the family has been cooperating with the investigators. Um, so it seems like they might just be out here for probably another hour or so to keep talking to this family. But I want to repeat that just within the past hour is really when all of these investigators showed up because when we got here at five o'clock this morning there was nobody out here there was no police there was no one talking to this family to tell them what happened to their son now patrick i know you mentioned that we also noticed that there were more people out there but patrick maybe one more question can you kind of talk about maybe the tenseness there i mean these officers have been working around the clock obviously this is a high stress situation i know there was an arrest of a journalist a few hours ago so can you talk a little bit about maybe what they're telling you all as you all are doing their job. I mean, obviously they have to do theirs and we have to adhere to those uh, those rules. Right. Well, I don't think that has been an issue here. For the most part, the investigators here have been very, very friendly. I mean, for example, the ATF member, he has been showing off his canine unit so we can pet the canine unit. They've been very welcoming, very open. Of course, there are things that they can't tell us because this is all an investigation, but you can see this is the canine unit right there with the ATF. She was helping search for some explosives um, in this area as a precaution, of course. Um, but it's been a, a friendly environment, and there are only just a few investigators here. There are just a few members of the Austin Police Department and just a few members of the FBI and ATF out here. So it's not as big as a scene as I know that scene where he actually lives, where the suspect actually lived. Uh, I know there's a bigger scene there.
All right, Patrick Perez, great work by you this morning, no doubt about it. In fact, all of our reporters throughout the area are doing great work today, including Jay Wallace, who I know went to extreme measures this morning uh, to get into location where he could bring you the story from the scene of where this all ended in Round Rock. Jay, uh, first of all, great work. Second of all, what's the latest at the scene there? Yo, know, Brian, literally as we're speaking, uh, well, obviously, we're having some technical up. problems yep. there, just froze up. But Jay has been doing such a tremendous yep. job out there trying to paint the scene for us. Uh, we've had reporters spanned out all over the place trying to get us different viewpoints and different uh, stories throughout the day. We, we also have Jeremy Rogalski from KHOU, if we could bring him in here. Now, Jeremy, I know you've been digging into the background of uh, Mark Condit. I know you talked a little bit about his uh, work history. What else have you learned? I understand you're looking through some blog posts as well, right? Yeah, we identified a series of blog posts dating back to uh, 2012 while Mark Condit was a student at Austin Community College. So in context, he was about 17 or 18 years old at the time. And in these blogs, we really see kind of two sides uh, of, of this young man. On one uh, uh, side, he seems like a typical teenager. I'm quoting from this blog, he says, I enjoy cycling, parkour, tennis, um, reading, and listening to music, what most, say, 18-year-olds would say. However, this is the blog post where we're seeing another side. It's called Defining My Stance. And he talks about controversial topics like gay marriage, abortion, and terrorism. Here's a quote from one of those. Uh, this is Mark Condit writing, homosexuality is not natural. In addition, political protection of, a sexual, um, uh, of homosexuals is ludicrous. Here's another one saying he should uh, do away with sexual offender registries. Will putting him on a list make it better? Wouldn't this only make people shun him, keep him from getting a job and making friends? So uh, a, a pretty um, uh, out there stance on, on two controversial topics, one uh, being gay marriage, another um, sex offender registry. He also touches on issues such as abortion and terrorism and the death penalty. Uh, again, these were written while he was at Austin Community College back in 2012 when Mark Condit was about 17 or 18 years old at the time, um, and he was taking a government class. Uh, so six years removed from present day, we don't know obviously entirely his state of mind present day, but they offer some glimpse uh, of what he was thinking back during his days at Austin Community College. But again, uh, there's a contradiction there, Yvonne and Brian, because uh, his profile, like I said, is like any other quote unquote normal 18 year old who enjoys tennis and cycling and reading and listening to music. So we're going to continue to uh, dig deep into his social media profile, which, by the way, is rather limited mm -hmm. for a young man. Very few friends on Facebook that we know of, uh, very uh, limited Instagram uh, and YouTube sort of uh, digital footprints. Uh, but this at least offers some insight into what was going on in this young man's mind back then. All right, thank you. He was at Austin Community College for a couple of years, I think 2010 to 2012. But other than that, you reported this morning, uh, homeschooled. Mm -hmm. uh, we saw from a Facebook post, which is what we pulled the picture from, uh, his mom commenting about he had 30 hours or so of college credit. And that, again, is just a little more insight into the person being a homeschooled individual with siblings there in the home. And his mother, definitely uh, a large part of his life, at least according to the post that we saw. Yes, and, and our word from uh, ACC is that he did not graduate with any sort of associate's degree or, or anything of that nature. In that Facebook post, though, back to that, uh, you'll recall his mom did say that um, what is he going to do? Perhaps a mission trip of some sort, some sort which uh, provides some insight. Perhaps uh, there was some faith-based um, activity going on in that house. Obviously, we're efforting to learn more because the more of a profile that you can build on, on this bombing suspect, the more potentially it could lead to a possible motive, guys. We also want to point out the picture was from 2013, or yeah. at least it was posted in 2013. We're not sure if that picture was even taken prior to that, so obviously he There's would look photo, much yeah. different. I would you know, I would assume uh, today than he than he did in that picture. That's a that's an older picture. Jeremy, great work. Great to have Thank you here you. with us on Midday. Thank you so much Thank for your you. time and, and your effort in this. And no doubt this is a huge part of the investigation going forward uh, to learn a motive and uh, more about this person uh, as we move on here at Midday. We're going to take a quick look at our forecast now as we begin 
uh, almost the noon hour here on KVU. Erica Lopez is going to join us with a look at that forecast now. Hello, Erica. Hey there, guys. That's right. I wanted to touch on another big story, which is this winter storm that's slamming parts of the Northeast right now. The fourth nor'easter this season, bringing in immense amounts of snow. We're talking two inches by the hour. Take a look at the last 12 hour storm reports all associated across parts of the Tennessee Valley all the way now pushing into New England. The complete opposite for us here in Central Texas, though, Clear blue skies, very spring like day for us here. Mid 60s is your current temperature right now. So seasonable average a light breeze coming in from the southeast at about eight miles an hour. So breezy at times we are talking about winds sustained up to 15 miles an hour, but overall still a very beautiful day in store for us weather wise. So increasing clouds as we progress through the next few days, a few clouds out there this afternoon, but temperatures topping out in the mid 60s. We're calling your official high this afternoon 76 degrees this afternoon and then mostly sunny skies will be in place a bit warmer than where we were yesterday and also notice that a southeast wind is now in place compared to yesterday. That's eventually going to bring us our clouds, mostly cloudy skies, especially by this weekend and then eventually rain shower chances. But until then, mostly sunny skies will be in place. Notice some clouds, especially in the overnight hours will be building in spotty showers developing just south of our viewing area on Friday. I think our next rain shower chance will be on Saturday, even though just a small spotty shower chance. We do need the rain because take a look at our drought monitor. Everyone pretty much under the moderate category. A few exceptions are eastern counties right now under the dry category when we're taking a look at our current drought monitor. Your allergy count for today. Grass and oak was on the high side. Molds on the medium side. I did see alternaria today though, so just a heads up on your allergy counts if you're some who suffers from oak and grass at this time of the year. We'll keep you up to date every single day in the Statesman. The next seven days looks like this mid 70s today for your high a bit warmer on Thursday. We should not top out in the 80s until about Friday. It is going to be breezy the next few days also, but rain shower chances, just a small spotty chance on Saturday and then increasing chances as we head to next week. All right, Anavid has an update on our commute. What's the latest uh, details on the roads, Anavid? All right, well, we just learned as police continue to investigate in the Pflugerville area, there has been a resident evacuation. Now, this is occurring just five blocks from the suspect's home. So right now, the residents that have been evacuated in that residential area is just west of Railroad Avenue and north of Pecan. So if you're traveling in that area, also watch out for these four restrictions. So basically, to sum it all up, it's happening at the intersection of Dessau and Pecan. It's all happening on the west side of this particular intersection. Now, again, this is due to police investigating uh, the suspect's home in that particular area in Pflugerville. So if you're traveling there, if you can stay clear and if you can stay home, let's look at traffic. We'll stay with us, please, as we continue to follow this developing news. It is Brian Condit, right? It's Brian Anthony Condit. Can you fix that in that script? I think it says Brian. I don't know if I did that or. If... Thank you. Hey, you. test one, two. Test
Welcome back to KB News Midday. APD telling us the family of Mark Anthony Condit will be releasing a statement at some point later today. KB News Terry Gruca is joining us now live in the studio to tell us more about that. Now, Brian and Yvonne, investigators are still at the scene of Mark Condit's parents' home, as you saw from Patrick's live shot earlier. Detectives are searching that home to make sure there are no materials or bombs on that site. Detective David Fugit with the Austin Homicide Unit tells us that the family is having an understandably difficult time with news of what their son is accused of doing. The family will be preparing a statement that we will likely release through the Austin Police Department Public Information Office later today. Uh, we just ask that you respect their privacy and that you not approach the family as they're going through this difficult time. Uh, they wanted to express their condolences to the uh, families of those that have been affected and that will be reflected in their statement. Detectives did bring out forensic dogs. The idea there is to search the family's property. They have some buildings in the back of the home and they wanted to make sure they are safe. Detectives tell us that they do not have any information that shows the family had any involvement in this. They have been very cooperative. Brian and Yvonne. All right, Terry, thank you so much. And we have some video captured from uh, via drone. We should say it shows all the heavy traffic on I-35 as you know, the camera travels along. It eventually ends up at the suspect's car, that red SUV we were talking about uh, where the windows were blown out, the front windshield was damaged, and that's where authorities say Mark Anthony Condit detonated a device and killed himself. At one point, Brian, didn't you mention that it had been backed up to Georgetown? Was that the area? At, at the height yeah. of this, yes, yeah. this morning, it was from uh, Old Settlers Boulevard, 3406, all the way back to Highway 29 in Georgetown. That's a, a span of several miles mm -hmm. uh, in delay. So this investigation is continuing there alongside of I-35. The road is open, as you can tell, uh, but no doubt traffic still being still being slowed down in that area. So again, if you can avoid the area, no doubt this afternoon, we're going to take a quick break and we'll be back with more midday coming up. Welcome back to KVU News Midday. All new this midday following the Austin bombings, a member of city council in the forum putting her support behind a couple of measures. One, appointing interim chief Brian Manley of the Austin Police Department as Austin's permanent police chief. And to approve also a contract with the Austin Police Association as quickly as possible. Delia Garza asked her colleagues to quote, 
stop slow playing council resolutions and to start supporting local law enforcement. Now, as far as uh, interim chief Brian Manley is concerned, in order for him to become chief, it has to come from an appointment from our new city manager, Spencer Kronk, who's been on the job since February. I That's right. And then council would have to approve that mm -hmm. that motion. So we'll see what happens as we go forward here. No doubt about it, but something to consider as you look forward to the future of the Austin Police Department. Let's get a look at traffic again. This is an area in Pflugerville now that's uh, got a concerted police effort going on there. And Anavid Reyes has a look at what we're talking about. They've evacuated residents there, right, Anavid? Yes, they're evacuating residents just five blocks from the suspect's home. So if you happen to live in this area, this is what I'm talking about. Just west of Railroad Avenue and north of Pecan. Residents in this particular area have been evacuated. Also, residents in the Pflugerville area around Dessau and Pecan, just on the west side of there, you guys need to be uh, on the lookout because four sites have been blocked off in that particular area. So, as a whole, it's just on the west side of the intersection of Dessau and Pecan. So, uh, as they continue to investigate in that particular area, trying to get their investigation and their answers um, all settled, Make sure you watch out and avoid it as much as you can. Back to you. All right, thank you so much, Anavid. Now, at one point this morning, uh, we kept going to live pictures from the Pflugerville area, the neighborhood where Condit lived, uh, apparently with a roommate. And uh, at one point, I remember we had our reporter, Rebecca uh, Lopez, who was there, and she said that she heard a lot of yelling taking place from investigators there, forensic units. And she was saying that at one point, she heard someone saying, go get out with your hands up, and you have to come out with your hands up. So obviously, negotiators have been on the scene, and it's been a very active scene. Hopefully, once that finishes, finishes up, they can send the robots in. But again, this is going to be taking place for the next couple of hours. Definitely keep that in mind. If you live in the area, we're going to take another quick break. We'll be back after this. Stay with us. I'm going to need a Great from break to weather? Okay.
All right, we continue to follow this breaking news. A lot of investigations in different locations taking mm -hmm. place today. Let's talk a little bit about the weather. Obviously, there's no rain in the forecast or anything that might hinder these investigations outdoors, right? That's right. Weather is actually cooperating. We're talking about a very spring like day out there today. Temperatures are creeping on up closer to 70 degrees right now. 67 at Camp Mabry. That's the same story for ABIA, just a degree warmer. So overall, very beautiful weather wise out there. Now notice we have south winds that are beginning to come into play. So that eventually is going to be the setup for increasing clouds and increasing rain shower chances, as well as warming temperatures by this weekend. Right now, very seasonable though in the 60s. We're going to warm up into the 70s by this afternoon. Mid 60s for Leander, Round Rock at 69 degrees and in the mid to lower 60s for some isolated spots. The hill country mid to upper 60s for them and almost 70 degrees as we head out east to LaGrange. Here's how your next 12 hours is going to play out. A few clouds out there, but overall a mostly sunny days in place. We'll warm up into the mid to upper 70s for a lot of us and then clear skies for this evening will be cooling down into the 50s. But for today, overall mostly sunny. It's still going to be dry and breezy at times. Also a southeast wind in place anywhere from 5 to 15 miles an hour. 76 degrees is your official forecast high, but we're calling it for us here in Austin. Now let's take a quick look at your forecast clouds and rain because this is where the change comes in. South winds are going to continue to funnel in a lot of Gulf moisture. We'll notice that dew points will steadily increase throughout the next couple of days. A little bit more clouds will be in place also. And by the end of the week, that's when we have some small rain shower chances, mainly south of us, but it's this weekend where rain shower chances will be in place. Very minimal. We need the rain guys because we are still area wide under a moderate drought. A few exceptions, the yellow shaded colors. That's the dry category, but everyone for our viewing area is under a moderate drought. Now grass and oak was on the meat or the high side today, medium for mold, and I did see alternate area in your allergy count this morning. We'll keep you up to date every single day in the Statesman. So here's what's going on for your next seven days. Increasing temperatures 80s by Friday and then rain shower chances by this weekend. Guys, back to you. All right, Erica, thank you so much. Uh, again, we have a team of reporters spanned out everywhere. Let's go to Jay Wallace live at the scene in Round Rock where it all ended. Jay. Yeah, Yvonne, well, for the first time since I've been out here early this morning, I have a report for you not related to the amount of law enforcement out here as the frontage road here where the crash, where the explosion, excuse me, happened. It has opened up. I'll step to the side. As you can see, I've been showing you the amount of police cars, and now you see one. This vehicle that's also on the side of the road as well, this this frontage road, it has opened up because this is where down this frontage road on the berm, on the green part of the grass off the highway, that is where the vehicle ended up last night. That is where the suspect suspect detonated a bomb in his car and took his own life. And if you remember, we were reporting overnight that police found the suspect's car at a hotel and then started following him as he drove away. The bomber, Mark Condit, as we've now been reporting, eventually drove off the road onto the berm, as you saw out here live, where it remained until it got towed away probably about 45 minutes ago, I would say. It towed away his car and a law enforcement van that rammed into the back of it. They towed away both of those cars. And this morning or over Overnight, when this pursuit happened, a SWAT team started to approach the vehicle. That is when Condit set, Condit set off a bomb, killing himself in the process. And for the people who are around this area when this was all happening, as many people have been saying for all these explosions, most people initially didn't think that's what it was or could be. But once one woman found out it was, the shocking reality of what happened sunk right in. Sorry about that, guys. Technical difficulty, no sound there. But as we've been showing you with aerial video, a law enforcement van did ram into the back of the Condit's car. We saw that van and the car get towed away about 45 minutes ago. That could be the cause why Condit's car ended up on the berm. And even though this area is clearing up and the investigation is starting to come to a close, it is not finished. Police are still out in the area. We've been giving you the reports about Pflugerville. They're out at his house. That's still obviously a very ongoing scene. And even though this area is starting to calm down a little bit and get more back to normal, Austin's not back to normal yet. You still need to be diligent, looking out for packages, looking out for objects that might be suspicious so that the explosion that happened today that took the life of the man who's been setting off these bombs, that this explosion will be the last.
Live in Austin, Jay Wallace, KV News. Jay, first of all, great work this morning. I know you and JP went to extreme measures to get the shot where you brought us the pictures from the scene. But while we have you, I'd love to ask you this. Uh, as you notice this play out over the course of the last eight hours or so, uh, what has the attitude been of, of people that are there, people that are stand, standing by witnessing all of this? Shock? Are they surprised? Are they relieved? What's been the, the theme for the people you've met? The biggest sentiment, Brian, is just the fact that uh, most people talk about how they know it's happening, they know it's nearby, but no one ever really believes that it's going to happen near them. We actually talked to uh, one of the restaurant owners at this La Margarita that's right by where the accident happened. I know it's hard to see through the trees, but this is a La Margarita restaurant. We talked to the owner's daughter who came in. They've had no one come in today, obviously, since they're a part of the taped off area. But again, she knows what's happening. She lives in this area. But just again, the reality of it happening right by her work, it's still shocking. You might think, how can they be shocked? It's, you know, we've been covering it and it's been happening. It could happen anywhere. It's still just the reality of that settling in. That's what not just this restaurant or what many people are talking about. Just, um, you know, it, it just, I know I keep using the word shocking, but that's what everyone is telling me, uh, that it's just catching them by surprise. All right, Jay, thank you so much for all that you've been doing this morning. We also have Patrick Perez uh, in Pflugerville at the home of the parents house. And I know Patrick got there around five o'clock this morning. And the last time we spoke with you not that long ago, it seemed like there was a lot of action, a lot of stuff going on with bomb sniffing dogs, canine units. Can you set the scene for us there in Pflugerville? Well, Yvonne, actually, that's pretty much just changed within the past 10 minutes. The ATF has already left, the FBI left already, and the Austin Police Homicide Detective, along with the Victim Services Unit uh, member, are actually getting in their car and leaving now as well. So this scene is clearing up here. But earlier this morning, um, about maybe an hour and a half ago, we did see some ATF members, FBI members, police out here. They also brought a canine unit from the ATF to kind of uh, search around the area, uh, especially to this home here where this man grew up. They say it was just as a precaution. They didn't think that there was any reason to believe there would be a device here, but they wanted to do it just to be safe. And so I don't know if we have any video for you, but just to let you know, this morning we got here just before five o'clock. Um, there was nobody out here. Uh, that's when we found out the name of this man from our sources. We wanted to get in touch with his family to see what they could share about uh, about him with us. And so I did knock on the door of the family who live here. Um, the father answered the door and he was surprised to see me when I told him that police had said that they believe you know their son was a suspected uh, Austin bomber he had no idea what I was talking about um, so that just goes to show that this family the father the mother probably the sisters as well had no idea what this man was doing on his own uh, the father also told me during that very brief exchange that he had moved out from this home years ago uh, we of course have seen where this man lives now where he lived uh, but we have crews there covering that that just recently got evacuated uh, but it seems like they really had no idea. I also spoke to the next door neighbor who has known the family for years. He knew Mark. Uh, he says he was a friendly neighborhood kid. Of course, he hasn't seen him in a few years because he as well, because uh, he did move out of this house um, and lived on his own with a roommate. Uh, but for everyone I've spoken to, all the neighbors here, they say really good things about this family. They they say there was nothing suspicious about them. Yeah, they were quiet. They kept to themselves. Uh, but, you know, some families are like that. Some of them are not as social as other families in our neighborhoods. Um, but they say they have no reason to believe they had no suspicion that someone like Mark could do something like this. And of course, that's what investigators are going to be working to find out within the next few days to find out what it is exactly that caused Mark to do this, why he wanted to do this, why he wanted to hurt these people. Um, but at least here, just to wrap up the scene here at the house of the, the family where he grew up, it's been cleared up. The last remaining unit is still on scene getting ready to leave. Um, but again, earlier there was an ATF canine unit out here to investigate to see if there are any devices we're told that they not find any and that it was just all for a precaution. Yvonne. Patrick, thank you so much. Now, if you're watching us and you're thinking, OK, maybe I have to run. I have to go somewhere. You can always find us online and we have um, a lot of our information all in one area on KVU.com. It's www.kvu.com slash Austin How many W's was that? Sorry, it's we, been a long, it's been a long we've morning. We've been on the air since <laughs> three o'clock. That you was know an extra, what I mean. an you extra know what I mean. W, I okay, think. Sorry, yeah. Austin explosions, okay? <laughs> Get me a coffee. Okay, we'll be right back. Stay with us.
Yeah, I have you. <clears throat> In a minute, yep. Do you have an idea how long you want us to go or just talk until? Talking? Huh? We're live this afternoon, Brett Buffington, KHOU 11 News. Welcome back to KB News Midday. We're extending a bit into your afternoon. I hope that's okay with you. We have more news to bring you here. Uh, the Austin bomber killed himself this morning in Round Rock, and now the investigation is really picking up steam in Pflugerville. Yes, let's go live out there. We want to hear from Brett Buffington, who is there. Now, Brett, explain where you are and what is taking place at the location that you're at. So if you're familiar with Pflugerville, this is Pecan Street right here behind me. The second street down there, that's where they believe that Mark Condit lived, several blocks away from here. When we got here just a few minutes ago, the Pflugerville police chief came out and she said, hey, listen, guys, we're going to ask you to move. We know it's been a very fluid morning. We're going to ask you to move, and we're also asking everyone who lives in these homes in a five-block area near where this suspect lived to also leave. She wouldn't answer a lot of questions about why she was making this request, only saying that she was concerned about the people who lived in this neighborhood and she wanted to make sure the people she's here to protect stayed safe. So now here outside of this house, they've evacuated a five block area. They've asked the media to go to a staging area and we just stayed here outside and we've watched in the last few minutes as they've now put up these barricades. We watched public works employees come by and block off these streets all around this part of this neighborhood here in Pflugerville. There is a very heavy police presence. We know the ATF, the FBI, they're all down there. And as my photographer zooms in, you can kind of see that white truck. That's really all you can see of where they're the most part of this investigation is unfolding here early this afternoon. We know they're focused on a house, talking to neighbors here. Of course, neighbors have heard the hearsay. They've been talking to police. They are obviously, there's something that they are concerned about inside that home to make such a request to inconvenience so many people who are inside this, these neighborhoods, inside these homes. Now, I did talk to a guy who told me he and he was at his mom's house to get her out. He told me he lives just a few blocks away. And last night in his part of this community, they asked him to leave his house. And that's why he was at his mom's house. And now this afternoon, he's here to pick up his mom and take her back to his house. And we also know uh, that Condit's parents live here, not very far away from where this home is, just several blocks away. We haven't been over there, but we understand that the police have certainly been focused on uh, on his home and his parents' home as well this morning. So here in this neighborhood, 2nd Street in Pflugerville, you can see this is what's happening right now. Police have now backed everyone up. These barricades are up, and you can see police, they're zooming just across the street down there. This is a very, very active part of this investigation here this afternoon. Of course, we're working to learn more. The police chief, when she came out, she goes, guys, this isn't really an official press conference. She did answer just a few questions, but that was really a just uh, trying to address the fact to calm concerns here as people were being asked to leave their homes. We're certainly trying to talk to neighbors, to people who have been asked to leave here. Uh, and see what they've learned this morning as this is unfolded here. But see a very fluid, fluid scene here. And, and you know, police told us this morning that they were going to be uh, very active today, that this case, even though they have their suspect and they know that this guy uh, is dead, they still said that they were going to go through and they have to now uh, try to make sure what he did in the last 24 hours. So still asking people to be on alert. And certainly here in this neighborhood this afternoon in Pflugerville, Neighbors are well aware that this is a major part of this case breaking here. Great report. Thank you so much, Brett Buffington. Let's stay in Pflugerville now. We've been visiting on and off over the last, I guess, five hours or so with Rebecca Lopez, who's also been in Pflugerville, closer to the home uh, that was the center of this investigation. You've now moved, Rebecca. Where are you and what, what is the very latest there in Pflugerville from your perspective? 
I am on Pecan Street and we've been watching as uh, FBI agents and police officers have been in this area telling people that they are evacuating this area. But let me just show you behind me. They've taken particular interest in this shell station. They've actually roped it off with crime scene tape and have shut it down. And I was standing in there a few minutes ago uh, just before the FBI arrived. There were agents uh, in this uh, gas station just a little while ago and I was inside a Pflugerville police officer came and told uh, the uh, the clerk that he had to shut down that they were evacuating but then this is the only business that they have roped off with some sort of you know like the police crime tape leads me to believe it may be part of the investigation they had FBI agents inside that area just a little while ago they just left but they're not letting anyone near this gas station it's unclear at this time if it is part of the investigation if they think that Condit may have um, you know frequented this place or they might have some evidence. It's, it's unclear at this time, but it's the only business that is roped off with crime scene tape. And of course, you know, we have been evacuated. There, there has been fear that there might be explosives in that house, that maybe he booby trapped uh, the home. Uh, and so they did bring in those bomb sniffing dogs. Uh, it is also standard procedure for them to send in a robot. They do not want to enter that house unless they are for sure that uh, it is safe for officers and agents to enter and then begin processing evidence. It, they are going to find a lot of evidence, they hope, inside that home. Perhaps evidence that will tell them why he did this. Did he leave behind any writings, any manifesto, any clues that would give them an idea of a motive? They are going to build a large profile on this guy and hopefully get more of an understanding as to why, why he did this. But that is what's happening here in downtown Pflugerville right now. They are evacuating some of the businesses and uh, some of the residents in this area. And as things develop, of course, we'll update you. Reporting live, Rebecca Lopez, back to you. All right, Rebecca, thank you. That's interesting. The Shell Station on Pecan Street there in Pflugerville roped off with crime scene tape. And again, that just again reiterates the fact that this bombing suspect may be dead, but the investigation is going to be uh, pretty extensive as when you deal with explosives like that, you've got to take every precaution uh, precaution necessary. We're going to take a break right now and we'll be back with more right here on KV. Stay with us. One, two, three, one, two.
Welcome back. We're still monitoring this area in Pflugerville. Now there is a resident evacuation intact. Now this is where it's happening. It's happening west of Railroad Avenue and north of Pecan, just five blocks away from the suspect's home. So businesses and residents are being evacuated in that area. These are four locations that are um, being just, you know, blocked off to traffic. So this is the intersection of Dessau and Pecan. The intersections that are being blocked off are happening west of this particular intersection section Dessa and Pecan. So again, the west side. So right now, if you are in the Pflugerville area and you just need to run out, do some shopping, go ahead and consider Heatherwell Boulevard as your alternate route if you're trying to get onto I-35 or just continue southbound towards South Austin. That's a look at traffic. Let's go ahead and toss things over to Erica Lopez for a check on our weather. All right, weather is very spring like for us here in Central Texas. The reason for it, we are sandwiched in between two systems, one across the West Coast and then the fourth or Easter across the East Coast. So in between that, a bridge of high pressure keeping us on the clear side, clear skies for the most part, minus a few light clouds out across the region. Upper 60s is your current temperature for this afternoon. Humidity levels are slowly increasing because of a southeast wind in place. So that's going to keep in just a few clouds out there today. Overall temperatures will be close to average for this time of the year. A forecast high of about 76 degrees is expected this afternoon. Southeast winds in play, so notice it's going to be breezy at times also, anywhere from 5 to 15 miles an hour. Overall still comfortable humidity wise, but that's going to change as we progress into the next few days. Here's a look at your overnight forecast for tonight. We're going to cool down into the 50s, mostly clear skies, a south wind at about 5 miles an hour. Slowly creeping back up to the 80s and rain shower chances return this weekend. We'll be back. We'll have more after the break.
We had somewhat of a limited role. So first of all, we had uh, we have members on the FBI task force, which was a very active role uh, with a couple members of our team in the Williams County Sheriff's Office. And we had a couple of organized crime unit detectives who uh, played a role in uh, helping with tracking the suspect. Uh, other than that, we didn't have a role in the investigative part other than that. Uh, then uh, after the fact of uh, the suspect was found and after he was deceased, uh, our SWAT team came in and relieved the Austin Police Department SWAT team so they could redeploy to another location and then they secured the scene there while they were doing evidence pickup and uh, then when they were done they left. All right, welcome back to KVU News Extended Midday. Uh, before we go, we are going to sign off in just a bit, but we'd like to give a quick recap of what has been an extremely eventful and busy morning. The Austin bombing suspect, a man named Mark Anthony Condit, 23 years old, died this morning. Authorities tracked him and his vehicle down to a hotel along I-35 in Round Rock. Condit then drove away as authorities were waiting for tactical teams to arrive to move in. The vehicle he was in stopped in the ditch on the side of the road there in Round Rock. And as the SWAT team approached his vehicle, the suspect detonated a device, killing himself and injuring an officer. Now, police do not have a motive yet. I know a lot of people want to know what the motive is. There's not one yet. And officers do not know if the suspect was planning on delivering another bomb at the time of his death. Just moments ago, FBI brought in the SWAT team to check out Condit's home. They're looking to see if he had any help or accomplices. The community in Pflugerville urged to report any suspicious, uh, suspicious packages. In fact, the entire Austin area, if you see anything suspicious, please still contact authorities. They believe there could be more devices out there. And you can always have the latest developments in your hands on the KV News app. For the latest updates on this breaking news and the bombings, visit kvu.com slash Austin Explosions. Please stay with us on KVU on air and online for the very latest. Have a nice day.